What's going on, y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Friday stream, man. We are here today uh, presenting some arguments that aren't new. You guys have heard me use these arguments before. You guys have seen this live in action. Um, but today I just felt like using them again today. So we are going to be inviting up our Muslim friends to go ahead and hit that link. Uh, we're going to be talking to people on TikTok as well. We already got some guests ready to go. And uh, man, we've already been having fun. I already kickstarted it. I've been live for about like probably 45 minutes now on TikTok just to get it warmed up and loaded up and ready to go. You know, And so we're here. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button, by the way. Make sure you guys, if you guys are coming in here, you guys love the conversation. Um, you guys enjoy this and you're learning a lot. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that already. And let's go ahead and jump this off, man. May God bless all of you guys. You're the best. Avery, love these lies. Man, God, glory be to God. Glory be to the most high triune God who is undefeated. And therefore, we are undefeated. All right. So make sure you guys are tapping that like button like you fear disobedience from it. Uh, if you need a miswack, we can offer you a miswack. We're selling those uh, in the Godlogic stores. So if you need a miswack to hit that like button, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, if you want a miswack, go ahead and uh, pay the $1 jizya so that you can get yours to you. <laughs> All right. Someone asked how old I am. Uh, Dakota, how old, do you, how old do you think I am? And I'll, I'll answer you after you guess. How, would, how old do I look, sound, and what would you guess if you had to guess how old I am? And then I'll tell you. Someone said 20, 25 max. Okay. That was a quick response. I'm actually 29. <laughs> Someone said Avery is nine. <laughs> Y'all are ruthless. <laughs> but for everyone who wants to, <laughs> someone said 48. So for everyone who wants to uh to go ahead and um support the ministry, you guys can go ahead and uh, uh sign up for 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 Patreon, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Real exclusive. Go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon if you guys want to support financially. Also, uh, PayPal is also a great way to support the ministry as well. Thank you to everyone who's part of the Patreon and giving on PayPal and Cash App and Venmo and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, just to let you guys know, so I need to do some things with the Cash App. So um, if you did want to send some donations through Cash App, don't don't do that right now. I'll let you guys know when to do that. I need to fix something up. Okay, um, there's some technical difficulties going on there. So, but yeah, uh, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, those are great ways. And then Patreon obviously is the best way if you want to support continuously, support monthly. Patreon is the way to do it, man. Patreon is the way to do it. This is why I'm able to go live at any time, anywhere because glory of God. God has given me the grace to have the time to do this. And you guys have blessed the ministry. So thank you so much. With that being said, like I said, we have almost 500 viewers already on YouTube. We got uh, 457 on TikTok. So guys, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure the likes match up with the viewership. We got a super chat who says, I don't have a lot of money or anything, but what I do is what I do have is faith in God and believe what you're doing is great. Thanks for bringing me to God, man. That's the best uh, compliment you can give is that I am doing exactly what God has called me to do, which is help bring you to God and make you fall more in love with Him. That's the best. That's that's what you can. That's it. That's it. Uh, I'm a, we got a super chat. I'm your father. Uh, would we ever get alive with you and Christian Prince? I don't know. You got to ask him. Christian Prince is more, he, he, he's a, a lone wolf, man. You know, I, I invited him on before and he, you know, he said no. So that's, that's up, that's up to CP, man. CP likes to do his own thing and there's nothing wrong with that. He likes to do his own thing. Um, honestly, you know, I would just sit back and just let him cook the, for, for two or three hours right here on the live. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, I would love for CP to join me. I would love for CP to join the live. Okay, so let's get into it. We got some uh, some guests waiting here. And so right now, guys, my topic here that I've been running with so far, the argument so far is uh, I'll convert to Islam if. I'll convert to Islam if. 
And for those who have seen this thread before, you know how this goes. Um, and it's been fun so far. <laughs> We've been having fun with this one. So let's see how we do it. Love from London. Awesome. Love from the US. Back to you. We'll be in London pretty soon. We'll be in London pretty soon. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see. Share my screen. Yep. Sound. Boom. Boom. All right. And then just, okay. Here we have it. So I'm going to turn this around. So both my faces won't be on both uh, screens. There we are. I'll convert to Islam if. So let's see how this goes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Zaid wasn't ready. He, he didn't want to come up. I don't know why you guys are in the request section and wanting to, to come on up with that. Uh, just to make it clear, guys, so if you guys are Christians, then do not request. Well, let me just remove this. I see a, it looks to be a Christian there. Hi. How you doing? Are you a Muslim? Um, no, I'm actually a Christian. Um, like, well, I used to be a Muslim, okay. but now I'm a Christian. So, like, like I just feel like God like has been telling me to share my testimony. You know? Yeah, but but this is not a lie for that. I just just respectfully, you know, I love that you're that you came to Christ. You know, what I'm saying. I'm going to have a live yeah. specifically for my brothers and sisters for testimonies and stuff like that really soon. Actually, okay, so. I would okay, love for well, I would I actually love to hear that. you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm so for sorry sure. for taking your time. No, no, you're good. You're good. I, I'll I'll it's gonna be within like maybe a week or so too. So keep like stay stay like follow me. I'm gonna announce it. I will actually I do what's what's your name? Um, I'm actually called Zene. Okay, so yeah, come on and uh, we'll hear your testimony. Okay. Okay, thank you so much again. I'm so sorry for taking your time. Yes. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. If you are a Muslim and you would like to come and show me why Islam is true, you're welcome to join. You're welcome to join. Okay? I will convert to Islam if there's something specific that would actually make me take Islam seriously. Would you guys like to come up and find out? Got another super chat that says, I pray for you and for your protection, and I enjoy every clip. God bless you. With love from Romania, from Marius. Wow, thank you so much, Marius. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the support. That was very encouraging. You blessed me today. Thank you. And then we got my man Ortiz in the building. He says, bro, I was going to cash up you. <laughs> well, I have a gospel album coming out and I have you on it talking. Keep cooking, bro. Your food is delicious. <laughs> I definitely like to hear that, bro. That's, that's dope. That's dope. I did I did want to like mix in like into in my intro song, like parts of me saying something or something like that, you know? Uh but you know, we'll, we'll work on that. I'll hit up my cousins and see what we see what we got going on. All right. So I know you can't see me. You're not supposed to see me. Yo, bro. How you doing? Good. All right. Okay. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Would you like to know what would make me convert to Islam? Mm. <clears throat> like I don't know much about Christianity, but it's Jesus God. Like, do you, do you think Jesus is God? Would you like to know what would make me convert to Islam? Yeah, I will like show you that Christianity is false. 
Okay, so this is a way to show me that Islam is true. Okay, because mm. if Christianity is false, it doesn't mean Islam is true. So I'm trying to see that Islam is true. Okay, um, and this is what will make me believe that Islam is true. The Quran says that Jesus mentioned Muhammad by name. Can you show me anywhere where Jesus mentioned Muhammad? Obviously, as a Christian, I believe everything Jesus said. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> uh, Janelle says, God bless. Let him use you. <laughs> you have no idea how much Islam grieves me. I would say that I have, you know, I, I don't know you personally, but I have an idea because it grieves me. You know, it makes it saddens me when people are deceived by this religion and what this religion does to children out there, to men and women out there. Um, yeah, it, it sucks. So this is why we do what we do. This is why we do what we do for the kingdom of God, to bring people out of that darkness, plant seeds and let God do the rest. Amen. So ah, let's see if we can get someone serious. By the way, guys, is the, is the link not in the, uh, not on YouTube or something? Hold on. Is the link not on YouTube? Let me check and make sure the link is on YouTube. Because if you're a Muslim, you can come on up and give it your all. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see the pinned link. Wow, that's crazy. I could have sworn that I pinned the link. But no worries. There we go. Let me go ahead and share the link then, yeah? All right, so I'm about to put this in here. <laughs> rookie move. You a rookie. I'm about to put in all caps just in case someone doesn't see that this link is strictly for my Muslim friends. Muslims only explanation points. And now the link. So now this should prevent any non-Muslims from joining. What up, One Way Apologetics? Chris Claus in the house. I miss you, man. I miss you. All right, now let me go ahead and pin this. All right, now the link is pinned. So you guys know who that's for, all right? Don't disappoint me now. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We got Kai Burry says, God bless the brother from Romania. <laughs> Logic to say thank you in Romanian. Here's how to say that. Okay. Mul to mesk. Mul to mesk. That, that's tough. I have to say that a lot. How you doing, Nutella? Nutella. What's good. What's good? Nothing much. You a Muslim? Yeah, man. You you should go to Islam, bro, because you know we we get to work for our salvation. Oh yeah. Well, I know that I can't work for my salvation, man. So I, if I went to Islam, I'd be ish out of luck. But I'll tell well, you what. what I'm saying. This this you is know, what will make me. Good, this will, this is what will make good, me convert. Ways you're bad. Then you can this, get this is heaven, what this right? is what will make me uh take Islam seriously. Jesus mentioned that uh I'm sorry that the Quran mentions that Jesus says that Muhammad will come after him. So if you can show me where Jesus says that Muhammad comes after him, I definitely take Islam seriously and believe that Muhammad was actually a real prophet. Well, Muhammad, Mu, I mean the our, you know, our Quran says that if your good deeds outweigh your bad, then you're good to go. Like you're, you can even get wide, like multiple wives in heaven. And all you have to do is be a good person. Are you, a, are you really a Muslim? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, bro. I'm just trying to expose the enemy, bro, because honestly, 
when it comes to Muslims. I hell off my stage. Matter of fact, hey guys, block him. If you guys see him in the comment section, go ahead and block him. I don't I don't do trolls. I don't do I don't do people that waste my time purposely. Block him. I don't do I don't do Christians who pretend to be Muslims uh, on a Christian live wasting our time. I don't do that. Block him. Okay, so it looks like TikTok is uh, disqualifying themselves. So goodbye, TikTok. Let's go ahead and bring up somebody from YouTube. Uh, so I see both of you guys are a perfect dawah and who's that? I see both of you guys there. Can you guys both show your screen so I know that you're not trolls? Show your screen so that I know that you're not trolls. All right, thank you, perfect dawah. Who's that? Can you show your screen, please? If you do not show your screen, you will be removed. All right, so you're going to be banned. All right. Hello. Perfect. Oh, would you like to know what would make me consider Islam seriously? Uh, actually, um, I'm not here to um, convert you to Islam. I just <clears throat> you had some. We had some discussion, and you unfortunately you removed me. So I would like to uh, continue about that discussion if it's okay, and then that's we not, can. That's uh, it's not okay. Um, okay, because <clears throat> I'm myself a converted Muslim, and I converted to Islam not because uh, God exists or Prophet Muhammad was his prophet. I converted yeah, to there, Islam. There's, that's fine. <clears throat> I didn't ask you that. I, 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 yeah, you, because I, you, I have, you, there's there's something that will make me convert to Islam. Want to know what that is? If you don't want to know yes. what that is, I'll move on to the next person. No, um, okay. I would like to tell you that. Uh, <clears throat> um, you have to know why you convert to a religion. Your aim is to go. Depend on your aim. <clears throat> if your aim is to go to heaven, then would you like? <clears throat> would you like to know again? Would you like to know what would make me convert to Islam? Would you like to know my why? Okay. Yes. Or, what is, or do what I need would, to go to the next person? Yeah. Yeah. What would you? Uh, yeah. Convert you to Islam? <clears throat> okay. You thank me? you. So mm -hmm. the Quran's. I believe in Jesus. I believe everything that Jesus said. I trust All everything right. that Jesus said. The Quran says mm -hmm. that Jesus said that Muhammad will come after him, or Ahmed specifically. So I want to mm -hmm. know where Jesus said this. If I could find where Jesus said this, I definitely believe that Ahmed is a prophet. All right. Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, I haven't been myself uh, looking in that, that there is uh, any verse in Quran that says, Jesus said after me, Prophet Muhammad will come. So <clears throat> when I don't know that myself, um, I cannot tell you that this verse or that verse of Quran says that, okay? <clears throat> because it can be misunderstood by some people that Quran says that, okay? I haven't met, uh, seen myself any verse in Quran that says Jesus said uh, after him will come uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Chapter 61, verse 6. What it says, can you please read? Yeah, it says that Jesus said that he came, confirm, came confirming the Torah that came before him mm -hmm. and with, with glad tidings of a messenger named Ahmed to come after me. Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me <clears throat> please check it. Chapter. You said Chapter 61. 60. Okay. <laughs> Verse 6. Bless you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, sorry, it takes uh, 61 verse. Verse 60, you said, yeah? Verse 6. Or? 6, okay. 
Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I haven't been uh, looking, but it says Ahmed, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been <clears throat> myself uh, looking deeper in this verse, so I cannot, <clears throat> I cannot confirm anything, but I have to look at this uh, verse, okay, to see okay. <clears throat> what it is says so if you don't mind then <clears throat> if you just have to ask this one then uh i have to come back to you another time okay, okay. I, have, I have one more maybe you can have this one yes there's one more okay um well let me just ask you this before i move on to the next one and then this will be this will be it All right. mm -hmm. as a christian um if I do not find that Jesus said that Muhammad will come after him as a prophet, is it fair for me as a Christian to reject this as a as as false? All right, <clears throat> that's uh, for me. Uh, I mean, I am my logic is different than you because if, uh, for example, the Quran says after me comes a prophet Muhammad say after me comes another prophet for me the logic should be that okay what is the message of that prophet okay or if somebody uh, says um, for example uh, gives a good message I've said it many times before if somebody like uh, a Buddha say something nice then I accept it I don't have to believe that he is a prophet or he's uh, I don't know, <clears throat> uh, his message is from God. When he says something nice and it is, uh, you know, useful for my, uh, for our world uh, and humanity, then I believe that uh, in God, uh, in Quran, uh, teach us, command us to follow any anything good, okay? So if it is good and it is uh, helpful for us, then uh, I would follow it. So I don't care if that's uh, from God or it's from someone else. If it, a politician, yeah, yeah. See me, you, you, you're right. You and I, we definitely do have different, uh, different logic. Okay. Um, my, my logic is if if the Quran said something that that's not true, then mm -hmm. the Quran is false. That's that's okay. my logic. You know. Okay. Um, is, is that fair of me to to reason like that? That if the Quran says Jesus said something, and Jesus didn't say that would that it would be okay. fair for me to, to dismiss the quran as a false book right yeah i mean uh but as long as you don't do bad deeds okay <clears throat> because, i'm not talking uh, about, my bad, not about my bad deeds it's just about no. what, judging what is true if the quran yeah, yeah, makes I mean, a false statement about okay. jesus all right and yes, it's not okay. true i can dismiss yeah. the quran as false right all right look uh logic the thing is that quran says as long as you do good deeds you are saved okay so it, no matter if you just believe in Jesus, but as long as you do good deeds and you avoid bad do, deeds, then do you, do you know what I'm asking you? Yes, I understand. Yes, you can reject. So, I say. Am I am yeah. I am I asking about how I how do I get to heaven according to Islam? No, I'm or? just saying that. I'm just okay. saying that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm no, just. Yes. I don't. I'm. I, I want yes. to be. I want to be. Uh, I feel like I'm being direct. I feel like I'm usually mm -hmm. direct. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay. But I'm very straightforward with what I ask. Okay. You All know right. what I'm saying? So when people okay. begin to to talk okay. and just say words not relating to what I asked, that's where the disconnect happens. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know All what right. I'm saying? Can I tell you now? I understand you. Okay. Okay, good. So okay, not only you, not only you. Say you words know? to what I if I if okay, I see yes. the Quran say something about Jesus, I'll ask it for okay. the fourth or fifth time. I don't know how okay. many. Okay, yes. Okay. If it says something about Jesus and okay. I see that Jesus actually didn't say this, all right. Is it fair for me as a Christian and a truth okay. seeker to dismiss the Quran as a false book for lying about what Jesus said? Okay. Um, as long as it is the only that part, yes, you can reject it because you believe in something else, okay? It's logic for you. But if there are good commands in Quran and you reject it and you go against those good commands, then that's not uh, fair from you. For example, if Quran says uh, give charity or uh, don't kill 
uh, people, innocent people, and you go against that, that's not correct. But otherwise, if you say, no, Jesus, uh, you believe that Jesus is son of God, so that's, uh, and you really believe in that, that's fair from you, no problem at all. Okay. I don't see any problem in that. All right, all right. So here's my, ne here's my next thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Quran talks about a book that Jesus was taught. It mm -hmm. says in chapter 3, verse 48. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 48, it says, we will teach him the book, uh, the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we know what the Torah is. We know the gospel is a gospel. You know, wisdom could be the wisdom of these books or whatever. But what is this other book that Jesus was taught? Other books. Um... Yeah. Uh, who, <clears throat> which what verse you said? Chapter three, verse forty-eight. Can you read it, please? Yeah, I just because otherwise I have to bring it up. Yeah, I just quoted it. It says, "We will teach him." Talking about Jesus, we will teach him the mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel. Mm -hmm. So um, my question is, what is that book that Jesus was taught that's different from the Torah and the gospel? The book um, can be the law, okay? Can be God's laws, okay? What law? For, for uh, Even Quran is the book. Uh, gospel and Torah, people of the book, the law of God, okay? So people who um, follow the, the law of God, are people of the book uh, in Quran. Understand? Yeah, they're people of the book, meaning the Torah and the gospel, you know. Yeah, people, no, it, it's it's not just uh, Christian and Jews, okay? There are other, uh, other people who were following other books in, in Quran, like uh, uh, Zoroastrian, for example. Yeah, so what, yeah. what book was Jesus taught? What book was it, Jesus taught? The, the, the law of God, okay, and any laws that God has, uh, you know, given. Yeah, and, and what book, though? What book? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not a specific book. It is the law of the, of God, okay, for but example. It is, it is a specific book. It says we'll, we're going to teach him the book. So the it's book. a specific book. The yeah. law, yes, the law of God. Where does it say? It doesn't say the law. Yeah, the book is the law of God. Like Quran is also how you, the book. How do you okay? How do you know that the book is the law of God? Because we believe in that. Yes, we believe that. Where, where does it where does it say that the book here that Jesus is taught is the law of God? Yeah, but uh, God says that. That's that's uh, what uh, yeah, when, you, we be, when, yeah. when we believe in Quran, then God says that. Then it is the book, the the law of God. Quran. Yeah, no, so uh, I don't think you understand what I'm asking. Okay. It says that Jesus is going to be taught this book. Right. You're saying that this book is the law of God. Mm -hmm. Can you show me where the Quran identifies this book as the law of God that Jesus is taught? No, I, I cannot show you uh, that one. So where are you getting this from, that this book mm -hmm. that Jesus was taught is the law of God? Okay, I said that um, any book that God has sent is... Uh, his his laws. Okay, got Quran, you. Yes, yes. His okay, laws. no worries. So, so, so he has even, told so even, the laws. So yeah. Okay, I got you. So even the Quran and the Torah and the Gospel, these are all laws of God, right? Yes, all okay. laws of God. So my question, I guess, still stands. Then, which book is this, or which law is this? Because it's not the Torah, it's not the Gospel, it's not the Quran. Which law is this that Jesus was taught? I, I don't know if it is a specific law. Look, I haven't been, uh, uh, you know, concentrating on, on every single verse of Quran that, okay, which book is that? So I have been looking for uh, beautiful commands of God, okay? And uh, that's all I'm, uh, I'm interested in. For example, Jesus says, love one another, love your neighbor as you love yourself. I follow that. I follow anything that... Uh, Anybody teach me anything good, okay? So okay. I, I haven't been uh, uh, concentrating on every okay. single verse of Quran and okay. uh, finding where is this book, who is, uh, you know. So it's that's okay. why, yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll try to bring up 
I'll try to bring maybe a Muslim that maybe have a uh, all right be able to engage I, with us. Okay. I just would like to, if it is possible, uh, because last time you were asking a question and I uh, couldn't join. It was about uh, uh, I'm gonna, corruption. I'm gonna, corruption. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on now. All right. So I, I wanted to actually to talk about that uh, last time you were talking. When can we talk about that? Is that okay? Is we'll that see. possible? We'll see. I'll pray. All on right. Then. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see if uh, someone else can, can give an answer here. Abdullah. Um, hello? Can you hear me? What's up? I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, oh, this is going to prove Islam is the truth. Do you think that the Almighty, the One, is supposed to be merciful or disdainful to his prophets? I actually have a way that you could prove Islam is true to me. I've only been asking one thing. The Quran mentions that Jesus said that Ahmed will come after him. Where can I find Jesus ever mentioning Ahmed coming after him? If you could show me in that, which, then that's almost true. In which book, the Old Testament or New Testament? It would have to be in the New Testament because that's where you know Jesus gave the gospel as revelation, right? Yeah, but that's that's not the book that uh the prophet Muhammad approved. Yeah, it is. He says that he he, he he did not approve Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He did not okay. approve that. Okay. What what is the gospel then? The gospel is one. You have four gospels. What is the just Torah? like the Trinity? You have three gods, but you say hey, it's I, one. I really got a little. Your your mic is really really loud. But what okay. what is the what is the Torah? The Torah. Yeah, the is Torah it? is what Musa lay salam got. Yeah, but it is, has nothing. Look, these prophets were Muslim. I, so I hear to you. say that Jewish yeah, yeah. goes against I, I, the Abdullah, Quran. Abdullah, Abdullah, please slow down and relax. When you say that the Torah is what was given to Moses, what exactly is Musa? That? Musa. There's a difference between Moses and Musa. I say Musa. When you want to talk about Moses, the Anonymous A, please show your screen. <laughs> Anonymous A, please show your screen because you're next. I'm going in order. Anonymous A, show your screen, please. Feet sleep. Going once, going twice. Show your face. I need to see your face. I need to see your face. All right, so you're not showing your face, so you got to go, bro. Uh, Adebayo Shakir, please show your screen, show your face. Adebayo Shakir. All right, thank you so much, my friend. I'll bring you right up. Can you hear me? You I can hear yeah, you just fine. fine. Okay. I've been trying to uh, get this opportunity to be on your program. I think uh, today is a lucky day for me. Yeah, yeah, you got here early enough, and and the yeah. guests before you were were not not good enough to stay long. So yeah, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, um, in as much as you know, want us to go back to what you have been discussing. I have a lot of things to talk about it, but I really want to stick to the topic for today um mm -hmm. you are asking where uh if i can show you where uh ahmed is uh, stated in the gospel is that correct is that the question where jesus specifically mentioned ahmed in the gospel okay um i think uh, the very first thing you need to understand is that uh New Testament is different from the gospel. And uh, in the New Testament, I agree with you that we can get what Jesus preached, which is the gospel. But the question is this, can you tell me authoritatively 
that everything that Jesus taught is what is recorded in the fourth gospel. That's, That's the question far. I have to pose to you first. Yeah, as far as revelation, yes. Everything that Jesus taught about revelation is is there. And then okay, what he did, can we can, I, can you tell me can you tell me the meaning of what is written in John chapter 21, verse 25? If you that's allow me, I will read it. Yeah, that's not revelation. He did and said many things that if you know it's recorded, not even the books will be able to contain it. That has nothing to do so, with revelation. So meaning that there are certain things that he did or talked about that is not recorded. Yeah, that has nothing to do with revelation. No, 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 no. Don't say I answered your question. The revelation okay. that Jesus that Jesus brought is recorded. And if and if things that are revelation that he didn't specifically expound on, the Holy Spirit finished it all. So nothing is left out. No, no. I still want you to uh for that particular comment. I, I really want to understand there are many other things Jesus did that yep. is not recorded can you tell me just one thing that he did that is not recorded i don't, I don't know I, so I if, you do, if you don't if, if you you cut out your vo your volume sorry can you hear me can you hear me yeah yeah i hear you now yeah so since there are certain things that he did that you don't even know so Certainly, there may be some other things that he said that is not recorded. So perhaps those. No, nope, that's not what it says. It's not what it says. It says that he did many things, many things that were not recorded, not talked about revelation. He didn't reveal things, say things that wasn't recorded that uh, they didn't keep. He did many things that they did not record. Um, it has nothing to do with revelation. As far as revelation, he gave all the revelation. There's nothing else coming mm -hmm. after that. So, so, so my argument is this: in the four gospels, and we also have so many other gospels that they meet up with uh, what you call the canonical gospel. There are a lot of apocryphs there, which I don't want to go into. But basically, as far as Islam is concerned, what we have, what you call the New Testament, these are uh, the stories about the life of Jesus. And there's no way you're going to uh, write anything about the life of Jesus that you're not going to write the gospel. But possibility is there since there are certain things that they didn't do that are not even mentioned. So I want to believe that because of the fact that we cannot see it in this New Testament today does not rule out the fact that Jesus actually prophesies about Muhammad. Okay. And this is what I, my response to you again. My response to you is Jesus gave everything regarding revelation. And talking about a prophet to come after him would have been revelation and something that people to look for people to look out for. Um, and so regarding revelation, everything was displayed, everything was given. And therefore, since we do not see him giving any revelation of a prophet named Muhammad coming after him, then we could deem that as a as false uh, a false claim and false words that were put into the mouth of Jesus by the Quran. No, well, that may be your opinion, and also my opinion still stands. What we have at New Testament today is record about Jesus' life, and even the New Testament does not capture all activities or all the things that Jesus said. I am going to say that. Yeah, there's no evidence that everything that Jesus taught, everything that he says is recorded. No Got evidence it. to that. So, so as so a result of that, things John can tell us that. So you, would say, certain, so you would say that you can't prove that Jesus said this, but you got to take it by faith, by blind faith that Jesus ever said this. Yeah, let me tell you why I, I will believe that. Uh, if you understand the revelation of the Quran, it's a message to man. And uh, if you understand, Understand that it's a kind of book that uh, that was revealed. It was like a, an interactive, or let me say, a dialogical and uh, a responsive communication. Any events that happen during the time of the prophet, Allah responds to it. So, if during that time 
the prophet is telling people you will find this thing mentioned that jesus prophesies about muhammad coming then the christian during that time should have said no show us we don't have it all those things so because of the fact that we do not have record that they protested against that shows that orally they may have that and secondly oh, i am so saying it little, little. Yep. hold on hold on. <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold no. on and listen i am yeah. i am saying so something an again argument, that an argument, an argument of silence doesn't work that's no no let me say something no that's no i gotta address what you just said an argument okay. of silence is not a valid argument saying Oh, because I don't see a record of people not uh, objecting to this claim means that this that it must have been there, that the, 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 the prophecy of Muhammad must have been in their scriptures since there's no record that I have seen of them objecting to this or saying show it. You have many Christians across the years, Justin Martyr, for example, that calls Muhammad out, that calls Islam out, calls the Quran out as a joke because of the things that it claims about Jesus and him being mentioned in the scriptures and because of this. You should read what Justin Martyr says about Islam. You should read it. So you have records of people going against Islam, these claims that Jesus said this or Jesus did this or the prophets did this. Justin Martyr made it a laughing stock about Islam, bro. So an argument from silence doesn't work, man. It's either it's there or it's not. Yeah, let me let, 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 let me say something. I actually, I still believe on my point that the four gospels we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, does not give every detail of what Jesus said. And even Jesus himself do, uh, never testify or approve that what we read in the New Testament, the four gospels, is actually what he taught or is the completion of what he said. Like if you go into the New Te uh, Old Testament, we read that Moses read some things about Taurat and all those stuff, but the New Testament, the four gospel, Jesus did not even acknowledge that, oh, this is actually what happened. This is what I said. This is what I don't, I did not say. This is what is missed out. This is not what is missed did out. Did he do that but with the Quran? I am telling you, I am telling you. Did he do what that with the Quran? Did he do that with the did Quran? Do? Did, did he do did Jesus verify the statements about him in the Quran? Did he verify those things? Speaking from the cradle, saying that he said Muhammad will come after him, uh, you know, doing all these things. Did Jesus say, yes, th this is actually true about me? I, I confirm this. Did he confirm it? He couldn't have said that because Quran came after Jesus. Oh, so if the New, the New Testament was written okay. after Jesus, he could not have said, yes, this is absolutely correct. This is what you will but yet you still believe those things in the Quran. So that's a bad argument. Fine, fine. No, fine. This is what I'm this is this is my argument. Moses was able to tell us, he was able to read from the Torah, he was able to read from the law. Moses was uh, David was able to read from the psalm. The psalm existed. So he can say, This is the psalm I preach. Moses can say this is the Torah that I preach, but Jesus couldn't tell us that this New Testament, this four gospel, is actually the gospel I preach. Muhammad was able to tell us, he was able to tell us that this is the Quran I read. Hold on, time out though. Your Quran is saying what Jesus said. Your Quran is saying yeah. what gospel Jesus preached. Did Jesus yeah. confirm what the Quran is saying? That he preached a gospel? That he preached the gospel, that this is what he said? Did, did Jesus yeah. confirm? Did Jesus go? Hello? Yeah, you back? Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, did Jesus, so the Quran makes claims about what Jesus said and did. Did mm -hmm. Jesus confirm what the Quran says that he said and did? Yeah, God revealed to us that yeah, Jesus... Jesus. Oh, wait, stop there. Do you see okay. God revealed to us through the Quran that Jesus mm -hmm. said and did this? So yes. I can say the same thing that God revealed to us through the apostles that Jesus said and did this. So what, what you are missing the you, you, you are you are missing the point. 
you are missing the point. Listen, listen. Just listen to me. You are missing the point. The gospel was not revealed to the apostles. The gospel was revealed to Jesus. So the apostles and whoever the writers are, are writing about the gospel and the story of Jesus. The question is this. Did Jesus actually confirm that this New Testament is actually what he preached? That is the question. Moses was able to tell us from the New Te uh, Old Testament that he read the law. David did the same thing in the Psalm. I don't understand you. I don't. I just, had mute, I just had to mute you because it sounds like you can't hear me or something, or I'm trying to talk to you and you're just talking, you're just running on with your sentences. I'm trying to talk to you. So again, Adebayo, you just helped my case. All I, all I have to do, bro, is repeat what you say. I'm repeating what you're saying, literally. So you said the gospel wasn't revealed to the apostles. Okay. The gospel wasn't revealed to Muhammad. So how could Muhammad say what Jesus said or revealed? It wasn't revealed to Muhammad. The gospel wasn't revealed to Muhammad. Jesus didn't come and say, yeah, Muhammad, you know what? Yep, you're right on that. I did say that. Yeah, Muhammad, you know what? You're right. I did do this. I did do that. I'm saying the same thing that you're saying. So what is the prop? Just admit that your methodology is faulty and inconsistent. You can't hold the apostles and Jesus to a standard and us to a standard that you yourself cannot stand up to. You get what I'm saying? Go, you, you, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. You got you to gotta unmute yourself. There you go. Okay. Okay. Again, listen, you are, you, you are God's logic. So let's use the logic together. The hey! Quran was wait, the Quran was revealed to Muhammad. In hey, the Quran, listen, in the Quran, God confirmed that the gospel was revealed to Jesus. And ah, in the gospel, right. revealed, yes, right. the Quran, ah, the Quran, ah, listen. Ah, no, no, no. Can you let me learn? I want you to know that I'm saying what you're saying. You don't have to repeat it. All you're doing, bro. Is repeating what you just said. I don't need that. Be don't because you are missing the point. Watch this. No, you're missing the point. Watch. Okay. The the Quran was revealed to Muhammad, and so mm -hmm. God revealed to Muhammad what Jesus mm -hmm. said. It is. is that correct? Yes. Okay. So guess what? I'm gonna say the same thing. The New Testament was revealed to the apostles. God revealed the New Testament to the apostles and the apostles told us through the revelation of God that Jesus preached a particular gospel and said this or did this. I just said the same thing you just said, just reversed roles. Do you want me to make a point? I want you to respond. I, to I, I am telling you that New Testament has no basis in the Quran or Islam. Jesus knew nothing about New Testament. Jesus knew Quran? about listen, listen. Jesus know knew Quran? about God. Can you let me talk? No. Did he know about the Quran? Can you let me talk? Did he know about the Quran? Jesus did not know about the Quran. Okay, so this is where we're at. Jesus didn't know about the New Testament. Jesus didn't know about the Quran. Why are you saying? But he knew the about God? gospel. Huh? He knew about the gospel because okay. gospel, gospel was revealed to him. I got you, but here's my here's my point, bro. Here's my point. You're saying that the New Testament is not the gospel that Jesus preached. Fine. Correct. Okay. The Quran is not the gospel that Jesus preached. It's a book from Muhammad. Correct. Okay? So Correct. The Quran, Muhammad's book, the New mm -hmm. Testament, the book of the apostles. They mm -hmm. both say that Jesus had a gospel and they both mm -hmm. comment on what Jesus said and did. How do you know which one is which? Which one is true? Because you're saying Jesus didn't know? Okay, I can go with you. Jesus didn't know about either of these. So which mm -hmm. one is true? Now, I okay, that's a fair comment. Jesus didn't know about the Quran, correct. Jesus didn't know about the New Testament, correct. So how do we know the two? If we have to remove the equation that God revealed the Quran to the Muhammad, 
there is no evidence that God revealed the New Testament to those people who claimed it. Right, and pause. 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 No, no. Pause. Okay. 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 So now you, okay. you presupposed that the that God Himself revealed the Quran. Now I'm gonna say the same thing. I'm going with that God revealed the New Testament to the apostles. Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. No, see, you no, show me the evidence. Watch this though. You were the first one to make the claim that God revealed the Quran. Show me the evidence. Yeah. Show me no, evidence. so the evidence is this. I will show you multiple evidence. Go to the Quran. Quran in Quran chapter two is there. Surah to Yasin is there. God revealed in so many places. We reveal this Quran to you. Ah, God says to Muhammad, we reveal the Quran to you. Show me where God says he revealed New Testament to those people who wrote it. I'll show, I'll show you better. In your Quran, okay. chapter 7, verse 157, it says that they follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, who they find written in the Torah and the gospel with them. Here's my question to you. What was the mm -hmm. gospel that was with the Christians during the time of Muhammad, what gospel was that? Of course, there was a gospel. Okay, let me let me answer this way so that I'm going to answer this way so that you have clarity of these things. There was nothing like New Testament as a book during the time of Muhammad. There what? were manuscripts. Listen, 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 listen before you laugh. There were manuscripts various manuscripts not a whole book of, of, really? of sort have now those manuscripts no no i gotta stop you have you ever heard of codex Sinaiticus? you are not you are missing the point no, 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 you are I, not I, listening I, I'm, to, I'm, you are not you are not listening to me you, you see, are not listening to me not, I, all of a sudden i'm not listening to you when i'm directly on your point do you no, 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 no. You won't, you won't allow me to, you won't allow me to land before you interject. So how will you understand where I am going? Let me tell you why. When you build a point off of a false premise, I have to mm. address that false premise immediately. That's why. Because mm. I don't want you to waste time building an argument when the foundation is false. That's mm. why. So when you say mm. there was no book, like no New Testament book, like as a book, there were manuscripts. Complete, there. complete, complete, yes. complete, I like you. we have. I, I am you. talking about. Shikin, okay. I heard you. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my question since you say that. Do you know what Codex Sinaiticus is? Yes, I know there are manuscripts. No. About Codex. the New Testament. So, first of all, the name Codex, clearly, the Codex is a book, it's a collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Codex Sinaiticus is the complete New Testament. In the 300 were they in possession with one person that's what you are missing i am telling yeah. you that the way we have new testament as a booklet today is yeah. not the way we have that it was, then they were in manuscripts that was the codex Sinaiticus, bro it was a book matthew mark mm -hmm. Luke, John, acts romans first second corinthians first second Rome. all of that was in is in codex Sinaiticus in the 300s so now my submission is this in those codex or in those manuscripts you can actually find gospel gospel of jesus written in them yeah and so they, they all say it it says gospel of jesus Fine. they what? mentioned about the gospel, the gospel of jesus, jesus. Let me, let me but they are actually not the gospel of jesus so the I argument i had to mute you again you don't even know you probably can't even hear me yeah, when you're talking over me, bro, I just gotta mute you because your Mac is just blasting. So I gotta, I gotta, I, I'm not about to do this. So again, Codex Ignaticus, against what you said, you said there was no complete New Testament during the time of Muhammad. That's a lie. We have that's not, that's not what I said. That is exactly what you said. That we is have not what, because you are not going to list me. We are not going to listen. How can you I, again? We have a complete New Testament. Stop talking over me so that I won't have to mute you. We have a complete New Testament 400 years before Muhammad's time. So, what are you talking about? We have a complete you? New Testament, complete 
before Muhammad's time. You want so me to react? Out. You want me to react? I want you to respond to that directly. I think, I think, I'm sorry to say this. Uh, the problem you're having with me is you will not even allow me to conclude my statement. Once you get it from the point, because of the fact that you are not patient enough to listen to my, then you miss all the points entirely. That is the scene. If I make a little statement, just allow me to learn before you now say, oh, this is what you mean. This is not. I'm going to give you an example. During the time of Muhammad, there was, the there, was a, there was complete revelation of the Quran, but there was no Quran, a booklet form as a complete book. Bye. Take care. We're going to conclude here. <clears throat> yeah, man. I mean, this is crazy. You lie. You state a lie. I completely refute your lie at its core before you can waste our time building a false argument. I stop you at your core, and then you say, I'm not getting the point. Okay, next. Abdullah, you're next. Please show your face. Prince 1080. Go ahead and show your face. If you do not show your face in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to kick you and move on. Dang, my chair is falling apart. Okay, I see you. Thank you, Abdullah. Hello. Well, would you like to know what makes me a Muslim? Or, I'm sorry, what would make me a Muslim? Yeah, I would like to know. Jesus, or the Quran says that Jesus mentioned Muhammad would come after him. Or Ahmed mm -hmm. to be specific. Where mm -hmm. did Jesus say this? If you can show me where Jesus ever said this, I definitely consider Islam. Okay. And what do you think about an argument from the absurd? So if I if I like, I have proved to you that the Injil or like the Bible is false and that it has contradictions, and so that you wouldn't believe in it, and that you would actually believe in the Quran, would that be a valid proof to you or not? It would actually prove that the Quran is false because it's saying that the gospel is true in which Jesus is prophesying Muhammad. So if you prove to me that the gospel is false, then that proves the Quran is false for saying the gospel is true. Uh, how does that prove the Quran is false since uh, Allah because the Quran says, says the Quran? The Quran says the gospel is true. If the gospel is false, then the Quran is false for saying that a false book is true. Yeah, but like you miss the, you miss the point. The point is like the Quran says that the book revealed to Jesus is true. What you have right now isn't like the same that he, Jesus had. Got it. So just we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So if what I have today is not the same that Jesus had, uh, yeah. so this means that there's nowhere where we can find Jesus mentioning Muhammad? Uh, in this Bible that we have right now, uh, no, except if you take like um, the verse in the Bible where it says that like the descendant of uh, Ismail alayhi uh, salam will have a prophet and uh, that you take that as from being Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Where where does it say that? Where does it say that the descendants uh, of Ishmael I'm, will have a prophet? I'm going to give you the verse right now. Okay. Uh so 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 yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna find it later but like if you have if you want to put another point on the table while yeah. i'm searching it uh, i i can help you yeah, if yeah, the verse the verse doesn't exist. Yeah, it does. Okay, so take your time. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> take your time. I'll bring up somebody in the meantime. Okay. Okay, it's good. I'm gonna meet myself then. All right. What's up, Anam? Anam, are you at your computer, bro? All right, Anam's probably not as at his computer. Let's bring up Solomon. What's up, Solomon? Hey, what's up, man? So you've been hearing it, right? You've yeah. been listening? Yeah. Okay, good. So maybe you can try. Where does Jesus mention Muhammad? Um, okay, so what I'm understanding is you want to claim outside the source of the Quran, obviously. You want it in the Bible. 
uh, any, but, any uh, early historical source that's reliable and what Jesus said. So, yeah, obviously so, that's the problem that we have. But you know, I've, I've noticed that a lot of the questions are kind of skewed to this sort of uh, logic that if the book that you believe in says something that you don't want it to say, which it will not say because the people who manufactured that book would not have put it in there in such an obvious manner. So how would one then commit to such a challenge? I think Abdullah had a more direct approach to try to convince somebody of Islam, you know, maybe even look at it from a holistic point of view, both Islam and Christianity, but to try and find a single statement, pinpointed it, and say, okay, this is going to clarify for me that Islam is the truth in a book that was specifically written for people who are meant to believe that, as Paul would mention later on, Jesus is God and we have to do this and that. It's going to be, it's, it's like you're setting up a challenge that can't be met in that sense. But if it's talking about other things, then I definitely, we can have that conversation. Okay. So, I, interesting. Um, I disagree with the fluff that was around, but I do agree with the last part that you said, that this is a challenge that cannot be met. But here's the reason why it can't be met, because Jesus never said this. The Quran is putting words in Jesus' mouth. And so what okay. I'm doing is, yeah. is I'm challenging the claim of the Quran. Show me where mm -hmm. Jesus ever said that somebody named Ahmed will come after me. If, okay, if, let's, you're let's the, if, you're like saying, if you're saying that the Bible is unreliable, I notice I actually never brought up the Bible. It's the Muslims here that so far have brought up the Bible. I haven't mentioned the Bible here. So yeah, all I'm asking is where is this? Okay, there's no other historical, let's say, the, besides the Christian church fathers and maybe one or two Jewish uh, historians like Josephus who wrote about Jesus. So obviously exactly. there's not going to be other... Uh, books, unless you're talking about, uh, you know, whatever the Rosetta Stone or whatever these other things are. But exactly. if we're talking about, let's say, Jesus, so let if we think about it from this line of thinking, if Jesus was the God of the Old Testament, and this is why probably Abdullah is trying to find this verse now, where it says that the bloodline uh, of Israel. Found it. Okay. All right, nice. But the, What's that verse? Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let him finish, and then I'm gonna say the verse. If you uh, let, let me uh, do that. All right, fair enough. Okay. Okay. So anyway, I was probably gonna say similar to that verse. There are other verses, but the thing is, again, you wanted to specifically say Ahmed. Well, that's what the Quran says. The Quran specifically. Okay. So then, if we if we stick to this, Ahmed. if we stick to this thinking, the word Ahmed, as translated in the Quran in Arabic means the same meaning as the name of Muhammad. The praiseworthy one, right? Yeah, the praise, yeah, exactly. I know where so, it is. Can you, like, that's what so I'm if, So let's say, does he have, there's... Yes. Again, this is, or maybe you can look at it as something I'm, describing a person. If yeah, you looked no. at Deuteronomy... No, no, so, wait, Jesus isn't speaking in Deuteronomy, that's Moses. Jesus specifically is speaking in the gospel, right? They, they yeah, but who, 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 let's say, um, surely you believe that Moses was not just writing of his own accord. It must, yeah, he must have been. Fine, if, if I, if my thing was, where does Moses mention Muhammad? That would be, we, I have no problem going to Deuteronomy right now or wherever Moses spoke. My question and specifically the Quran says Jesus said this. So my question is, where did Jesus say this? Now, I'm willing to be gracious, Solomon. I'm willing to be gracious and add one Band-Aid to the issue and say, you know what? Maybe Jesus didn't say Ahmed specifically. Maybe he described Ahmed. Fine. Mm -hmm. I will, I'll put a nice little bandage patch to try to save the Quran there and say, maybe we don't have to look for what the Quran said Jesus said, but something of the like of what the Quran says Jesus said. So I'll dumb it down, no problem. Where does Jesus describe Muhammad? Says that someone's coming after me and describes this person as, you know, Muhammad. Okay, well, 
if we look at you know let's not go to deuteronomy if that's the case but i would i would have gone there because there's one part where it says a man with the fiery uh, arm of the lord ten thousand men mountain of sinai but fine yeah, but if you want god, to think that about says god specifically not a man it says god it says god came with his holy ones and god came and shown himself yeah, but the, the, Mount the word g like is that. not capitalized i think there, there is so no capital or lowercase in hebrew and it's it, there's no capitals or, or lowercase in hebrew and actually to be specifically it says yahweh but the most not in the old it says so yahweh he it says yahweh it so. says yahweh will come yeah, down yeah. with the fiery law yeah it says it says yahweh came down with his fiery law it says yahweh shone forth from Mount sinai to mount Paran and to mount and shown himself in in uh seer the same word was used yeah, for it's, Moses, yahweh. Right? it's yahweh it's yahweh was the same word yeah was this used for moses no the the word so, yahweh is not applied to any to anyone the word oh yahweh was not applied to moses when they no. said you are a god among the people no the word is elohim Elohim and in the other verse it's not Elohim correct it's Yahweh okay I'll, I'll look that up but let's okay let's try to think about it from another logical standpoint yeah uh, so where did before where did Jesus, Jesus ascends yeah before Jesus ascends he says uh after his alleged Muslim so I'm going to say alleged crucifixion he says I have many things to say unto you and then he says the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all things, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. What's your contention about who that spirit is? Well, Jesus says that he's the one who sends the spirit. So, do you believe whether he sends? Yeah, whether he sends it or not. But yeah. what's your contention about who is that spirit? Well, Jesus says that that's the spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. So, so why is he sending something that's already there? Because this time when he sends him, he will be indwelling the believers. This time he was only indwelling, dwelt in Jesus, and the believers didn't get to experience him in that way. This time when Jesus sends him, he will indwell the believers. And then how will that now reveal everything? Well, that's a, that's a different question. That, we can, we can talk about uh, Solomon. Okay, we can, we can, sorry, we can sorry. talk about the role of the Holy Spirit another day. But the identification of this, of the spirit, the comforter, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not Muhammad. You agree? I would say it is. Because for me, the only person that comes with a complete law, political, emotional, marriage, uh, well, you know, it, it doesn't say is that. Muhammad. It doesn't say that, but let's go with you. So if you're saying that that's Muhammad, Jesus says that he's the one who sent him. So you believe Jesus sent Muhammad? In the context of the Bible, that's why I said, if you're looking at the context of the Bible where the writers of the time are writing as if Jesus is God or son of God, then yes, it makes sense for them to write it in that manner that he will send. That's why so, I'm saying, even yeah, if you look saying. at do the... You, do, you, do, you the believe, yeah, do you believe, according to your belief, do you believe that Jesus sent Muhammad? No, if you, that's what I'm trying to say. If you put it like that, it's you're wording it in a way that you want me to reply to you no, and say no, yes. I'm, I'm wording it. I'm wording it, my friend, in a in a way that is it's worded according to the text that you brought up. So yes, you brought up the, you brought up this text. The text says Jesus sends the Spirit. So if you're saying that this is the Spirit is Muhammad, then you're saying Jesus is the one who sent Muhammad and therefore making him Allah. It's like the same. It's like the same using this same logic in the Quran that the Quran will put Jesus in light as a Muslim. In the Bible, it will put Jesus in light as a Christian or as a as an advocate for Christianity, whatever will become Christianity later on. So, so when you're so putting the word Jesus, even if you wanted to look at Jesus as God in the Bible, it's as if it's saying, "And God will send," because Jesus is. So then it's like saying, and God will send. That's what I'm trying to say. Because so, there's no so difference. You don't differentiate between the so two. Is, so here's my question. Is John chapter 16 true? Can you can you tell me what John chapter 16 is? Uh, the, it's the verse that you're talking about where he talks about how the comforter will come. He'll send him and he'll teach them all things. And, you know, he, stuff he can't bear now, that they can't bear now, but he'll come and teach them. 
and bring to their remembrance remembrance what he taught them. That's John 16. Okay. All of that is yeah. in John 16. If, so if I was, there's no Muslim, I, I, I talked to a gentleman life the other day, I think it was yesterday. I was telling him there's no Muslim in the world that will deny that there are verses that Muslims uh, can vouch for in the Bible because they don't say the whole Bible is corrupted. They yeah, just, I, I know, I know this. I know this, yeah. but I'm not. I'm even asking that. I'm just asking specifically about John 16, about what you. Yeah, if you're it. saying that, will Jesus send? If you're saying how it's texted in the Bible, will the main context is will God send somebody later who will? Oh, no, it's Jesus. Like Jesus. It's it's specifically so Jesus. I'm trying to say. That so do you if believe? You're not making any differentiation is between it, the two. Is it, is, is it true? Uh, Nor is it true that Jesus sends Muhammad? I'm going to answer it again. I know we're going to be in a crossroads here. I'm we won't be at a crossroads. A... All, all, all it takes is honesty. That's it. If yeah, you, I'm, I'm trying to see you in the all context. Of, all of these conversations go like this. Yeah. Only if the parties are honest. If you're dishonest, yeah. then we're stuck in a, in a little wormhole for a long so time. So I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be honest. And dishonesty. In the so just context be honest. Of the, in the context of the Bible. That's why I... Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just, I, I just asked a very, very simple question. Is it true that Jesus is the one who sins Muhammad? It's like me asking you, Avery, is it true that Jesus confirms Muhammad in the Quran? You have to say yes, right? No, because I don't have to the... say yes. I don't have to say but yes he, at all. But he does what your Quran the says Quran. about Jesus is false. What your Quran says about Jesus is false. It portrays Jesus as a Muslim, it's false. It says that Jesus mentioned Muhammad, that's false. It says Jesus spoke from the cradle, that's false. What your Quran no, says about that, Jesus is false. I'm saying according See to the Quran. how easy that was? Yeah, but according to the Quran, what is it? I don't care what the Quran says. It's false. But that's my, then that's my contention. Okay, good. It's so not, this, I, this I is would the answer question. the same thing. Is it true or is it false that Jesus sent Muhammad? According to your Bible, yes. According to your Bible. But if you look at Jesus then as God... True. Then ask about according to my Bible. Is it true or not? But you have, but Is you my have Bible to correct? Right. Is my Bible correct? Is it true that Jesus sends Muhammad? Can we pull up the verse? Sure. Just so we can have more clarity, yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at something. John it's, 16, it's verse the Apostle 7. of John, right? Yeah, chapter 16, okay. verse 7. One second. I'll put it on the screen for all of us to see, too. Yeah, please. All right, here it is, verse 7. Says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Mm -hmm. So is it true? Is it true? Is the Bible correct on this? That Jesus is the one who sends Muhammad. Again, if I'm reading it from the Bible, then yes. But no, the I, context, I know what the Bible says. Is the Bible correct? If the Bible portrays Jesus as God, then yes. So the Bible is correct that Jesus is God who sent Muhammad? If the Bible that you have is portraying Jesus because it says I go to the Father. Wait, put it back, sorry. 
in later context in the in the rest of the thing it says in me concerning righteousness because i go to the father and you will see me no law concerning judgment so here's the here's the thing jesus never did anything on his own right we know that from that. Acts. is it true yeah, but that's, is the bible no, correct that's, that's is the bible correct that jesus is god who sends muhammad hold on avery just please one. answer I, i'm not holding on anymore i need an answer but then it's you're cutting out. You got to admit that. Do, do you admit that it's a. All right. So, should I move on to someone else? I think I got enough out of you anyway. I appreciate you, man. Stop Take me. care. I appreciate you, bro. Take care. Yeah. Hello. Right. Do you agree with him that Jesus is God who sent Muhammad? No, I don't. So, he was wrong? Uh, uh, I wouldn't say he was wrong, but like That's what he, he, said. he was, yeah, yeah, but he was just trying like to interpret the verse like in a biblical way. So that's why I wouldn't be. Uh, but he uh, said that it's true. He said the Bible yeah, yeah. is correct here by saying Jesus is God who sent Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. so that's why I'm uh, I'm not uh, like with him because like I'm okay with this saying like that the comfort will be Muhammad, and as he's mentioning the that he's not literally mentioned in the Bible. But like saying that Jesus sent him wouldn't be correct since Jesus isn't isn't God, so he can't he can't uh, put someone on earth, you know? Yeah. So so then that would mean that Muhammad's not the Comforter, right? Because it says Jesus sends the Comforter. Yeah, but like, uh, do you want me to like give the verse that I was searching for before? Just one second. If okay. Jesus sends the Comforter, that would mean yes. that the Comforter is not Muhammad, right? Um, if you take the biblical logic, yes, but if you take like uh, a logic that's more akin to uh, science and like philosophy and rationality, then it could be that it's him. And uh, since in How? the Quran it states, wait, 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 because, hold on. How could it be? Because we, did Jesus because we, who who sent who sent Muhammad? Was it Allah or Jesus? Or is Jesus Allah? I'm confused. It's it's Allah that sent uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he sent Jesus too. Okay, good. Salam. So then that means if Allah is the one who sent is sent Muhammad, let me ask you yeah. this next question. Is Jesus mm -hmm. Allah? No. Okay, so Jesus is not Allah. Allah sent no. Muhammad. Jesus is not Allah. Yeah. It yeah. says here that the comforter is sent by Jesus, not Allah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So this, then that means the comforter can't be Muhammad, right? Okay. I, I, okay, I'm good with that. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, thank you for thank you so much. Go ahead and give me the verse that you uh. That's, that's not a problem. Like I, I'm being totally honest in it. Like you know, uh, I want the good for the people. I believe Islam is like the true belief. You believe is Christianity. You're trying to spread like the truth. So I respect your work. You know. Good. Absolutely. Absolutely. I respect that as well. That helps us move from one place to another. Yeah. Ah. So. All right. So this the verse, verse you, you got the verse that Ishmael, yeah, yeah. Is, the descendant of Ishmael will be a prophet. Yeah. All so right. like it's like in Genesis 17, verse 20. All right. Uh, Genesis 17. Read, like, oh, uh, yeah. Do you want me to like screen share it or? No, no, I'm going to share it on the screen. Okay. Can you help? Genesis 17. It says that the descendant of Ishmael will be a prophet. All right. Let's see if it says that. Oops. Thank you guys for the super chat. Make sure you guys are liking it. We have 2,176 people watching on YouTube. Make sure you guys are hitting that like button, all right? Hit that like button, guys, like you fear disobedience from it. Okay. So verse, uh, what did you say? Verse what? 20? Uh, 20. Yeah. All right. So verse 20. Here it is, verse 20 on the screen here. It Do you says, want me to read it? Yeah, I'll read it. I'll read it. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father 12 princes and I will make him into a great nation. Okay, but so where does, uh, it first, that in, where does it say that there be a prophet? Yeah, so I'm going to put that in a constructive argument. What does God mean by, by I have blessed him? Meaning he and just said it. He just said it. Wait, so but before we before we do this, you yeah. said that this verse says that a descendant of Ishmael will be a prophet. So yeah. we can see here just by plainly reading the text, it doesn't say that, right? Yeah. 
Okay. So now let's see. Let's go now into seeing what it actually says. I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. That's what it means. He'll give him a big family and a lot of descendants. Yeah. But th there's an end. So it's distinct. You no, know, I have blessed him and will make him. No, that, that's I continuing the thought. Because like the Bible studies that I've, I've read, they say that it's distinct that the blessed means that someone in his generation he will not be as a comforter but he's like he will be like someone who will be spreading the truth it doesn't and say uh, that it doesn't, it doesn't say yeah anything. yeah yeah i know i know i know no yeah but that's like the the study that i've been uh, yeah but but, but what is that what is that based on because we can say things about stuff it doesn't mean that it's true or if it's baseless yeah, totally. it should be thrown out so where in this text does it even hint that there's a particular figure that will come from Ishmael and be a prophet. It's not said um, directly. Like if you re read it and you understand it's like certain, you don't get that idea. Yeah. So the only uh, idea uh, that we get here is that Muhammad will have a big family, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't see any. But, but that's why I'm putting out that I have blessed him. So yeah. the, I have blessed him and his family. For mm -hmm. me and for like the um, not for only for me because that would be stupid. Like for the studies and the commentary that I've been reading, it says that I have blessed him means that, that someone that is like truthful will come from his family and yeah, it will what commentaries are you reading? Are these Muslim commentaries? No, uh, there are biblical commentaries from. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, pastors. show me the, show me the biblical commentary that's that it, that says that this is talking about a prophet, a biblical commentary. Yeah. Genesis 17. <laughs> Someone said 2.1k Muslim views. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, man. I'm reading the comment section. Okay, okay, okay. Make sure you guys hit the like button here. And by the way, we actually see the fulfillment of this uh, with Ishmael. We see it in a few uh, a few chapters later. Uh, the 12 princes that... Um, that, uh, that God promised to give to Ishmael. We actually have that in Genesis. I think it's like chapter like 22 or something. Let me see. Or 25. I think it's 25. Is it 25? Yeah. Yeah, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abram's son, who Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah, a servant, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons. Named in the order of their birth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We see the twelve princes named here. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their villages and by their encampments. Twelve princes according to their tribes. Yeah. All right, so we see the fulfillment of this already in the Bible. It has nothing to do with Islam or anything. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you that because since I, I don't find the commentary. Um, so, yeah. So, other than that, I would uh, also like, uh, other than proving, like, uh, the biblical, like, the biblical scripture in itself to be wrong, I would prove, like, the ideology of the of Christianity to be wrong, uh but that's not akin to everybody because I'm more like focused into uh, Trinity, uh, the Holy, like, uh, and more like on the existence how, of them. How can you do and, that when you just prove that the Quran is false? The Quran is already false. I, I'm not doing that from a, a Muslim or a Islamic uh, point of view. I'm doing that from a metaphysical point of view. 
by sharing like some this thoughts. Is, this isn't it, about the Trinity, bro. This is about yeah, whether but, or not the Quran told the truth. But it, but that's what I said in the beginning. It, via the argument of the absurd, if you make if some something is false, then the country has to be true. Really? Yes. If, if Christianity is false, that makes Islam true. Uh, let's say, uh, like, I am laying in bed. No, if, if I'm Christianity not is if Christianity is false, that makes Islam true. It, it doesn't make Islam true directly, but it's like a step. I it's like making a big step. It makes no step towards Islam. It, it does because if Christianity, is, for example, bro. Let's let's just let's just deal straight with with the issues here. Okay, your okay. your Quran, your religion yep. says my religion is true. Where does it say that? All over, Sir three could verse you, three, five could you forty-seven. Please pull up, could you please pull up one verse with the tafsir under it, and like we could read it? I don't need a tafsir. Your Quran says it all. But could you please give me one verse and like screen share it? Okay, I'll I'll put it on the screen. We'll go, we'll go through these verses in the Quran that talk about how my religion is true. For example, we go to five, let's go to chapter five. Let's go to 68. You see it on the screen? Yeah. Say, O people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, you have nothing till you act according to the Torah the Injil, and what has been sent down to you from your Lord. Verily, that which has been sent down to you from your Lord increases in many of them their obstinate rebellion and disbelief, so be not sorrowful over those who disbelieve. You see how it says yeah. that the Torah and the gospel and all their scriptures is true? Yeah. Okay, so but as, as you know, I think that you know that, but we believe that we that the Bible that we have right now and today is not the Bible that was sent to. Uh, it's not like the uh, Injil that was sent to Isa alayhi salam. And it's not the Torah that was sent to Musa alayhi salam. So then that we would mean. That. So that would mean that the Quran is still false. Then, since the when, Torah and the Gospel that the Jews and Christians during Muhammad's time are supposed to stand on is actually yeah. false. Your Quran is saying that these false books are true. That would make the Quran false. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you. In Islam, you have a concept wherein uh, Christians and Jewish people can uh, make law based on their books. Uh, you have, for example, the story of uh, a Jewish woman who had zina, who had uh, fornicated with a man. And they have put, like they said, bring up your book, which means the Torah, since they're Jewish. And they've killed this woman, stoned her because in the uh, Torah it said that the one that's fornicated has to be stoned. So in the you can use it for law internally in your belief. Since you're a Christian, you're not going to use the Quran as logic. I don't understand what your point was. So it, what this verse says is that in a point, if in a law point of view, a Christian. Can you the Bible? It says for them to stand on all their scriptures. That they have nothing to stand on unless they stand on their scriptures. The Torah, the gospel, and all that they have. Yeah. So their books that they have currently are true, which is exactly what I have today. So what I was saying, I'm going to repeat myself. So what I was saying is that you can use the Torah and the Injil based on law, since the That's prophet. Not what yes, it does because you have to read it with the practical thing. So no, it from says the Hadith, that there's guidance and light in the gospel. It's not just law; it's guidance and light for the people. Yes, through the law, because because it like I've said, <laughs> why are you adding to the text, bro? Because I'm not adding to the text. I'm taking from the Hadith and from the. Uh, what happened in the practical, like, you know? Yeah, is, the practical, they had their beliefs and their theology and their law. It's not just law. Yeah. It's their entire book. Just, let me just, man, um, deal with you guys here. It's not a problem. Because you guys, 
you know, it's, it's consistent. You guys are the same person. You guys reject and add to what your Quran says. You do the same with the Bible. You do the same with your scholars. You do it to everyone. And so it's no surprise here, but it is tiring. You know, it is. It's very tiring. Is the Torah and the gospel during Muhammad's time that the people have, is it true or is it false? Are those books true or are those books false? They're false. Okay. So then Allah is telling them to stand on false scripture, correct? Hey, you see how you, you hey, hey, hey. that is? Hey, hey. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So Allah is telling them to stand on false scripture, correct? No. No? Okay, let me read it again. No. Say, O oh people of the book, Jews and Christians, you have nothing to stand on until you act according and observe the Torah, the gospel, and all that has been sent down to you from your Lord. You said mm -hmm. that what the Torah and the gospel that they have is false. Yes. So Allah is telling them to stand on false scripture. Yes. That's tough. so. L listen, so I'm going to explain it. So just like, listen. That's so as I've said, the Quran is different. No. So as I've said, the Bible, so the Injil and the Torah are different uh, when they've been given to their respective prophets, Jesus and uh, Musa alayhi salam, and when, they've given, when they were in the time of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So what me what he means what Allah means by that and you can what, read it what in Allah the means is yeah tell me tell me what Allah means because so, the Quran so what is in clear detailed enough you tell me what did Allah really mean go ahead so what we've seen in the tafsir like in the tafsir of uh, Tabari tafsir of Ibn Kathir uh, and etc you can see that Allah meant by that the law because uh, that's what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did in but his law is false. How could the law be false if it's in accordance to the law of the Quran? It's in their scripture. Because you base yourself on the on the Bible. That's logic that you're going to use. You it. just said that the Torah and the gospel and all of their scriptures that they have to stand on is false. You said, yes, yes Allah is telling them to stand on false scripture that contains yes, the is. law. That means the yes. law is false if the scripture is false. Yes, because you're Christian, so you're gonna stand on that point, which is logic. You, so you're gonna stand on the Quran when you're Christian. I don't get it. No, what I'm doing is, is I'm showing you, and I'm saying this with love, and 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 tough love. When I say this, I'm showing you how your argument, and not just yours, because there's millions of Muslims that regurgitate this. I'm showing you how stupid this is, bro. How dumb it is as a Muslim to say, yes, the Torah and the gospel, the scriptures, they, it's false. And yes, my good, loving, merciful God is telling these people to stand on false scripture. That is stupid. How can you like, how? That's dumb as hell. How do you do that? Can, can I answer? Please get help me. Okay, okay. Help, help, help me, man. <laughs> help me. Okay, okay. So, uh, you know, it's like really tiring to be talking to someone who isn't listening and is just like using sophisticated points of view to just like falsify it. But whatever, I'm gonna continue. So, I said before, when a Christian. You wait, I'm gonna ask you a question which is gonna be clearer, inshallah. You, um, uh, you're a Christian, right? I'm an original Quran only Christian, yeah. Okay, Allah. <laughs> so you, you're a Christian, so I'm you believe original, that put respect on my name, on my title. Okay, I'm an original Quran only Christian, okay. You're an original Quran only Christian, mm -hmm. so you believe that the Bible. It's true, don't you? I do. Okay. D would you base yourself on the Quran? No, I don't need it. You do. Okay. So why would you base yourself on the Quran? I didn't base myself on the Quran. I believe I based myself on the Bible and the original Quran before I got tampered. Okay. Thank you. So you just proved my point that you're basing yourself on the on the Bible. So 
Allah says that He's letting you base yourself on the Bible as you as you but want. That's what your Quran tells me to do, right? Yes. So I'm doing the right thing by basing myself on the Bible, right? Yes. Now, if I base myself on the Bible, then I have to judge that the Quran is false since it contradicts my Bible, right? Yeah, I, I was talking about a law point of view and not about the religious point of view because that would be dumb. Yeah, we're just... <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> that would be dumb. <laughs> that, that's why we say Islam is false, bro. <laughs> we say Islam is false because it makes the stupid claim that our Bible is true, thus falsifying itself. Because if the Bible is true, then the Quran is false. <laughs> And now you're stuck. That's I'm not stuck. Is, I'm not stuck because I've just proved to you that was uh, talking about a law perspective, not the perspective of religion. But you're saying that the law is false. I'm saying that the law is false, but if you want to use the law, because you're a Christian, you can. Why would Allah tell me, oh my goodness, you're saying that the law is false, but Allah says that he's the one who revealed this law. Yes. So Allah so, revealed a false law? So Allah revealed a true law, but some of the Christians and the Jews just like put bullshit in it. So we have what we have no today. Cussing, no cussing, no cussing. But I know okay, my mean. bad. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, <laughs> my bad, my bad. But uh, like, so we have what we have today, which is the Bible. And if you, you want to base yourself on it on law, so like the example that have I have given on like the Jewish woman who has fornicated with another man, she has to be stoned. Abdullah, let in me the help Bible. You out. Let me help you out. Okay, I'm gonna let you. Why, why did Allah allow the Jews and the Christians to live according to their laws in the Torah and the Gospel? Why? Because you're Christian, and but in the same time, I'm go I'm going to do da'wah. I'm going to pause. spread the message pause. of of pause. Islam. Pause. Let me let me let me ask the same question before a different group of people. Did the polytheists in Arabia get to keep mm. their own law? Yes. No, they didn't. They had to convert. They had to follow Islam or die. They uh -huh. were not allowed. To, they were not allowed to keep their their pagan laws. So how do you explain then in Medina after that uh, the prophets made like the opening of Mecca there are so polytheists and a lot how how do you explain that if they are going to die yeah there were a lot of polytheists and then he took over and said yes that and they... after that they still were they no he what yes, did he they... what what did he tell the polytheists let me, matter of fact let me let Muhammad speak where's my let's let Muhammad speak. Uh, let's see if I have it here. Let's let Muhammad speak. And let's let me show you what he said to the polytheists okay. versus what he says to the people of the book. Two different standards here. Hmm. Let me see if I uh, if I have this in my on my computer. It's on my other phone for sure, but let's see here. Um this is them, bam, beat your, beat your wives, no, hide your Qurans, no, Bilal. Uh, dreams of visions. Um, what is this one? Nope, Muhammad forgot the Quran. Nope, not that. Little prophet. <laughs> Hold on, man. I'm trying to find find my little thing. <laughs> no, no, Semen. you you can take your time. You take your time. Right. Thank you, thank you. Semen in the womb. No child marriage. No. Goodness, where is this? Ah, Islam's violence. Hold on. Come on. Oh, man, I don't have it. I don't have that particular ID. All right, hold on. We're going to do a search together. We're going to do a search together. Hold on, guys. Let's see what. Let's see. Hold on. Let's do a search together. Let me put this on the screen. We're going to try to find this. Let's go to the Hadiths. 
Thank you guys for the super chat. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Go ahead and hit that. <laughs> hit that like button, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, your, why is it all caps? Your blood is safe from me. Let's see if we can find something. The messenger of Allah said, I have been ordered to fight the people until they say la ilaha illallah. So when they say that, their blood and their wealth are safe from me, except for a right, and their reckoning is for Allah. Then he recited to them. So remind them, you are only one, only one who reminds. You are not a dictator over them. So you see how he's been ordered to fight them until they convert. And once they convert, or and only once they convert, their blood is safe from him. And okay, do you know the context of this hadith? Yes, it's the, the war that he's having with the polytheists. Yeah, or but when was it? When when did the Prophet say that? He said it against the polytheists. I don't know exactly. Yeah, but okay, so I'm going to say you, to you one. So he said it when some polytheists came, killed Muslims, and then went to the Kaaba because the Kaaba is a holy place, so it can't be, kill people in there. So they went to hide out in that place. And so Allah says in the Quran, you can kill them wherever they want, even if they are near the Kaaba or not. And this is what uh, Rasulullah sallallahu says. That's not what he says here. Yes, that's what he says. He says, kill them until they say la ilaha illallah. Yeah, so they have to. So the polytheists. Yeah. Were not, so I'm just putting so, context. So the polytheists were not allowed to keep. So hold on a second. The polytheists were not allowed to keep their own religion and their own law, right? They had to convert, correct? Correct. Hello. Hello, Abdullah. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my connection is bad. My bad. Sure. Sorry. So the polytheists had to convert. They couldn't keep their own law and their religion, right? And live amongst but, Muhammad. They had to convert, right? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm going to what I said. This uh, hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said this when policies killed killed Muslims and went to hide near the Kaaba. No, this you is not this is, this is not this at all. But this is context. That's why I'm giving you context because it's not written literally. But if you it's not written a sharah, yes, because if you open a sharah or a, a tafsir of a sharah or of the hadith, then you will see. Oh yeah, this was revealed then, and this well, the, was said the, the tafsir says that Muhammad conquered all of Arabia. He he beat all his enemies, and yes. then that's when he then launched out to go fight the Jews and the Christians. He didn't kill them, first of all. So he went, to, he, went to, he went out to go march against them. But yes, because they attacked the, him. So no, they didn't. Much. They didn't attack yeah. Muhammad. No, the Christians oh, yeah. didn't attack Muhammad. The, the Jews and the Christians didn't attack Muhammad and didn't plan on the, killing the, him. The Christians didn't attack Muhammad. What Christians attacked Muhammad? The, the Christian of uh, Medina and uh, who worked with the no, parties. No, 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 they didn't. The Christians didn't attack Muhammad. Exactly. And the Byzantine people. The Byzantines who, who tried to... The, Byzant the Byzantines did not attack Muhammad. They didn't. No, they didn't. Not first. Not first. No. And that's even in Ibn Kathir's Tafsir. In Ibn Kathir's Tafsir, it says, nine, talking about 929, after Muhammad defeated all his enemies in Arabia, he then received the command to go now fight the Jews and the Christians. Because of their disbelief, not because they fought him, not because they attacked him, because of their disbelief. But however, they were allowed to keep their religion because they're people of the book. The polytheists, however, they're not allowed to keep their religion. They're supposed to say la ilaha illallah or die. Yes, because they've attacked Muslims and then they hide like at the Kaaba. Okay. 
So you have different rules here from your Quran, from your yeah. Hadith, that the polytheists are not allowed to keep their law. They have to convert. The Jews and the Christians, mm -hmm. the people of the book, are allowed to keep their law. Yes. What's the difference? This Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, are uh, hierarchically superior to like uh, polytheists. Since What's the difference? You at least, since the Jews, for example, at least believe in like one God, you do, but you are a polytheist in the same. It's because God, in it's because these people have, it's because these people have Allah's revelation. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The polytheists didn't have Allah's revelation. Right? Yeah. So therefore, the people of the book were good to go when it came to law. They were good to go because yeah. they had Allah's yes. judgment with them already. The polytheists, they had to convert to Islam's law. They couldn't keep their own polytheistic laws because that wasn't Allah's revelation. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Yeah, continue your idea. So the idea here, now going back to the Quran, <coughs> it talks about how the Jews and the Christians are supposed to uphold their law. And you're saying that Allah is allowing them to hold their that a, a, a false law, a false law that he himself revealed, a false law, and they're able to keep it. But that's a, that, that would be ridiculous. That would be stupid. Because Allah is saying he's the one who gave them this law. That's why they're able to keep it. That's why they have to stand on it or else they have nothing to stand on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So but, it doesn't well, it doesn't make sense to say, oh, they're standing on false. I mean, if you want to go that route, go ahead. It's just it doesn't. I'm even trying to be fair to the Quran here. You yeah. it doesn't make sense to say that Allah is commanding these people to stand on a false law that He revealed, uh, you know, for their laws. But the, even the polytheists they couldn't keep their own law. Because politics doesn't ha don't have any scripture. I don't know if you, exactly. but like they don't have any book. Exactly. So that would mean that the people of the book have true scripture. They have true scripture that they have to stand on. And if they don't stand on this true scripture that they have, then they will be the disbelievers and people who do mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. So that means that the Quran is teaching that the scriptures are not false and corrupted. They're actually true and intact for them to follow it. So what I've been saying is like a Christian is going to act according to the Bible and same for a Jew, which you have basis on it. We say that the uh, Injil and the Torah, so the Bible was originally from Allah. Are you okay with that? Say that again. Am I okay with what? Uh, that uh, the, the fact that like the uh, the Injil, so the um, Evangel and the Torah, so the Torah are original from Allah. Do are you still with me? Oh Lord, have mercy. Are you saying that? Do do I affirm that? Yeah, yeah. No, the Quran is false. I don't affirm. No, that. but uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. But are you okay with like the idea of that? This in the Quran. I, that that's, that's, it, that's, it, what, just, that's what that's what the Quran says. I'm not, I'm not gonna yeah. reject what the Quran says. Okay, or okay, deny that okay. the Quran says that. That's what the Quran says. Yes. Okay. So what the Quran also says is that they have been like, um, how do, how can I say that? So that they have been put false information into it. That's where what does the Quran it, where says. Does, okay. Where does the Quran say that false information was put into the Torah? Not, not that false information, but like, I don't know, like the right word, but like it has been changed, corrupted. That it has been corrupted. Where, yeah. Where does the Quran say... You know what? Let's let's keep, let's continue to go with this. Okay. So the Torah and the Gospel has been corrupted. So Allah still then tells them to stand on false corrupted scripture. Is that correct? Because it's your scripture, and you have something. Sometimes, if I, I mean, you got uh, laws that are okay with Islam, because not the total. No. Islam Don't. Laws. No. Stop. Stop. You so you saying. The, 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 isn't the, one law that is okay with it's not society. about it aligning with Islam. The whole thing okay. is is the whole thing is is that all the scriptures in Islam, all the scriptures are Islamic. All of them are. They're all mm -hmm. Islamic because they come from Allah. Okay, 
So because the scriptures are Islamic, because it comes from Allah, they're good. They're intact. You can follow them. Matter of fact, if you don't follow these scriptures that I have already revealed, then you're of the wrongdoers. But that is a message to whom? To the Muslims? To, to, the, the, Muslims? to the Jews and the Christians. Okay. So he's saying so? that the Jews and the... Listen, he's saying that the Jews and the Christians have correct scripture to follow. What part are you missing? No, he's not saying that. He's saying that the Christians and the Jews have to follow their own scriptures. Are their own scriptures? What's, diff what's so difficult I, 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 about that? I, I, we we got to cut it, man. Thank you. Take care of yourself, bro. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next guest. I mean, Lai Hadik. Ooh, man. What's up, bro? Hello. How are you? Pretty good. Are you a Muslim? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm saying what will make me convinced that be convinced that Islam is true. Uh, the Quran says mm -hmm. that Jesus mentions Muhammad to come. I want to know where Jesus said that. If I could see where Jesus said that, I'll definitely consider Islam. Uh, where does the Quran say that? Chapter 61, verse 6. Chapter 61, verse 6. If you want, I could I could just put it on the screen for us. I have it right here. Okay. So here it is. It says, and remember when Isa, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah, unto you confirming the Torah uh, before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed. But when he... But when, but when he, what? Oh, but when he came to them clear, with clear proofs, they said, this is plain magic. All right. So okay. Jesus says that somebody named Ahmed will come after him. So I just want to know, like, because I'm a Christian. If Jesus really said this, I, I have to know. Okay. So if Quran if the Holy Quran is the unchanged, undeniable word of God, which there are many prophecies that does say it is, like lead to the conclusion that it is, well, what it says about someone's speech would be true, yes? Nope. If the Quran, got, if the Quran got everything right, but got one thing wrong, would that mean that it's the word of God? Okay, but in the in the New Testament is a documentation of uh, what Jesus said, right? You didn't answer me. If the Quran got everything right, oh. mm -hmm. except one thing, if it got one thing wrong, would it still be the no, word? No, it wouldn't be the word of God. It would not. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So the Quran could get everything right. I'm testing this mm -hmm. one thing right here. If it got this one thing wrong, then the Quran is not a, it's not from God. Yeah, okay. So is the Bible, the New Testament in specific, the documentation of what Jesus said, right? Yes. So if like if he did say that and it wasn't documented, it could have very well like been said by him, just not been stated by uh, the apostles in the Bible. No, that's impossible. How come? Because they recorded everything that Jesus said regarding revelation or the revelation that was given by the Holy Spirit. When it comes to revelation and things to know, like as far as, you know, prophecy, a prophet coming after him, they let us know. Mm. All right. Uh, you make a good point. You make a good point. Thank you. I try. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, if, if it were the case that Jesus didn't say this, because we, we have what Jesus said, and I don't find Jesus ever making this, this statement, this claim, or even pointing to this, uh, would it be fair for me as a Christian to just reject the Quran as false? For Yeah. Yeah, it would be fair? Yeah. And, that, and, um, and, and that's my thing, bro. That's my thing. The Quran could have gotten everything else right, 
But this right here is it's false. We don't have there's <laughs> we have Jesus's words and he never said this. So I reject the Quran as as true. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm actually Christian. I mean, uh, I was uh, trying to uh see. I'm asking a question. Is this Muslim only? What's up, Tom? Yo, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Are you Muslim? Uh-huh. Not the best of Muslims, but I consider myself one. Do you believe that Muhammad is a prophet? I mean, if I'm a Muslim, I have to, yeah. Oh, well, you was a little hesitant about it. Of course, I believe. Like I believe in all the prophets, not just Muhammad. Okay. Good. So, what's the, what are we talking about? We're talking about what would make me consider Islam to be true. Um, what would make what me consider makes Islam you not to consider be... it? Well, I'm, I, what makes me not consider it is. The Quran says that Jesus said something. It says that Jesus said that a messenger named Ahmed will come after him. And so, I mean, because I don't, this doesn't exist. I haven't seen this. Um, are we are we sure the followers of Jesus like recorded every single thing he said? In regards to Revelation, yes. But they didn't even agree on Jesus' last words. Like every Bible has different last words for Jesus. No, they don't. They don't yes, have they do. last words for Jesus, but that doesn't that has nothing to do with whether or not Jesus said Ahmed. Yeah, Muhammad. but that but that just shows that there's differences, and if there's differences, they don't agree on what Jesus said, and if they don't agree on what well, that's, well, that's they don't agree on what Jesus said. Again, they didn't disagree on what Jesus said. They didn't say they didn't con contradict each other on what the last words of Jesus is. So I'm not saying they contradicted, but they don't get the exact words. That is what you said. So, again, we have the issue here about the Quran saying Jesus said something. Did Jesus ever say this? I don't know. I mean, what I've seen, I've seen some Muslims make claim that it's mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls somewhere that uh, a prophet is going to come and there's like a mountain in Medina called Sila, I think, or something. And he's going to go near that mountain or reveal his revelations near yeah, that the, mountain. The Dead Sea Scrolls are 200 years before Jesus. I mean, it's still like, I don't know so, how to explain it. Like, so some Quran, Christians Quran, affirm the Dead Sea Scrolls, though. Well, we affirm the Dead Sea Scrolls. It doesn't say anything that the Muslims said. But the point is, yeah. is that the Quran says that Jesus said this. So yeah, but you don't have we Jesus. We can never know what Jesus Scrolls. fully said. You don't know what Jesus like, really you said. Have, I don't know what like Jesus fully said. Like I, I wasn't I, there I, to uh, talk to him about anything. He didn't write know? his own. He didn't write his own diaries. It's some people after him that wrote them. Right. Um, you believe that Jesus was a Muslim? Mm, not necessarily, because like. I think you get this confused. The term Muslim is the term that someone submits to God. And then there's the term Islam. Islam is the follower of Muhammad. You got to be following Islam. But if you're just a Muslim, that means that anyone can be a Muslim. Anyone that submits to God is a Muslim, regardless of religion. It's just an Arabic term to someone that submits themselves to God. Does, there, does everyone agree here that Jesus was not a Muslim? No, Jesus is a Muslim. Can I ask you a question, God logic? Jesus was a Muslim. God logic. Right, well, I want you guys why to you, do why are you inviting people? Why are you inviting people? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. God logic. Could you recite the uh, ending of John? So Jesus, they said Jesus was a Muslim. You say Jesus was not a Muslim. I need this to be recorded. I'm saying he's he's a submitter to God. Yeah. He submitted uh, to God, so if we're affirming the Arabic word Muslim, someone that submits to God, then yeah, he's a the term Muslim applies to him. But did he follow the religion of Islam? No, he didn't follow the religion of Islam. He didn't so reveal he, Islam. I got you. So do, does anyone agree that Jesus did not follow the religion of Islam? He had his own revelation he, for yeah. his own time. Does everyone agree? 
We believe that Jesus had his own law, his own revelation that was not the same as the revelation and law given to Prophet Muhammad, but we still believe that Jesus was a, a Muslim and he was a prophet. I think well, the way he structured uh, it different. He structured it wrong, you know, because the Quran. And a Muslim is the one who submits his will to God. So, yes, Jesus was a Muslim, Tom. The word, yeah, it's just the word Muslim in Arabic gets mixed up with the religion Islam. That, like, it's not correlated. When you say someone is Muslim, it means I can call a Jew Muslim because he, he submits to God. But right, he's not let's, following Islam. Let's switch gears here then. Um, everybody, everybody that's on stage, are you all Muslim? Yes. 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 Everybody Muslim? Yes. Okay. Put myself in the middle here. So, does everybody believe that Jesus was a Muslim? Yes, yeah. Jesus was a Muslim. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How would you guys prove that to me? Sorry, good luck, Ivory. Do you mind if we just go back on a few points because uh, a few few things you said before? I mean, the question you asked and what I'm you said about the Bible. I'm do you mind if we just? Is that no, fine? I'm switching gears, bro. We could probably get back to it. I, we'll, we'll okay, that's fine. Swing back. That's fine. So how would you guys prove to me that Jesus is a Muslim? Because uh, let me let me speak. Because Allah Allah gave revelation to Prophet Muhammad. Whatever Allah says is objectively true. So if Allah says X, therefore X is true. Now is your proposition circular reasoning? No, it's it's up to you to prove to us that the Quran is false. Who's speaking? Me, uh, Muslim man. Muslim man. Okay, Muslim man is speaking. You right here. Okay. So so everyone agrees with with his method that because the Quran is the word of God, therefore, and it said the claim about Jesus. Therefore, it's true that Jesus was a Muslim. That's the, that's all the proof. Well, it's a, it's a matter of paradigms because I mean, with our, with our paradigm, yes. But then, if you look at Muslim, it means it means submission to the will of God. And really. You can see that in the Bible that Jesus submits his will to the Father. But I mean, that's beyond the point because within your paradigm, the Bible. I mean, obviously, you believe that Jesus is one in three. Um, but do you mind if we go back to the right. Bible mentioned in the Quran? Well, we'll 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 go back when I tell you. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I'll let you know when we can swing back. Okay, I apologize. So you said that Jesus submitted his will to the Father in the Bible? Yes, he did. So that means that he's a Muslim? In your part, I mean, we can use that, but like I said, our primary source is the Quran. So yeah. Okay, let's pause there. So we'll pause there. So Jesus submitted to the Father. Does everyone agree that Jesus submitted to the Father? Of course. According to us, yes. Okay. So is Allah the Father of Jesus? No. No. Only one no? Allah is not Sorry. the Father of Anything. He's the creator, not the father. Okay. The term father is misapplied to him. Misapplied. Gotcha. What about you, Adam? Is Allah the father of Jesus? Is Allah the father of Jesus? No, he's not. Okay. Muslim man. Raymond. Is yeah. Allah the father of Jesus? No, absolutely not. So if Jesus is submitted Bro, to the you, father. Can you go to uh, Luke uh, twenty-two forty-two? Yeah, just we'll get there in a second. But... So if Jesus is submitting to the Father, then he's not a Muslim, right? Yeah, that, so that's the thing, because so, that's how you guys... You're, in your paradigm, in your paradigm, listen, in your paradigm, there's a huge difference. You're referring with, the, with your Bible paradigm, I'm referring to the Quran. So according to us, Jesus is a Muslim. I know, so that, well, that's what I'm challenging, all right? I'm yeah. challenging, I know that you say that Jesus is a Muslim, and I'm challenging mm -hmm. that I'm telling you to prove Jesus the historical Muslim. In Luke, so, uh, he said it in uh, Luke uh, uh, 2242 that he submits his will to God. Just go and Okay, so we got a verse, guys. Luke twenty two forty two. So we'll go to Luke twenty two forty two, and we'll see if this shows where Jesus is a Muslim. All but right, Avery, Avery. Here's the thing, bro. Right? Just because... wait, wait, one at a time. Luke twenty two forty two. Let's do it one thing at a time here. Luke twenty two. Luke twenty two forty two. <clears throat> this is tough. All right. So saying, uh, Father. If you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So I guess I'll ask the same question to you who showed me Luke 22, uh, 2242. Is Allah the father of Jesus? No, this is how you guys misrepresent. Wait, hold on. Let me ask you a question. Is, is, on. Hang on. is God the father? Is God the father of David? Guys, guys hold on. There was okay, somebody fine. who quoted this verse. I, wanna, I want him to answer this. Is Allah the father of Jesus? The one who quoted Luke 22? No. The one who quoted Luke 22. Yeah, yeah. What are you saying? It said, is Allah the father of Jesus? No. No. 
So then that means this can't be, this proves that he's not a Muslim, right? Since he's saying that God is his father, right? That's, that's not how it works, because like if the Quran says, oh, the prophet did this, then you're going to interpret it using the Quran. What do, you mean, what do you mean interpret it? You said that in this verse, it shows that he's a Muslim because he submits to God. Yeah. So he says here, and I'll put it on the screen so we can all see it, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours, the Father's will, be done. Yeah, we don't believe that. Yeah, that's how you guys. That's how you guys interpret the. Well, no, wait. How, how do you interpret wait, wait. the word father? How do you oh, no. interpret the word oh, father in here? Hold on, that's a good question. How do you interpret the word father? We'll get to that secondly. But first, did I quote this or did you, um, Har Har Harira? Did, did I quote this or did you? Yes, I did. Okay, so if you quoted it, I didn't quote this. You quoted this as a proof that Jesus is a Muslim. So what we can go by then. By this verse, we can see Jesus is not a Muslim since he calls God his father, right? Have you, hey, Avery, have you ever read the book? Of let's hear the, let, wait, before I get an, another question, I need an answer to my first question. This shows that Jesus is not a Muslim, right? What's the reasoning for that? I didn't hear. Is Allah the father of Jesus? No. Okay. No. If anyone says that Allah is their father, are they a Muslim? No, because you guys misquoted Jesus. Okay, so yeah. anyone who says that Allah is a father or God is their father, they are not a Muslim. Depends on the interpretation of word father in their sentence. Yeah, oh. uh, father, uh, can be, father can be someone who's like taking care of people or something, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean that he's like biologically their father. So I'll ask you again, is Allah a father at all? Is he a father? No, he's not. Sense? No, he's not. Can I? He's yeah, not. let me tell you. He's so, not biologically depends. a father. So how, Avery, can I ask you, how do you understand the Father with relation to Jesus? Uh, what is the Father in relation? It doesn't matter. Is Allah a Father in any way? In any no, he's not. No, he's not. Okay, so, so um, let me tell you why that's, okay. important. Let me tell you why that's important, Adam. Because, Adam, you asked an important question. Let me tell you why yep. your answer was important. Because it doesn't matter how I understand the term Father in relation to Jesus, because Allah is not a Father at all. So if I but, understand him to be a father in any way, it's still wrong. You correct. But I, I do remember making the claim that Jesus is a Muslim according to the Bible. You did. You said that no. even in, you said even in the Bible. He's even in the Bible, I said within within my paradigm, within your paradigm, no. Right, That's so the me, difference. Yeah, no. Let me let me just rewind what you said specifically. Yeah, Adam. You said mm -hmm. that in your paradigm as a Muslim, Jesus is a Muslim because he submits to God. Even correct. in the Bible, he submits to the Father, and so he's a Muslim. Yeah, and the father <laughs> is the father is God metaphorically. But then, when you look into the Bible with your paradigm, to you, father means the literal father. Wait, wait, say, say say that again. So Allah is a father metaphorically? No, he's not. But according to your Bible, he is metaphorically the father. Okay, got you. Yeah, okay. I got you. I got you. So yep. you have Allah, who's not a father, even metaphorically. Yeah. Then you have here Jesus saying that God is his father, and you will say that that's metaphorically. No problem. Let's give that. Let's say it's yep. metaphorically. So still, though, Jesus is outside of Islam by teaching that God is his father, even in a metaphorical sense, right? No, but using the Quran uh, as a criteria, okay. I can re I can reject the part that he says he's uh, he's his father. Wait, wait, no no, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You can't just, just do this for me. Mm -hmm. If we're using the verse for what it says, that Jesus submits to the father, in those verses that Jesus submits to the Father, he's not a Muslim, right? You can say that, yeah, fine. Thank you. Does everybody else agree that according to the Bible, Jesus submitting to the Father would take him out of Islam, right? If it's figurative, like, here's the thing, right? Like, when it comes to when Prophet Muhammad came, things, like, a lot of rules changed. Like, before Prophet Muhammad, wine was okay to drink in small amounts, right? Prostrating mm -hmm. to other people to as respect, was also allowed, right? Uh -huh. So calling, uh, so I'm not saying it, it was permissible. It could have been a possibility that was. Let me show you. Well, let God, me God, God, to call God I got, Father. I got, you. I got what you're saying. Let me put that to bed. Let me put it to bed. So, guys, his point was, is that it's possible that it was permissible once upon a time to address Allah as Father, or to be considered a son in some sense to Allah. Maybe he didn't say definitely, but he said maybe. 
it might have been permissible yeah. in that time, like back in the it's day. It's not permissible. He's, he's wrong. It's not permissible. It's not. It's not because Allah addresses in the Quran. He said the Jews and Christians say we are the sons of God. So and Allah oh, reje oh, uh, rejects the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't see your point, honestly, because you yourself, as a Christian, can't agree what the Father means in relation to the Son. With Psalms two seven, God calls David his begotten son, and elsewhere says Israel's his begotten uh -oh. son. So, so, according, so according to Psalm 2, David's not a Muslim either then, right? Since he's being called the son of God. In your paradigm. In your paradigm. So, so according to the Psalms, David is not a, a, pro, a, a Muslim, right? In your paradigm, he is not. No. Okay, good. So we got that David is not a Muslim according to the Psalm. Jesus is not a Muslim according to the New Testament. Man, let, let, let's, let's go a step further. Let's talk about Moses. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, Moses says that the Israelites are the children of the Most High God. According to that, is Moses a Muslim? And with your understanding, no. Okay, so according to the Torah, according to the Psalm... No, according, according to the Torah, hang on, hang on. Wait, according wait, wait, to the wait, Torah, wait, wait, your, Torah with your understanding let, let, let in your finish. paradigm. Let me finish. Let me finish. That's fine, finish. Uh, let me go, man, let me cook. So cook. according to the Torah, <laughs> according to the Zabur, the Psalm, According to oh, no, 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 who says, 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 who who said it's Zabur? Tell me, who said it's Zabur? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, by the way, you're fine, just let me, just let me, let me land it, okay, fine, fine, go on, all right, I'll let y'all cook, man, goodness, I'm just looking all over the place, I will let y'all cook, man, according to the Torah, according to the Psalms, and according to the gospel, neither Moses, nor David, nor Jesus the Messiah were Muslims because they all taught that God was the Father. Yo, Galaja, Galaja, could you actually bring up a guy? His name is Summerson. Can you please bring him up? He's actually Summer who? Summerson. He's very knowledgeable. Summerson? Yeah. Summerson? I don't see a Summerson. Uh, S oh, I Summerson. Uh, yeah. All right, he's not really? All right, he's up. Do you, do you mind if you open John 3, 16? We don't need to. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, so God only has one begotten son. So is David yeah. also his son? Well, act, well actually, actually two, Psalm 2, 7 is about the Messiah. If you read verse 2, it literally says oh, they, raise up against, they raise up against God and his Messiah. So no, he said you're my son. He's talking to David. Well, at, no. So again, David is prophetically speaking of the Messiah. So if you understand from the Bible and Messianic prophecy, it's a, called a typology. David is a okay. type of Christ before he comes. Can so you open it? Hold on. I'm trying okay, to help you. Okay, please, please. Go ahead. Yeah. You'll see a lot of times where David in the psalm is speaking in first person when really he's not speaking about himself. He's speaking prophetically of the Messiah. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Do you mind if you open Exodus 4.22? Oh, because we already understand this. God is a father according to all of these verses. Is Allah a father in any sense? No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. You're, you're moving away. I said, but no, no, you just not father no, You're the one moving away by trying to show how there's multiple sons in the Bible. I yeah. understand that. So if there's multiple so how many sons, sons does in God the Bible, have? excuse me, yeah. if there's multiple sons in the Bible, that means that the Bible, the Psalms, the Torah, Exodus, Deuteronomy, the Torah, the Gospels, they all teach an, a non-Islamic message that God is the Father, correct? In your paradigm with your understanding, yes, correct. In the correct. Bible, correct? Not my paradigm, to stop saying that. In the Bible, it teaches a non-Islamic message, correct? Here's what's happening here. You're no, no, let him answer. Everything. Let okay, him answer you know what, guys, guys, let's give it to him. I want to see what his point is. What's your point? So, do you yeah. agree? Fine, yeah, what's your point? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, boom, boom. So, here's the point here. So even where you guys said you can go and see that Jesus is still a Muslim, like you said this, Adam, you could even okay, go yeah. to the Bible and see he's a Muslim. We That's see fine. that in the Bible, these prophets and figures are actually not Muslims, right? In the Bible. Fine, I'll concede. I'll temporarily concede. Yep, okay. All right, beautiful. So now yep. we're back at square one. Good. How would you guys prove to me that Jesus was a Muslim? Because the Quran is a revelation from God. I mean, that's, that, that's the point. I mean, it's, it's a circular argument. Exactly. So basically what you're telling me is, is that you can't prove to me that Jesus is a Muslim, you know, objectively, but you believe it. You believe he's a Muslim, the Quran says it, you believe it, and that's it. Wait, you no, no, because when you prove, no, no, hang on, hang on. When you prove the Quran is the word of God, then you understand that. Do you understand? 
No, because again, I I'll ask you the same question I asked the previous brother. If the Quran gets one thing wrong, let's say it got everything right, got one thing wrong, is it still the word of God? No, it is not. Okay, good. Are you so gonna, you're going to prove that it gets wrong. one thing wrong. What is that thing? All logic, all logic. Jesus being a Muslim, for example. Can I ask you a question? Wait, ha hang on, hang on. What, what's, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Avery, Avery. Let's, let's go back on this one. You said the Quran got wrong that Jesus is a Muslim. I'm what, saying what? potentially. P potentially. Ah, now yeah. it's potentially. So why? Why is that wrong? You're going to have to give me evidence why that's wrong. Well, no, no. You're going to have to give me evidence to back up y'all's claim. If you can't give me evidence, then it's false. Because we have evidence. Okay, that think, okay that's fine. We'll, we'll look. Okay, we'll, we'll use some evidence. I mean, look, I'm going to use your scripture, right? So, do you hey, believe that? You just said, according to my scripture, he's not. No, a because for you, because hang on, hang on. But you said that we're going to have to use something that applies to you, right? No. We can't prove the Quran that. using the Quran. How, how do you want me to say, prove? Let, so, let so me what be clear again, because I never okay, said. I didn't say you got Okay, that's fine. Tell me what you mean. Let me be clear, ladies and gentlemen in the audience and to the fellas that's on the stage. My beliefs and my personal opinion does not matter here. What matters, what I'm asking for is objective truth that Jesus is a Muslim. Objective evidence, not That's something that, oh, appeals to my opinion and my personal beliefs. That's what, I'm not asking about relativism. I'm asking about objective truth. Proof okay, so let's, let's, that's fine. That's fine. So let's apply the same standard. Uh, sorry, Muslim, do you, Muslim, do you want to have a quick answer? So let's apply the same standard, right, for our doctrine that Jesus is a Muslim. Let's, so if you want to use that base doctrine, I'm going to ask you, can you give me a detailed uh, explanation of the Trinity from the Bible? It's, that's the same thing. I mean, you're, you're asking, you're asking for, for, for a definite proof, and I want to ask you a definite proof where Jesus clearly claims to be God. It's the same thing. I mean, the, the question doesn't like it. Not, it's not, bro. So again, no, okay, answer my question then. Where hey, that, the Trinity in the Bible? What I'm asking, and let me show you how what you're doing is not is not even close to related to what's happening here. I am not asking you to show me where in the Quran it says Jesus is a Muslim. It's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to prove the claim of the Quran that Jesus is a Muslim. Okay, I'm so granting you, you, I'm like granting you that the Quran says Jesus is a Muslim, that it teaches this. I'm Wait, granting you this. I'm Did asking you... you to prove it to me historically, this claim that Jesus is a Muslim. Show me that Jesus actually believed and practiced beliefs that go along with Islam. All right, God, God, God. could you prove that, Moses, that uh, Abraham existed? I'm sorry? Could you prove to me that Ibrahim existed without scripture? Uh, uh, this is besides the point. No, 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 no. It's, it's the same. Yeah, it's uh, besides it's the, same. the same. You're using a double standard, Avery. Using oh, a double standard. standard. Yeah, you can't yes, it's double standard because you want you want solid proof. You want solid proof Abraham that Jesus is Muslim. If Abraham was my you topic, we can go into that. But that's Abraham fine, is not my topic. This is you want solid proof. Topic. You want evidence that Jesus is a Muslim. Look, I have it in my scripture that you claim Jesus is is a triune God. No, a claim is not evidence, bro. A I know. claim, Jesus was That's a Muslim. We, so you want me to like, like, for example, let's just... Yeah, I get it, I get it. I get what, it. what century did Jesus live in? In the um, first century. How do you know? Exactly, so that's the thing, you're using a double standard. What do you mean I'm using I'm a saying. double standard? Let me tell you, let me, let, can I ask you, let me, let's just hear me out, hear me out, can I speak? No, how do you know? From historical sources. What historical sources? <laughs> uh, Bible maybe, but it, it, doesn't, ah! it doesn't change anything. It doesn't Wait, change Adam, anything. You said, you said that too fast. Say it slowly. What historical sources are you getting okay. from that Jesus I'll answer, the first Good. I'll answer the question in full. So, if it does not contradict no, no, no. the Quran. No, 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 stop, stop. Okay, fine, Re fine. Look, I'm going to let you elaborate. But That's repeat fine. what you said. Okay, okay. Where, we can. What is the historical source that you're using to place Jesus in the first century? Okay, we can maybe use the Bible to prove that. <laughs> so, what's your point? I don't understand. What's the point? What are you laughing at? Wait, hang on. No, can, can you stop? Can actually stop sliding. Can I ask you the, my question first? Because you, you keep interrupting. Like, if you don't mind, can I? Oh, bro, let me question? tell you what's happening. I'm no, Adam, to Adam, Adam, bro. Let other people speak. I think it's Okay, okay fine, fine, fine. Okay, fine. Go on, say. Uh, I was just going to... Before the next Moses speaks, let me just clarify this for Adam, dude. <laughs> the reason why this is, this is important is because the Quran is making a statement on someone who existed 600 years prior, right? <laughs> Now, that doesn't alone make the, the statement false, but here's the point, is that we have earlier testament that is evidence to the contrary of what the Quran says. So because we have evidence to the contrary earlier, closer to the time, that is actually the historical, reliab the, 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 the historical reliance 
by which we place Jesus in the time that he is, where he was born, where he preached, what he said. We have historical evidence on Jesus. And if something is saying something prior uh, after that, contrary to it, we have a reason to reject the latter. So this is what I'm saying. When it comes to Abraham, the earliest sources that we have on Abraham is the Torah. So I'm not doing the same thing that I'm doing. To, it's not the same thing. The earliest source that we have of, the, of Abraham is the Torah. If you had something earlier than the Torah about Abraham that was contrary to what the Torah says, then you'll have a point and we'll have a conversation. Yeah, on your point. yeah. so hey, let me tell you, it's, it's a fallacy again, because first you have to, as a prerequisite, you have to prove the reliability of these scriptures. The same way you asked you me to prove that Jesus reliable. was a Muslim. No, I didn't. What did you I say? Did. That? You said that, oh. dude, again, yeah, you fine. yourself said that the Bible is, re is historically reliable oh, about Jesus. Oh. No, I said maybe. I said maybe we can use it, but it, it does. The information doesn't matter. That's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll take that back. No problem. But now, for you to ask me to prove that Jesus was a Muslim, I can ask you in the same way. Can you prove to me? Can you prove to me that the Bible is a reliable source? That's, that's my question subject. to you. But again, that's another. No, subject. no, 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 you're, no. Because using oh, a double hold standard. On, hold, on, hold on, Adam. Hold on, just one second. You are the one who proved to me that the Bible is a reliable source. You said- I'll, I'll concede, I'll take it back. Right. That's good. I'll take it back. It's not a reliable source. It's not a reliable source. It is Wait, not. So you take it back? Yes, I take it back. That's okay. fine. Okay, okay. We'll have fun with this then. But hold on, just one okay. second. Yeah. Someone is saying- Answer hey, guys, my question I'm, first. I'm, Go back. What's Adam's your double my, standard? Wait. Hold on, just hold on, hold on a second, Adam. Hey guys, uh, the comment section. Is my mic okay? Is my is my mic good? Is it peaking or is it quiet? Like, is it good? Because I'm, I'm hearing, um, I'm seeing people saying, fix your mic, Avery, fix your mic. Are we good? Someone's listening from their phone in the scope. All right, it's all right. All right, let's continue. All right, so Adam said that we can take the Bible historically reliable to place Jesus in the first century, but then he just took it back and said it's not reliable. So now we're back what? at square Possibly. one. Okay, now we're back at square one. How do you know that Jesus lived in the first century? I don't. Say that again? I don't. Okay, how do you know? Uh, let me ask you this. What language did Jesus speak? I don't know. Ball average, this information doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's irrelevant because you keep, you keep giving my question. What's your standard, right? You said, prove me Jesus is a Muslim. Now I'm going to ask you the same thing. Can you prove the, uh, the New Testament is a reliable source of information? See, it's the same the standard. Thing. You this can't prove the, it. This is, the thing. this is the thing that just happened to all of you is that Adam used the Bible as a reliable historical source on Jesus. I said, once, I, I said, take that back. Let's, let, hold on. I'm getting to that part. Mm -hmm. Once he realized that he himself proved to me that and accepted that the Bible was reliable in the historicity of Jesus, once he saw what, what position that puts him in, he then retracted and took it back. That's why we're here now. So after acknowledging it's reliable and knowing the problems that it gives him, now he has to retract. And now he don't know nothing about Jesus. This is where we're at. When you reject the Bible, you, don't, you have nothing. Give your happened. point. What's your point? What's your point? The point is, is you know nothing about Jesus, about his religion, what he <laughs> taught, what he practiced without the Bible. And you no, I don't, I don't need Bible. to. No, 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 no. The Quran is sufficient. The Quran is sufficient. Uh, okay, okay, good. Okay, good. You, keep, you keep moving from the point. You keep okay. moving from the point. You haven't okay. answered my question. I got you. The Quran yeah. is sufficient. Beautiful. Correct. How did Jesus pray? I don't know. Oh, I thought the Quran was sufficient. No, when, hang, yeah, Quran is sufficient. I, what, what's your argument? I don't understand. The, Muhammad taught us how to pray. What's, I don't know. What is your I point? Because you keep saying, you. she said, prove to me Jesus is a Muslim, and now I you're coming to the Bible. I'm telling you Adam, let me, let, let that me. the Quran okay, is insufficient. God, I am showing you, sing it with me, that the Did Quran that? is insufficient. Listen, God, 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 Come on, Tom, hit that note with me. God. The Quran, no. say the Quran. Oh, quit, quit. The Quran is insufficient. Wait, wait, I have a question. Come on, let's all harmonize together. The Quran. But Avery, you, you keep sleeping. Avery, you keep sleeping. You've, you, are, you've, look, I've answered all your questions. You, you've like, I have three questions unanswered. You've answered nothing. C can you answer my questions at least? What do you mean I've answered nothing? I've literally. You have answered my question. I said, why do you, why do you impose, why do you impose a different standard for my you proof are, and your you are proof? Literally in my box. I showed you. Avery, it, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything when you, you say that. Can you, can you, you haven't answered my questions. Adam. Two questions. Adam. Okay, so if you, you wait, wanna, you wanna wait, prove wait, that, wait, answer wait, my questions now. Adam, 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 real quick. Um, I just wanna say something. I, I, I'm not like trying to make a claim. I just wanna see what you think about that. Uh, this Avery. What if we just posited that we, that Jesus lived in the first century because of historians? Like, 
Josephus and people like that. Oh, nice. Josephus puts Jesus in the first century. So this is what this is what I would ask you. Sure. Is Josephus a reliable historical source on the life of Jesus? Well, he's a historian who's around that who's around there, right? So Yeah. I'd say so, that if we if we take word of mouth to be a valid source of information, then yeah, I guess. So very good. So mm -hmm. if Jesus is I'm sorry, if Josephus is reliable historical source mm -hmm. of the life of Jesus, then you yeah. have to accept that he was crucified. Because, Not really. Because Josephus says that Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Yeah, but the thing is with that, he's making a historical claim. We would say that Jesus is being saved is a theological claim. Well, well he's putting he's put in a no wait, no, he's putting a historical claim yeah. on Jesus being in the first century as well, saying that somebody mm -hmm. named Jesus was walking around and people mm -hmm. said that he was doing miracles. All of this is historical. Yeah, we affirm that. We okay. affirm that we so affirm then, that people believe that he was crucified as well. So there's there's no So then well, it's not that just that they believe it, it's just that this is the fact that Pontius Pilate <laughs> was the Roman prefect at the time. And he had Jesus crucified. You mm -hmm. have to believe that if you say Josephus is reliable. No, I don't. I'm saying historically speaking, people believe that. Therefore, historically speaking, people, that, that people would believe that now as well. But so I'm historically saying, speaking, so okay, I got you. So yeah. historically speaking, yeah, okay. So it's historically accurate that Jesus was crucified on the cross, right? If by historically accurate you mean that people attested to that, then yeah, sure. That that everyone knew that it was Jesus who was crucified. I wouldn't say everyone, but a majority, sure. Yeah, well, I mean, the historic, the reliable sources say that Jesus yeah. was crucified, right? Yeah, but a historian saying something does not necessitate that everyone believed that, but, mo but majority, no, sure. I, I'm not talking about everyone. Just focus. Well, you said everyone. Focus. <laughs> thing, so I, I did, but that wasn't the okay. point. The point was reliability. The point uh -huh. is reliability. Okay. The point is, is that Joseph, Josephus is reliable when it comes mm -hmm. to the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that Joseph... That it's it's a reliable fact in his history that mm -hmm. Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. If Josephus is your source mm -hmm. as a reliable information of Jesus, he Get would it? have he would have empirical evidence for both of these events. Yes, but I'm saying when it comes to Jesus being saved from the cross, that's a theological that's a theological claim. So this right. will be a, a theological claim that goes that is anti-history, right? It's anti-historical. Yeah. It'd be anti what they what they what they claim, yeah. So it's no, no, no. It's anti historical, right? Mm -hmm. Again, if, if you define histor histor it. historical accounts as things that people just saw and believed, then yeah, it historical would be facts. People people are 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 talking about facts here. Yeah, the historical facts is what people see and believe. Right? Okay, like, so the historical just, fact is that Jesus mm -hmm. was on that cross and got crucified, uh -huh. and so and so the Quran, or you're saying it's a theological, it's a theological. Uh, Claim, it's, a, right? it's the same thing that with Psalm said actually, it was, that Jesus it was, was actually saved. It was the same thing with Psalm said to you in this debate. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a theological thing versus yeah. So your so your theology goes against history. My theology goes against what people believed in history. Yes. No, 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 not that. No, don't do that. Your I, theology. I'm specifying for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's your theology. No, don't no, because what you're doing is when you specify, you're actually going away from what you said. I'm not. Your your theology goes against history. Is that that's correct? If it, that's if it exactly appeared to them that Jesus was crucified, nothing goes against each other. Yeah. So, so. yeah it's because the Quran says it appeared to them that Jesus was crucified. Hence, mm -hmm. history could have gotten it wrong and said Jesus was crucified. If, and I, I he know. Could have I, I'm crucified. granting that. I'm granting that. So your theology is saying that history is wrong, therefore going against history, right? It doesn't go against it. It doesn't contradict it. That's the thing. <laughs> no, wait, what? Matter no, no, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, Avery, it corrects Avery. It, it corrects Somebody help me. me. Avery, when he, says, when he says it does not contradict history, he means the fact that the Quran says they believed so. If somebody, if people believed something, it's going to, ha it's going to, uh, it's going to necessitate that they would record this and then later on people would see that historical fact, yes. However, the Quran makes a theological claim saying, however, even though they believed this and saw this, what actually happened was X, right? Okay, I, right. So okay. the historical claim and the historical fact is that Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. The mm -hmm. Quran comes later and says, ah, 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 it actually was made to appear so. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you guys think it was Jesus, that's, that's correct. But that's only because Allah made you think, right? Wait, say that again, I'm sorry. The only reason why that the historical claim is what it is, is because Allah made them think that, that Jesus was crucified, right? It never Allah, said Allah, Allah made them Allah think. Made it says them. it appeared to them 
that Actually, Jesus was crucified. Who, there says Allah made, directly who, made it appear made to it them appear? that Jesus was crucified. Uh, that's who? irrelevant. That, that's not irrelevant. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, that's the, not maybe the people it's that not crucified him brought someone that looked like Jesus and crucified him. Who who made it appear? Allah. What's maybe the, the people. So, all right, somebody said Allah made it appear. Tom's saying something different. Help me out. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. Allah, Allah protected. It says in the Quran, Allah protected it from death. What's your point, though? I don't understand. You're trying so, to move Allah, away from the topic. So, Tom, do you but agree that Allah is the one who made everybody think? I'm saying, was... I'm saying there's possibilities. <laughs> it's not like. God logic. Can we go back to the topic, please? Can we go back to the topic? Wait, God logic. Yeah, yeah, is Jesus a Muslim? But you moved on so much. We're on the topic. Fellas, 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 fellas. We are on the topic that your theology goes against history. No, no, we want a topic. Is Jesus a Muslim? Okay, okay, here's wait, the whole point wait, wait. with this. Your theology, you can have your beliefs about something, right? You can have your faith in this and what your Quran mm -hmm. says and teaches. But here's the point. Your Quran and you, what it says, what you believe in, your theology goes against history. History. Okay. Okay. God, 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 God logic. God logic. I have a question. I want to like. I don't. I'm, this. I'm trying to give like an example. I guess. So who's, do you? Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Smarts. Oh. Okay. Nice do you me. think? And it's not to be you as well. Do you think that the um, exodus or the globe flooding is a historical, or do you think it's something that's a plausible histor historically? I don't know. Because what, what does that have to do with this? If 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 you were to say no, as a lot of historians and psychoanalysts uh, uh, say, then you would have to admit that your Bible goes against history, right? So you're changing the subject on the no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying your if analogy. you if if you want to be if um, if you want to stay consistent, this example, which is analogous to what you would say, would then have to would then cause a problem for you, all right? It's, it's no, not a typical well, case. Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's, well, it's, so, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. The answer would be no, because we have a if if we went into that subject. I can, we can go into that and I can show you the historicity of the Noah, of Noah's flood and stuff like that. I can do that. Sure. So can you guys so, show me the historicity of Jesus being a Muslim? Can y'all do that? I just, I is, just is it impossible just that, that could have happened? That's the thing. So wait, is it an impossibility that it was I made? Wait, I don't wait. I don't wait. Okay. okay. So the same, forget even the flood. Could you prove that the Exodus numbers are not a historical? I, I can prove that they are historical. Okay. Do that. No, I'm not. That's not our subject. Eh. I know. You're but trying I'm to saying, run away from the subject. I'm, I'm not. I'm saying if we can we can finish that about the whole Exodus thing, that would then necessitate that you are not being consistent. No, it wouldn't. Because I'm it saying wouldn't. that I can show you historically that the mm -hmm. Exodus took place when the Exodus happened. I'm saying I can do that for you. Okay, now, can you so. do for me what I'm asking you? Can you show me historically that Jesus was a Muslim? But I'm. So do you base all your beliefs from history? I don't know. It's a historical claim, man. I don't know. Should be. You mind if I ask a question quickly? Sorry, just quickly. Uh, wait. So do do you have historical evidence that Jesus ascended? Yes, we have the New Testament. We have the earliest record of Jesus' life. Hey, isn't that circular reasoning though? Yeah, it <laughs> no, is. No, no. Let me show you why it's not. The reason why it's not circular reasoning to use the New Testament as a source for Jesus, it's because it's the primary source and the earliest sources that we have on the life of Jesus. So it's not circular reasoning. It's using what passes the historical method. This early testimony, early test attestation, uh, uh, primary sources um, and, and individual sources, all appointed to and reporting on the life of Jesus. That's why. And so all of these individual sources talk about Jesus ascending. But you have to prove why they are uh, reliable sources. That's the thing. I, I, so, so again, early to attestation. It doesn't mean anything. Variety of att attestation. Wait, early Independent attestation. attestation. Early these attestation. are these are Wait, some of the it, these are some of the historical methods and the tests that the that the New Testament passed. To be counted as historical reports. God logic. This is kind of wait, wait, wait. God logic. This is kind of ironic. I watched the Wasam debate when it happened. Why didn't you use these things against Wasam? Use the who? And against who? With this debate. This these please. This process of figuring out the historicity of the Bible against this Wasam. You appealed to the Wasam. You didn't really use the the Bible. Oh, at all. oh, oh no. This is this wasn't the conversation with Wasam. With with, with Wasam. It, it, it was. With, with Wasam. The the topic was. Is the Bible is the Bible reliable with the, especially with the Quran's view in it? Okay, so what so what Muslim, so what Muslim Muslim wanted to do is he asked he him, how do you know that Matthew that the gospel writers uh, authors uh, were the authors? 
And so that's what I told him. Bro, it let's wasn't how it wasn't wait, 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 wait. That would that would be simply analogous. So, so please stop trying to lie about our conversation with Wasson. Like, we I'm got one. Like, you can you can like, he ran from not trying to deal wait, with we can we can destroy, destroy, you can <laughs> wait wait you can wait 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 wait. So now so hold on so now that we're that we're all up to date, can you guys stop wasting my time wait, wait. and show me that Jesus was a Muslim? All right, Avery, you said historically early, you said early attestation. What's the earliest attestation? Well, Sam told you this. Yeah, so thank you. So go ahead. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the uh the writings of the apostles, these are the earliest sources that we have on Jesus' life. Um, I said early attestation for the, the gospels. Yeah. Yes. So now can you show me that Jesus was a Muslim? I just asked the, I just asked a question. Early yeah. the can you show me that Jesus was a Muslim now? I asked you a question. You can't ask me a question. Can you show me that Jesus was a Muslim? Stop trying to run, bro. Wait, are you, no, because we, you were talking You're about You're mixing the word else. Muslim with Islam. I already told you, and you keep, I'm not. like, yeah, on no, this I'm point. Asian. Yes, this you word, are. You word. are real mixing. Quick, quick, Muslim quick, quick. is applying to anyone wait, that wait, follows wait. God and submits to him. Wait, 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 wait. What I want to say, what I want to say is, I wanted to add this point earlier. When it comes to being a Muslim, right? It is not if you're a Muslim before the Prophet Muhammad, it does not necessitate that you have to follow all the laws he did to be a Muslim, right? Because there there were laws that were different before the Prophet, and that's something that that, that biblical scripture affirms as well, right? So just because the, just because it's like the whole father thing, I know Adam disagrees with me, but when it, actually I don't even really know for sure when it comes to me, but when it comes to the father, I could I could we could just pause it that the father the term father was something that was. The plug that, that was given, but because of the fact that people were just misconstrued it and, and did not really understand it, Allah revoked it because of that fact. So he wouldn't. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters to be honest. Uh, because but, wait, 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 wait a second. So someone made that point earlier, actually. Now, do you all agree that once upon a time it was okay to call Allah your father? I don't think so. No. It, it doesn't matter if there's a. It, it doesn't matter. It, it is. It doesn't add to no, your point because now can I ask you my question again? If you want, if you want a, a, um, a undeniable proof that Muhammad, that, that Jesus was a Muslim, right? So then, if we apply the same logic to your Bible, you're gonna have to provide me undeniable truth that the New Testament is the Word of God, right? So it's if you can't provide that, then you means you're using a double uh, double standard. Are you guys trying to skip over the issue here? My no, no, friend, because you're using my, a double standard. My friend on the bottom here said that it was possible. That Allah used to be a father, and it was okay to call him a father once upon a time. Adam, you disagree with that. I Who disagree. do I go with now? Well, because you, can, you go with the Quran, and Allah says the Quran, wait, the Jews wait, and Christians wait, say we're the sons of God. Yo, Adam, wait, Avery, on, Avery, you address me and give a counterpoint to me. Wait, you, you, you cut out. What, what happened? My you my, I, I said you already addressed him. You could just like address me now instead and do a counterpoint. Well, no, Adam is addressing you. Adam gave a verse to prove his point. Yeah, no, the, the disagreement we have is makes it doesn't really matter at all. So do you so do you still hold to your position or are you still no 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 but what I said exactly was I don't know exactly, but we could just pause it then. What would be the problem with that? Oh, so you can you can innovate something, you can commit bid up. Who said innovate something? Well, so when you innovate something, it means come up with something new on your own, uh that, that wasn't there in the first place. It's called bidda. It's when you are now saying, oh, yeah, you know, I could posit that Allah used to be a father when your Quran, <laughs> your scholars, and your Hadith never say such. Wait, do you know what the difference between the Bidda and Bidda Sharia is? What is it? But do you know? What is it? I'm asking, do you know? Nope, I don't know. What is it? Okay, then don't say that because. No, what is it? If 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 you want, if you say that, then you'd also be. What what is it? Tell me. Allah would make Bidda as well. Ed ed educate us. Tell me. Okay, Bidda. Um, from my knowledge of uh, uh Sharia, yeah, I, I, I'm, am I gonna tell you outside of my knowledge? Like, what do you mean from no, my knowledge? Yeah, when you say when you say to my knowledge, it kind of implies that you're unsure a little bit. No, no, it implies that if I'm wrong, then someone can correct me. That's what it implies. So, are you sure about what the definition of bitter that you're about to give? I'm I'm sure, but if I'm wrong, okay, go ahead, give it to us. What I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying when it comes to bitter, uh -huh. bitter is not just adding something, right? Because Umar Qutab, um, when he does Bidda uh, include adding something? Just let him speak. Yeah, it does include something. Wait, wait. Yeah. So was I correct when I gave the example of Bidda and accused you of doing uh, of, of Bidda innovation? No, because it's a distinction between Bidda Sharia and, and regular Bidda. Wait, just, but you just affirmed the, that you said Bidda is not only adding. So mm -hmm. I was talking about Bidda in the sense of adding. So I was mm -hmm. correct about Bidda, wasn't I? Linguistically, not in the Sharia. Yeah. Oh, that's that's why I that's actually why I asked you. Okay, tell us the Wait, difference. Did I, don't, did I, did don't, I not don't tell ask me something you that affirms me? Tell me the difference I, between the bitter that I just accused you of adding uh -huh. to your text, your hadith, your scholars. Tell me mm -hmm. the difference. What's the difference? For one, bitter sharia 
in most cases, usually adding something with a beef with in fiqh and or uh, aqidah. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, say that again. It's adding to what? To fiqh or aqidah. In most yeah, cases. and what is what is aqidah? What is that? Aqidah is theology. Oh, so it, it, does Allah being a father have something to do with aqidah? Did, did, uh, did I finish? Yeah, it does. Please uh, uh, answer. Does does. Allah being a father have something to do with Akita? Yeah. Oh, but did, I, but did I finish? So, my, so you're describing the exact bidder yeah. that I defined that you're committed. But I didn't finish the definition. Bro, man. I didn't. Fi that's like well, me God, asking. God, like, God, 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 wait, no, wait, 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 wait. That's like, wait, wait, wait. Somebody that's help like me. That's like me asking. Wait. Somebody help him. That's like oh, yeah. that's wrong. If he's not, look, it, it, it's irrelevant. It's honestly it's irrelevant. Wait, 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 it's irrelevant. Wait, 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 but let me just like you guys need some help, man. How? how I mean, y'all need, need help. How did I? How is seven? Wait, God logic. How are you gonna act like you cook something? By the way, eat. seven is the number of completion. So now it's seven of you guys. Y'all should be able to help each other out. God logic. I'm gonna need some please help, so please help so man. He's asking for God logic. God logic. How are you gonna cut off? Wait, shut up. Let me speak. Let me speak. Let me speak. Let me speak. How are you gonna cut off someone and not let them speak and then act like you cook them? I'm letting you speak, bro. It's your turn. No, no, no. You didn't let me finish. Let him finish and then you could cook them. Oh, is that what you had to say? Yes, because I don't know what you're happy for. You're, you're talking about you cooked them. You didn't do anything. Really? Okay. You didn't so, do anything. All right, all right, stop. Stop right there. I, I like guys like you. I love guys like you. Nobody say anything. Uh, uh, Muslim man. I accuse him of bidder. What is bidder? I'm not not on the topic. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Else, hey, the next person that interrupts, I'm going to kick you. I don't want to, but I will. Let Muslim man talk for a second. No, he wanted to speak. What is bidder? Avery, I, I uh, want to answer your original question, but if you ask me what bidder, I'll... All right. So I told you the next person that speaks, I'm going to remove you. You're still here, though, uh, Sasserin. I'll bring you back up once you respect what I just said. Muslim man, what is bidda? I'm not knowledgeable on the topic, so that's why So I'm then gonna... how do you know if I cooked them or not? Yeah, because you didn't. Because Simerson... Re... Tell no... me how... If you're not knowledgeable, how do you know if, whether or not your boy got cooked? What? Because you didn't let me speak. Let me do a slow. You didn't let me speak. You're not knowledgeable. How do you even have the comprehension to know whether or not your boy made a flaw and I called him out on it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Simerson, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was talking. Simerson was talking about Sharia law. It was when it comes to bidah. Yeah. So I'll tell you. Let me help. Look, look. This is what I do, man. I'm the sheikh. I'm the sheikh. I'm gonna help you all out. I'm gonna help you. He said that the bidah that I was accusing him of is different from bidda according to sharia and so i said okay tell no. us the difference and as he began to tell me the difference he literally was describing exactly what i said no, that bidda innovation no, adding no, to he and he you, you no, didn't he finish, bro. just let him finish bro just let him finish bro ah, let him finish, so if i leave were you, man, leave if, the I were you out. Let's, if i were let's, you i just i'd hold my hands up here, and be like, yo bro here, 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 here. not Life looking good like what Sam said, let's leave this penis out the window. Let him, let him finish. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet. Hey, so, so I, I mean, it, it's interesting. You were, you were quiet a lot. You wanted to come up, but you was quiet a lot. You have a lot to say. But now it's your turn. It's your turn right now. Who prove, that he's a, prove that Jesus is Muslim because he's wasted. The other guy's wasting my time. You prove that he's a Muslim, Muslim man. You're a Muslim man. You, you're a Muslim man. Can I finish my definition? Let him finish. Uh -huh. No. Show me, prove that Jesus is a Muslim. Are you running? So, that, you wait, I think, wait, I think, I think let me just, finish my Are you running? No, I think you're running from Simerson, but okay. okay. Let me let me let me remove you and get somebody else who's man enough to actually engage with the conversation. Muslim, <laughs> you're up. Muslim man, you're out. Hey, Saudi's here. What's up, Saudi? Yo, what's Avery, up, bro? How you doing, my brother? Can good? you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so to be fair, um, on Anwar was finishing his definition. Go ahead, Anwar. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear all of you. Go ahead, Anwar. Yeah, so what I was going to say was Sharia, according to Sharia, according to Ibn al um Bidah is just worshipping Allah in ways that's not been prescribed. Say that one more time. 
Bidda is worshipping Allah in ways that's not been prescribed. Ah. <laughs> Bidda is worshipping Allah in ways that has not been prescribed. Mm -hmm. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen, for the Muslims who are too slow to understand what a cooking is. Watch this. Was it prescribed to worship Allah as a father? Not in so, not in stop, stop, stop. This is for him, Sadi. I promise you'll get your turn. This okay. is for him. Mm -hmm. Say, go ahead, Anwar. Not in, not in the revelation of Muhammad, bro. Not in the revelation of Muhammad. Yeah. Was it prescribed to worship Allah as a father in the revelation of Jesus? That's something that we'd be ag agnostic on. That's why I said we could just pause it. Oh, you're being agnostic of it. So, you don't know. That's that's so why. So you don't wait, know. That's so let me, literally. Wait, that's literally. Let me let me say this. Reason. If you were if you were to even suggest such a thing, something that is not prescribed or suggested, <laughs> is that adding to the way to worship Allah? No, I'm not worshiping Allah in that way. No, it's not. It's no, not I didn't ask say that you're worshiping Allah in that way. But that's the definition you, of this. Listen to the question again. You're not listening. If you, since you're <laughs> saying you don't know about how Allah is supposed to be worshipped in the Injil. By the way, showing that the Quran's not detailed and explained in another way. But if you don't know <laughs> how Jesus taught how to worship Allah and as a father or not a father, and you suggest, you make a suggestion that maybe it was permissible to worship Allah as a father in a prior revelation, is that adding? Not in the way you're worshiping him, worshiping him no. So if it doesn't say worship Allah as a father, if it's silent on that, and you suggest that you suggest that worshiping Allah as a father was okay, if you suggested, not saying that it was, but if you suggested, is that suggestion in addition? Not in the way you're worshiping him. No, you're taking one part of the definition and trying to make it seem like what a, what, an what, thing. what a bro, what are you? Man, what 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 what, what are we doing here, man? You, you're taking it's one part of the definition. What what, what are we doing here? You're the, taking the one part of the wait, definition and uh, Hold on, Anwar, since you're being this dishonest. Define for me addition. What does it mean to add? What is an addition? Again, addition alone is not what I'm speaking about. I said addition the way you worship Allah. You can't just take Good. Allah. So, again, an addition in the way that you worship Allah. Mm -hmm. What does so addition mean? It, Tell me, I, what does addition I, mean? If, wait, if I pause it, that they could have happened. That's not addition the way Answer the Allah. question. What does addition mean? Addition is adding something. Good. So addition, adding, adding a way to worship Allah that hasn't been prescribed, correct? No, it's in the way you worship Allah. You're now you're misconstruing what I said. But you're saying you're suggesting you're mm -hmm. adding this suggestion where it's silent on this. You are adding your suggestion that it probably was permissible to worship Allah as a father. Is that the is that that's that called because yeah. you're adding to the worship of Allah? No, it's not. Wait, is, wait, wait, wait. Just, just logic. Is it adding to the way I worship Allah? You're adding to the way that it probably was worshipped. That's what okay, we're just. Am I adding to the way I worship Allah? Not, not that you. Can but, I answer but, this? But that, that, that is the exact definition. Past I gave people. You. That is the exact can definition. I, answer this? I, gave I know the answer. Past people. That's it's good to say, yeah, they can worship. They, it was okay for them to worship Allah as a father back okay, then. You when back just, then, it wasn't prescribed. Okay, but you just admitted. I, you just your admitted I know answer. Answer. All right, who's next? I, can I answer this, please? <laughs> you just admitted that's not going against the definition I gave you. Yo, brothers. All right, listen. Half of Dean, if you don't know, you keep quiet, yeah? And that's no disrespect to any of you brothers. But don't just come in here and have a go. Let me tell you something, uh, Avery. First of all, you're a very worthy opponent. You're a very clever Christian amongst many of the Christians I've chatted to. I'm not here to disrespect you or any of, or any other Christians here, yeah? In terms of answering your question directly, I actually want to go to your original point because I think we've deflected and gone on to all different things. So we'll go back yeah, to we, your we original switch, point. In, we, switch, yeah? we switch gears because look, this, this is the title of my room. The title yeah. of the stream today is um, you know, you guys have no answers for these arguments. I have an answer. I have an answer for you. Okay, so you have, an, you have so you have an we're we're on something right now. So you have an yeah. answer for Jesus being a Muslim? I, I have an answer, but should we just deal with the question that you just asked about Bidah, yeah? Our all our ulama, our scholars have said in the past, in the past sharias, yeah. Remember, Islam is a continuation of past messages. So we have the revelation of Moses, he had his own sharia. We had Jesus was a, a, a Jew, and you you know that I know that, yeah. So in it was permissible according to the ulama 
to use words like father as as uh, for God. That is in our books. Okay, it, father doesn't mean the he- like a a man sitting on a heavenly throne with white hair and looking down. Wait, wait, wait. I'm I'm sorry, I kind of missed it. You're saying that it, back then it was permissible to call yes. God. Yes, so every so when the Prophet ﷺ came, he came with a new Sharia. Now the innovation and the bid'ah you're talking about is, is to do with Islam. It's not. It's not nothing to do with the past Sharia. So as as a brother said earlier, for example, in the past it was permissible to drink wine. Now in the new Sharia, it is not permissible to drink wine. Similarly, in the past, the the term father was permissible. Now it would not be deemed permissible. Do you understand? Gotcha. Does, does, does I understand. That... I understand you. So now let me ask the rest. Do you guys agree that in the past it was permissible to call Allah Father when you worshipped Him? I don't know. I haven't researched. But if uh, if, if our brother here is correct, then perhaps. Yeah. Uh, Gardner, you come gonna leave? Please add Suleiman. I need, I need clear answers, man. I can't. Is it? They don't, know, they they think they don't know, bro. I'm telling yeah. you. That. If if the ulama say that, then sure, there's no. Not Sali, Suleiman, Suleiman. Please add Suleiman. Suleiman. Yeah. So I got, I got, I got a good, I got a good point to make on this uh, argument. Pull out twenty one, Quran twenty one, uh, Quran twenty one twenty six. What's it say? It says that they have said that the most merciful has begotten a son. Uh, the, uh, Subhana, glory be to him, but there are servants brought uh, to honor. That's so it's not... To, that's referring to angels, by the way. No, no, no. If they say it, just pull it up. Pull it up. Have her, every put it, pull it up. Yeah, I just look at the tapestry. It's referring to angels. But it, even if even if he says they're angels, but then it's, it's not disagreeing that people call Allah the Father. So yeah, he's he's not he's not, but get the point I'm making. Listen to the point I'm making. Hey, hey hold on, hold on. Uh, side, side of your mic is a little too loud. You mind? Is it possible okay. for you to turn it down a bit? All right, all right. Is that better for you? A little, a little bit, yeah. Now go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying that Subhana, glory, yeah, glory be to God. Yeah, turn it down some more. It's it's really loud. Turn okay. It down some more. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm talking too loud, but yeah, he's saying Subhana. Subhana means glory be to Allah, but they are servants brought near, brought to honor. So, okay, they saying that Allah has begotten a son. You got louder. Glory be. Please pull up that verse so they can address that. Yeah, if I, they just, say I just looked at it again. There's no contradiction what I brought up in, in that regarding that verse. Huh? There's no contradiction what I said. What I said regarding that verse. No, no, no. So my my the point I was making is. You know, I, know, can, I know the point you're making. I know. Don't worry. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying, but, I'm saying if yeah. they, if I'm saying if we just pause the fact that they could have taken it li- literally or misconstrued it, which is why I said like begotten and begotten can just like they can, they can people can like say that begotten begotten just means like. Oh, hey, can we go to the father. original topic? You know what you originally asked before you got everyone around. Daddy, what's, what's, the, what's the point? Let's go to because we're jumping around. Let's get to your original. We're, we're right here. Very good. We're on, the, we're on the main points. So we're on the can main you point the, right now for, of the, for the, the audience who've come late, Avery, and for the brothers in the chat here that are, can you just get the original point that you asked at the start of the stream? Unless it's let's proving that Jesus is a Muslim. That's where we're at right now, bro. Okay. You said you said in the Quran it mentions dude, Jesus. Dude, dude, we're at the conversation of Jesus being a Muslim. We've moved past that. All right. No, we haven't. Well, yes, we have. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know this was your stream, Adam. No, because I, I want. To, I just want to know what your point is with regard to the father. I, I, like, I, I, uh, I didn't know that this was any of y'all. Y'all, y'all, let me know. Am, am I? Am no, I it's your stay? stream. It's it your is your stream. stream. Your stream. Oh, I'm just curious. Okay. I respectfully okay, ask. So it question. is my stream. Okay, guys. So let guess what? We are on Jesus being a Muslim. We yeah, will. Okay. We will navigate the conversation when I see fit that this conversation is done. Are we all clear? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so let's keep going. You said that it's in your books that Allah used to be a father. Can you please provide that for me? I said the ulama have said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is known. It says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. But uh-huh. ulama have said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have only 99 names. Yeah? Uh-huh. So there were many more names. And uh-huh. every nation was sent a prophet. 
and the mm -hmm. prophets and the messengers would speak to people in their own languages. Okay, mm -hmm. so it won't say it might not necessarily they didn't come and say oh Allah Allah in every single language because you know but people spoke in different ways and the ulama have said father was permissible back in there but that has now been abrogated yeah can you Allah. show me that what it's uh it's in the Akida book so if you yeah. if you uh it'll probably be too late for you to read this but it's a very long discussion but there's the Akida of the Muslims by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Dr. Umar Farooq Abdullah, who are American Muslims, and they've done a whole course on this. These are Americans. They're American no. Muslims. Is, is, is there Muslims. Some, you said the ulama said, what, what, is, what does ulama mean? Help me out here. What does ulama mean? Ulama, okay, give me. Ulama are, are scholars, are past scholars, yeah? People right, are, so are these, are, these, are these heavy scholars like Tabari, Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir, uh, people like this, Ibn Abbas? Many, many, many. They many, would not many. be considered okay. ulama. Okay. Can, you, can you show me, can you show me that in early Islam, they are affirming that it was once okay, it was once permissible that Allah was a father. I can, I, I've told you, I've given you reference to the actual lecture, but if you're asking me directly, give me a few minutes. Let's so I'll let someone else speak. I'll see if okay, I can. Yes, I, I need, I need the actual source. Okay. All right. So as he gets that, somebody else can probably jump in. Can anyone help me? Prove Jesus is a Muslim to me, man. Can you answer my question before about your double standard? Does anyone new want to speak? Because it looks like uh, Adam is, has nowhere to go here. Or I'm you know, uh, Muslim, they would not be considered the old man, my guy. The old man would be like you were like Sheikh Salim if it's like, if it's like, Yeah, I, I have to. That's the thing. I have to disagree with this father point because I, I can't find anything. It, it doesn't really matter. No, yeah, I, oh, yeah, the thing is, I oh, think it doesn't. When matter. it comes, when it comes it to the whole, when it comes to whole bringing Sheikh Hamza Yusuf as all that, I disagree with that entirely. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree <laughs> with the brother here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, um, you, you could look at people like Sheikh Salim of Fawzan, yeah, Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah is a little late, but I guess him too. Yeah, but like picking people like him. Uh, mm -mm. Mm. So I, you guys I'm are not saying, saying that they're the ones that are, are the ulama. I'm saying they've referred to past ulama. Okay, and like, what I'm trying to do is just find their favorite. But I want to know what your point is. Like, why does it matter that the Bible says uh, God is like Jesus refers to God as a father? So this is the entire point. <clears throat> yeah. The historical evidence that we have on Jesus' life tells us what he believed, taught, language he spoke, all of that. Okay. The historical records that we have teaches that says that Jesus taught that God was his father. So okay. historically, when it comes to Jesus' theology, he wasn't a Muslim. So the claim that Jesus was a Muslim is a false claim. But you're missing a part here. We have to prove that those scriptures are reliable before you can make that. You already claim. did. You again back how many times are we gonna go in this loop? You already admitted that the Bible was reliable in Jesus' life. I said I took that back. Okay, so then we're at back at square one. Before you try to jump in anywhere, you have to tell me again how you know Jesus lived in the first century. But then with the same way, I can ask you, can you show me that Jesus wait, is God? You, you it's the same thing. You can you show me that? Wait, this is wait, no, honestly. Wait, because Adam, if you ask me that no question... Uh, I, already, I already told him. We already, he couldn't go against the whole freaking scholars of the first century and around there who attested that. What? I, 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 I utilized <laughs> Josephus. You quoted Josephus, and I said, yeah. great, let's use Josephus. Josephus says Jesus yeah. was crucified historically. Showing yeah. again that your theology is anti-historical. And the, so if you define historical as people, things that people believe, then I would, yes, affirm that. But then I also gave you a counterpoint. No, not what people believed. It's historical facts, historical reports, facts. Are historical, reports, are historical reports not people believed? It's not just what people believe. It's reports, bro. It's what they believe. It's what they reliable saw. reports. Is it what they believe? What people's they lives and information. Is, is it location, is, is it places, belief, dates, is, is it what they saw and what they believe? What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Is it, saw, Lodge, or, is it, is it wait? Is it what they saw and what they believe? Are you okay? Is it what they saw? No, and I, they I, I, I'm tired of wasting my breath with you, bro. No, just, no, just, no, just, is, it, is it what they saw and what they believe? Tell, tell me this, bro. How did Jesus pray? Is it what the? Uh, wait, tell me, how that did Jesus pray? Why are you going away from the point? How did Jesus pray? Why? why I don't know. Thank you, Adam. He doesn't know. What about you, Anwar? How did Jesus pray? Why are you going away from the point? 
How did Jesus pray? This is why, the point. Why are you, no, it's not. I gave you a point with. with okay, uh, you got about ten seconds to be able to answer the question. I'll bring up another mother who maybe. Look, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to give you a point. You kick me. It doesn't matter. All right, beautiful. So one, two, how did Jesus four, pray, three, bro? four, five. I don't care, bro. Go to baby. All right, house. peace. So that's another Muslim that got cooked and baked and boiled. Who's next? Jesus, Jesus prostrated. How do you know that? One second, let me pull this over real quick. What's going on, y'all? So I think I think that's widely accepted by Christians and by Muslims that Jesus prostrated. You know, okay. there's practices practices of the early church prostration, uh, and in Islam, obviously, you know, they prostrate in their prayers. So therefore, the uh, obviously they got this from. Muhammad, right? Um, but from what the Islamic standpoint is, um, there's no, I don't, I don't see too much of a clear link. But the prophets, it's a succession of prophets, right? How, how, hey, so, how do, how do you know, Max? How do you know that Jesus prostrated? How do I know that Jesus prostrated? Yeah, uh, I believe there's verses in the Bible that. Uh, that covered that. This piece to the Very good. And so the Bible is what tells you how Jesus practiced his religion, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh so God. when Jesus prostrated, who did he prostrate to specifically? What did he call him? The Father. Beautiful. Is Allah the Father of Jesus? Is Allah the Father of Jesus? The Father. God is God. The Father. Let him answer. Let him answer. Is Allah the father of Jesus, Max? So, I mean, God is the father of Jesus. Then you're not a Muslim. No, it depends on what you mean by father. Depends on what you mean by father. You're not you're not a Muslim if you say that that God is the father of Jesus, uh, Max, because the Quran is very clear and emphatic about those who say Jesus is the Son of God. You know, it says. That God's Allah's curse is upon them, and He is against those who say such things. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, yeah. So that would mean if if Jesus if God is the Father of Jesus, and that's what Jesus is teaching, then that shows that He's not a Muslim. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So that's my whole point, bro. Jesus ain't a Muslim. He can't be. And I will prove that Islam is false then. So what if we can prove that the Bible is not a reliable source of information? Would that negate it? What language did Jesus speak, Adam? I don't know what language he spoke. Where did Jesus live, Adam? That's an easy one, man. Come on. That one's easy. I don't know where he lived. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. To me. It doesn't change anything. Say that again? He spoke Aramaic. Spoke. Oh, see, Max says he's Max knows the answer. I want to know. Uh, for me, it, do, it doesn't matter because Allah didn't mention the Quran. He, he, spoke, he spoke Aramaic, which is it's closer to Arabic than you know. For example, English is closer to Arabic. Now let's be clear. It's, let's be clear, Max. You're still a Muslim, right? Am I still a Muslim? I cannot say I am. Praise God, bro. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Why would you be Muslim, Max? Why would uh, it's, be, it's, it's because he's realizing the truth of the gospel. But we'll get to that in a second. Good logic. So, Can we go back? Wait, so I said I don't know where Jesus lived, and I, I don't think it matters because Allah has mentioned the Quran. Wait, hold on. What? Yeah. You, don't, okay. you don't know where Jesus lived. You don't, doesn't know, matter. you don't know what language Jesus spoke. You it don't know how anything. Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. So you don't know anything about Jesus, bro. Except what Allah has told us. You don't know nothing. Like, you, you didn't, did, you didn't nothing. know the four schools of Islam, and you are talking about Islam. What What do you mean? Wait, say you that didn't again. Know the first, you didn't know the four schools when Muslim Lantern asked you, and now you're going look at, around. Look at this. Look, look how pathetic it is. Look how pathetic it is. Hold on, let's adjust God logic, listen. God logic, listen. Hold on, let's adjust it. Adam, hold on. I like people. I like these kind of guys. Hey, Tom, what are the four schools of jurisprudence? Huh? What are the four schools of jurisprudence? I don't know. You don't know? You mean the four keep schools your mouth of shut. Islam or what? Keep your mouth shut because you don't know what happened. When you don't have knowledge, you can't tell anyone that they got cooked or not cooked because you don't know. 
You could just be being deceived by Muslim lanterns antics, right? You could be being deceived and not know what's going on because you're an ignoramus. So if I were you, I could be being deceived like that from you. Yeah, I don't know. Respectfully, if I were you, I would keep my mouth shut on these issues, or else I will dog you out and embarrass you, just like I was doing the Muslim lantern before he kicked me. All right. So let's keep moving, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, So we on the same point, or moving on? Yeah, we're still on the same point. So yeah, okay. Know, so you don't know anything about Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know anything. About it. It doesn't matter to me except what Allah has revealed. It, it, it should matter. Your Quran. Why? Well, what does it change? Oh, What's it change? Now? Somebody has loud, loud Max. Hey, Max, I think I'm a. Wait, it's not Max. Who's loud? It's like sound like somebody doing something. Let me see if it's Tom. We'll, we'll see who it is. Um, it doesn't change anything if I know where he lived or what language. It changes everything. It changes. It changes everything because. Change? Okay. When you can acknowledge that your Quran is insufficient about no, what it's no 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 it's the Quran is sufficient for what is? is required. It's sufficient for what is what is required. Is yeah. that what the Quran says? It's uh, it says it's uh, a detailed exp- um you go on. The explanation for uh, yeah for everything. Oh. Uh, the, uh, the suffered, yeah. yeah, so you got it. So mm-hmm. is the Quran sufficient and detailed for what you need to know or about everything? That it mentioned. Hang on, hang on. So, did you know Arabic? Do you know Arabic? Yes, I do. Okay, help us out. Kulli shay. Kulli right. shay in Arabic. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, kulli shay doesn't mean every single thing. I mean, if you're demanding that the Quran <laughs> is a. Hang on, no, but that's the thing. You don't know Arabic. You can't say that you're taking a translation. <laughs> For example, when uh, I mean, there's many things in the Quran when it says. Uh, no, 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 listen, listen. So, why are you laughing? When it says cool, cool. I'm laughing because I love you, man. You're funny, dude. I'm in, Thank I'm you. In I, love you. I, love, I love you too. I love you too. Are you not having too. fun? I'm having fun. I love this. Yeah, I love this. Fun, okay. I love you as well. I, I, I appreciate you. The platform is good. You know, it's my passion. So I respect it. It's good. So uh, the, when it says kulli shay, it's it's evident. I mean, even even Kathir even says it's it's with things that are relevant. If you want the Quran to be a detailed explanation of everything, I mean, it's then you're gonna have to you have a unlimited book. It's I mean, it's a silly thing to to impose. It doesn't make sense. Kul shay in Arabic, right? Arabic idiom. It means anything that is relevant from the apparent meaning, right? If I listen, 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 listen. So, for example, if I tell you, um, I don't know. Do, do, do you know, like, uh, wait, um, like you know, I was watching the stream you had with Hamza. You know, when he, for example, when he asked you, he said there's a line on the pulpit. I mean, you you answered that it doesn't actually mean there's a line on the pulpit, right? Correct. Do you remember that? Yeah. So, it, so it, it could be figurative. Could be. Right, no, but this is not fit, it's different. The apparent meaning, right? And using the Arabic language and context, we know kul shay means everything which is required, and the tafsir has confirmed this. People in the Arabic language who are high in the Arabic language. But you, you do not know the Arabic language, you don't know what the context of the Quran means. So you can't impose to say this means it's it's a, a, a detailed um, explanation of exactly everything, because that's stupid. Then I mean you want the Quran to to explain the, the, the foot the exact footsteps of Moses. I mean it doesn't make sense. Okay. Then the Quran loses its wisdom. I got you. Thank you so much. I heard you out. I didn't interrupt. You. Okay. You Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's yeah. good. So look, man. You're saying that it is stupid of me to hold the Quran to what it says. It's stupid of me to do that. That's tough. It's it says it's a detail. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is stupid of me to read the Quran for what it says and to take it for what it says, even in are its you, context. Are you a literalist? Uh, uh, well, I, I go by what the context gives me. And so what you're saying is, is that the apparent meaning, no, you're saying it would be stupid to for to understand it to mean everything literally that the Quran talks about. Therefore, you have to give it some type of figurative or apparent. No, 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 no. Cool shay. Cool, cool shay does not mean every single thing. Yes, if I does. say it means everything. It okay, means so everything. let me tell you something. So if I say if I say one plus one equals two, you'll say everyone knows that. Does that mean a baby knows that? No, it's it's wait, you can't say that. If I say everyone wait, wait, knows wait, wait, that. Wait, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second. Yeah, okay. okay. So when we go to the verse here, it says that the Quran is a detailed explanation of Correct. everything. It doesn't say everything. It doesn't give it a caveat. It doesn't give it a a qualifier. It doesn't say everything regarding things that's necessary for you to know. It doesn't say everything that's, you know, good for your guidance. It doesn't say that. It's a detailed explanation of everything. Do you see how even unexplained this verse has to be? Let me ask you a question. The verse in the Quran 
that says it's a detailed explanation of everything is not detailed by what it means by detailed explanation of everything. Okay, so if I tell you everyone knows what Google is, does that mean every single if person I, on Earth if knows I, it? If I tell you that my cookbook is a detailed explanation of, of everything in it, what does that mean? Uh, it means it's a detailed explanation of everything to do with cookery. I mean, it's, it's okay, obvious. Okay, beautiful. I mean, so when the Quran says it's a confirmation of previous scriptures, not a fabrication, and a detailed explanation of everything, talking about the Quran, from the apparent so that means meaning. that it's detailed about everything in the Quran, right? No, it doesn't say that. What does it say? It's detailed no. about everything in the Quran. Because now you're going to bring up the verse that says some verses are ambiguous and some are not, which I'm doesn't not even, even apply to it. I don't, I don't no, need that's to the do thing. I don't need yeah, to do that. Because? I don't, dude, listen. Okay. I don't right. need to bring that verse up to show this contradiction because you already given me the contradiction I needed by saying that the Quran is not detailed about Jesus. It's not detailed and explained about him. It's about not, what yeah. he taught, how he practices religion, where he was born, things of this nature, stuff that it mentions, but it's not detailed about. It's ambiguous. Okay, so let me tell you how to do it with language. So that's you know a French? contradiction to this verse. Okay, I'll, okay, it's fine. Well, let's not, let's move to the language now. Do you know French? Do you know a bit of French? No, I don't know French. Bro. Okay, so in like French, when you say yeah, everyone, you say tout le monde. Tout le monde means the whole world. Right, yeah. the whole world. So you say everyone knows something. It doesn't literally mean the whole world. So it, it, it means matter of linguistics coming to it as well. Cool shay does not mean every single thing. It means the apparent meaning. And if you say that you believe that, then you're a literalist. And when you read the Bible and you pick the Bible up, then I mean you're going to have some problems with that as well. You cannot be a literalist with with every single thing. There are things which have apparent meanings. But now, could you mind? Can we go back to the point before? No, nope, not to respond to okay. what you just said. I just let okay, you. Yes, I'm going. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna okay. respond to what you just said. Dude, you literally just showed me how you just contradicted yourself and refuted the Quran. Because now in the Quran, when it's in its context, talking about itself, how it's a confirmation of, of what came before it, maybe that's figurative. Maybe maybe that doesn't mean what it says. Maybe the no, apparent no, meaning the apparent, is No, the apparent else. meaning is that. Dude, don't cut me off, bro. Okay, don't sir. So your Quran says it's detailed about everything, not just there. It says it in multiple places. It says the same thing. That the Quran claim came as a, a detailed explanation of everything. That's chapter 16, verse 89. You can't get away from it because it says it's a detailed explanation of everything and it's a guidance and it's a mercy for those who believe. So what do you understand from that verse? It's simple. The Quran is a detailed explanation of the things it talks about. And it's a guidance. Where does it say that? Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Where does it say it's a detailed explanation of everything it talks about? You just added that I'm, in. I'm what being charitable. I'm no, being no, no, charitable. No, no, no. That's my point. No, you, you added that. I'm being charitable. No, no, no. You added that. That's not the meaning that you... Inter I, this what well, answers is detailed you, explanation you, you of everything. Do you know what it means to be charitable? Yes, of course I know. Okay. I can make an argument that the Quran has to explain to me how a microwave works. However, I'm being charitable to the Quran. And so the Quran is talking about itself and what it itself talks about from the doesn't Quran. doesn't say that. It says doesn't say that. So when, when it says that the Quran is not a fabrication, what does that mean? It's is the Quran talking about what's in the Quran or something outside of it? Talking about the Quran. Yeah. Oh, okay. When the Quran yeah. says that it itself is a confirmation of what came before it, is it talking about something outside the Quran or what's in the Quran? The Quran, good. Yeah, Beautiful. Also, so when the yeah, Quran okay. says that it's detailed about everything, is it saying saying something outside mm -hmm. the Quran? Or is it talking about contents within the Quran? No, 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 no. Because you, I mean, you just... No, Why, can't you that one? Why can't you I'll answer, answer that one? I'll answer it. Listen to me. So when you said the Quran is a detailed explanation, right, for everything in it, you've added that in. For everything. I didn't say, not refer... I didn't say hang on, hang on. Okay, okay. So you're saying basically it means the Quran has detailed explanation of every single verse in it. That's right? Correct. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. It's it doesn't say that. It's explained about the contents. Bring the verse up. It's talking Bring the about verse its up. own contents. Okay, the verse is, what did you say? Chapter 16, verse 89? Verse chapter 16, verse 89. And <sighs> chapter 12, verse 111. If you want, I could pull them both up on the screen for us. We could look at them side <laughs> by side. And I've got I've got an answer for you as well, Avery. عليك الكتاب تبين لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين. Yeah, لكل شيء doesn't mean that. I mean, it doesn't. It does not. It's a linguistic thing. When I say like in French, "tulumon" does not mean yeah, the whole world. Magical Arabic. It's the magical Arabic, right? Do you know Arabic? It's the magical. Oh, Arabic. Do, you, do you know Arabic or not? It's the magical you know Arabic. Arabic. Everything doesn't mean no, everything. No, no, when you're talking about right? the Quran. You know, you do need the Arabic, though. Would you not agree with that, Avery? Does the word in Arabic mean everything or not? It means everything with the apparent meaning. 
Does it does it say does it mean everything with the apparent meaning or does it mean everything? <laughs> Do you see how now you're adding? No, 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 You have to apply. Oh, hang on. Is it everything you with the apparent meaning or everything? You apply no, the apparent the, meaning. Oh, you apply the apparent meaning. Where does the Quran say that? Uh, it's it's Arabic. Arabic. You see, you see how when I try to be charitable to the Quran and say it's talking about the contents within it, within it, you say, Where does the Quran say that? Where does the Quran say that? You see that? You see how you, that goes? Okay, no, I can do the same sure. thing to you. So if I say Google. everyone knows Google, everyone knows Google. No, is that you, say, you say that, no, stick to what your Quran says. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm Quran giving you an example. Detail, don't cut me off. Okay. Quran is a detailed explanation of everything. Good. Yeah. So can does the word every does the word everything exist there or not? Kul shay. Does that Kul mean shay. everything or not? Everything in context and with you applying the apparent meaning. Okay, let's answer the question. Are you so everyone, if oh, I yeah, say yeah, everyone knows go. Google. There we go. If, oh, if I say so everyone done, knows. Yeah. You're, you're done. You're done. Is there anybody here else that can prove to me that Jesus is a Muslim? You don't know anything in your Quran. It doesn't tell you nothing about Jesus. So prove to me Jesus' religion that he followed Islam. Hello. Hi, are you a Muslim? Um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I come from a Muslim background, but, uh, I'm kind of, uh, leaning towards, uh, agnostic a little bit now because I learned Islam and I'm, uh, but I can kind of like ask questions about, uh, Christianity that I guess I don't really understand that kind of, I guess it has connotations for Islam, but Anyway, yeah. Are we okay. going to so, jump around, so, Avery? So, so here what we're doing is the Muslims are supposed to be here proving yep. to me that Jesus is a Muslim at this point in time. Yeah. Okay, so this is what this is what we're doing at this at this juncture. And none yeah, of yeah, these, yeah, I know. They're, they're having problems. Avery, they're did you understand? Problems. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Did you understand what I said about double standards earlier? Did you, did you refute that? Yeah, I already got rid of you, Adam. Is there anybody new that wants to say something? Okay, let me let me say something. Can I have a discussion with you about your original thing that you asked? Yeah, my thing so is about you. You, you why are you why are you going away from Jesus being a Muslim, dude? I am. I'm getting to. I'm getting to. Avery, I'm talking to you with respect. I know yeah. you've had a frustrating. I know you've been frustrated, brother, because I know there's a lot of people that have been jumping around. And we're going from topic. I know you're frustrated. And you're logical. I'm not coming with that energy. I'm coming to you with respect. Yeah. Okay. So, so please, we're on this. I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying to you, Avery, it, you know the original source, the scholars say this, there was an original source, it was called Q. From Q, they, 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 they say this is where Mark and Matthew, the earlier Gospels, before no. John, you know, Q, we know that. Am Q I is, wrong is, in this? Q, no, you're, yes, you're wrong. The, okay, what they so say, Q is theoretical. Wrong. It's theoretical. Yes, but it's, yes, so it's, it's not genuine, something that actually exists. It's a theory. It's, and it's in matter the, fact, the, the theory, dominant theory. theory. Yes or no? No, it's just a theory. No, this it's is the, the point. dominant theory. It doesn't it, exist, bro. It, be, be fair, man. It's the I dominant. I mean, very theory. fair. It doesn't exist. Okay, so when was Mark written? Yeah, around forty-five-ish, fifty AD. You, you don't, I, can you can, can you confirm that? Is that proven? What is, what does that have to do with proving Jesus was a Muslim? It's proof. Okay, so in the Quran talks about Jesus. You know your original claim where it says the the gospel mentioned uh, uh the gospel mentioned uh, jesus yeah is this does this uh, have to do with jesus being a muslim? Muslim? does this so have to do with jesus original, being a muslim you asked that question right that was your original does this have question. to do with jesus being a muslim yes so okay this is what i, I want to hear it because if, if i so, i'm gonna let so, you talk so, if if i don't hear you on the point about jesus being a muslim, every second i'm gonna cut every, you I'm respectfully and you're cutting me off my brother you yeah, know so this is the thing uh uh, Sastrin. Saracen. Saracen. This is the yes. thing, bro. When you say that you're respecting me, that means that you're going to be on the topic that I have at hand. You mm -hmm. will be disrespecting me by continuing to go against my wishes, trying to talk about something I'm not talking about. You get what okay. I'm saying? So uh, if, you, if you respect me like you say you do, yeah. stay on the topic that I'm talking about and okay. please address it. So can I answer both questions? And I ask you, just give me a minute, two minutes, and don't disrespect and don't uh, cut me off. If you feel I'm going off topic. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to engage with what I am talking about at the moment? Instead of trying to gaslight and act like you're respectful 
and try to do your own thing here. Um, can I just say a few things? So if I'm being completely honest, um, there is actually no way to prove like from the Bible that Jesus was a Muslim. Um, if you actually read the Gospels, like you have these arguments like um, Jesus called uh, God Father and these things. Um, but also, uh, I'm really not attacking. I'm just like really trying to be honest. Um, a lot of the times Jesus does say a few things like um, you have to like not about himself being God, but to for people to kind of worship the father and things like that so he doesn't really say anything about himself but he does talk about worshiping the father and these things okay thank you so he does talk about worshiping himself as well he doesn't negate himself mm -hmm. however to the point being raised here you're absolutely right jesus pointed also worship to the father specifically which would be anti-islam correct yeah all right so she gets it does anyone disagree? Looks like me and Sister Nori are on the same page. Does anybody on the on the panel disagree so far? I'm kind of uh -huh. on the fence. Who said that? There's two people. There's Sarah who said hello and me. So yeah. Solomon. Okay, that's Solomon who says you're on the fence. You're on the fence of Jesus being a Muslim? Yeah, well, I mean what she's saying is basically and I that's why I said I kind of agree with her in that, which is what of one of the brothers previously tried to say that if you're trying to move in a biblical context, was Jesus a Muslim in the way that you want? It's not going to be directly possible, but there are things that he did and the things, the way that he did them that we can show you to say that, yes, in this context, from a biblical perspective as well, you can identify jesus as a muslim because give me an example okay so the whole argument here i don't know why nobody's been bringing this point up was whether father and god are two different things and where did islam say that father is allah this is even jesus doesn't segregate between these two things he says i go back to my father and your father my god and your god he doesn't separate father and god he yes, says he the only true okay so exactly so this is a moot point. Like we don't even need no, no, to discuss. I, this. I know you, you said Jesus exactly. says father. He means God. Wait, wait. You said exactly. I literally just disagreed with you, and you said exactly. No, I didn't hear what you. What do you mean? Okay. I didn't hear what you just. You quoted okay. a verse. Sure. You quoted a verse. Where Jesus literally makes a, dif a differentiation, a distinction. No, he between doesn't. Father and God. Okay, so let me ask you this: the word father that's used there. And God that that's used there in John chapter twenty verse seventeen. Are those the same word? But I'm. It's literally showing you that He is making no difference between them. Okay. Solomon. Are you implying that? Solomon. Hold on. Are you implying Solomon. that He's going back to His Father Solomon. and His God? Solomon. You are probably thirty seconds away since you was already here, and I've already dealt with you. That my patience for you is not as high as it was earlier. Answer me directly. Is the word Father and the word God in John chapter 20, verse 17, the same word? Yes or no? No, no. But the okay, context thank you. Oh, so this is what, let's get an understanding together. I'm trying to work with you. I'm trying. I hope so. I hope so. So maybe you need to refine what you're saying. That okay. in this context, it's not that um, it's not that the word father and the word God are synonymous in the same. No, because okay. they're not they're two completely different words. However, both according to Jesus, God okay. is the father and the father is God. That's what you probably okay. really mean, correct? That's exactly what I said. It's not what you said. You, you tried to say that the word, he doesn't make a distinction between the word father and the word God. But what you- It doesn't really matter about the word. It does matter because according to Islam, can you use the word father as an identifier of God? This has already been discussed, Avery. Even, okay, what about John 17? What about John 17, three? As a Muslim, 
can you use the word father as an identifier of Allah? Yes. No. Or very, Allah? very simple cut. No, not in this Islam Thank that you. Muhammad has introduced. So it's very easy. That's but that's an easy question. Thank you so much. So that means that Jesus, when he uses the word father and as an identifier of God, that means he's out of the fold of Islam. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. When, as one of the brothers mentioned already, Islam, which Muhammad came to bring about 600 years or however many hundred years later, and a Muslim are two different things. When we say that Jesus was a Muslim, he practiced the uh, one God, which is why another brother mentioned the connection of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran, because all of them say the Elohim, uh, the Shammai, which is, you know, yeah, Adonai, whatever it is, the Lord is one. That's what Muslims are debating about. You, you when we Yaqub? say that Islam Yaqub? says, when we say that Islam says, uh, when you're saying that, oh, it's in Islam, it doesn't say father. Of course, it doesn't say father. That's coming in the time of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So did, so, so, did, is, so, did, so did the term Muslim. Tell me again, Abraham, repeat the point. So did the term Muslim. Islam and no, this concept of Muslim, Muslim didn't come until... No, it didn't. Muslim, the meaning of the word Muslim comes from the word Aslama, which means to... You don't uh, got to do this. You don't, don't have to, you don't, you don't, you don't got to do this. As a Muslim, let me but ask Avery, you. Am I making sense? As a Muslim, can making... you say that God is your father as a Muslim? But we already addressed this. It can't. No, you didn't because you keep going back. Is, no, can I you said say God that. A, can, you, can you, as a Muslim, say that God is your father? That would be sure. In the, in the time Thank of you, Muhammad. That would be sure. In the, yeah, Sarah? in the time of Thank Muhammad, you, no. In the time of Muhammad, no. So in the time of Jesus, yes? That's what I'm trying to imply to you, that in the time of Jesus and in the time of Moses, when the Jews were using the scriptures, and it's clear that they were using the word father and calling other people gods, and they misinterpreted that usage. That's why God then later forbid no, that no, no, usage no. of the word said, father. No, your Quran doesn't say that they interpreted it that way. Your Quran, That's says, exactly what, okay. your Quran says the Jews and the Christians used to say that they themselves are sons of Allah, his beloved. So that's, they were sons of God in the sense that he loved them. But that's what I'm trying not to in, say. Not it's, in the sense that they were gods. And then Allah rejects that. He says, no, you're not. You're just, you're, you're just men like everyone else who I punish. Whoever I yes, will. That's, that's why I'm trying to say that you have to look at the Quran holistically. That's why there are parts of the Quran that say that you cannot use certain terminologies. That's why Allah, when no, he defines is, himself. Are you, are you hearing yourself? But I'm trying to just make one point, Avery. Just one Can point. I just In ask a question really quickly uh, to Suleiman, actually? Uh, what does it mean to be a Muslim? He just said, submit to God alone. One okay. Submit to one God. Okay. That's what he okay. said. So can you be a Muslim if you don't follow the Sunnah and Muhammad? Nori, I just answered that question. It's... <laughs> There is no Islam and Muslim conflation. Islam yeah. is a is a religion that the Prophet Muhammad. He, 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 I'm done. Dishonest. See, right, the so thing we... is, like, I'm trying here. Like, I'm trying to kind of go with like the um, the theme that you have for the debate, but the arguments that they bring up, they're kind of like Ridiculous. they don't make sense. They're ridiculous, aren't they? They don't make really much sense. And I'm trying to actually think about good arguments or something that, like a question that can be answered. Like he asked a question like, for example, when Jesus said, I'm going to your God and my God. That was one of my questions. Like, you know, why did Jesus say that? Yeah. So that would be a question for Christianity, not for him. Not yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Jesus well, I asked him a question because he was saying that Jesus was a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim, but there's no way to prove that really from the Bible. But the Muslims don't believe that so far. No, I, I agree. You can't prove that from the Bible. Who said that? It was me, Adam. Beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Sarah? You believe that Jesus is a Muslim? I mean, the term Muslim. 
didn't exist during the time of Jesus. The term Muslim didn't exist at the time of Jesus. That's correct. Sarah, are you a Muslim? Yes. Okay. Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, bro? You okay, huh? I'm good. Do you believe that Jesus is a Muslim? Mm, yeah, he was a Muslim. He says so in the Quran still. Okay, so this is this is the confusion that we have here, guys. So you have to respect we, my opinion, by the way, as well. So you what? know, like, you have to respect my opinion as well, you know. No, I don't. Hmm? No, I don't. It's mutual, you know what I'm saying? I I, 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 I don't have to respect your opinion. <laughs> I don't have to. Especially if if your opinion is is seeped in falsehood, I don't respect that kind of opinion. You know, you have the right to believe and have an opinion that you want. That doesn't mean I have to respect it, but I'll hear you out. You, you have a voice here. So there's a difference with that. Um, <clears throat> so for the people that be here that believe Jesus is a Muslim, this is this is what we're this is where we're at in this conversation. And I think I could we could wrap this up here and I'll switch gears with Sarah and Nori. Re here we have history being against this Muslim claim that Jesus was a Muslim. Obviously the term Muslim didn't exist with Jesus, um, nor did the word Islam. Yeah, by the way, you said that- Neither does this mean- there's, there's, You said there's proof of the crucifixion. Where can you source this proof as all? Well? That's that's a favorite subject, my friend. How is it academically- Ibrahim, you, you're cutting me yeah, off. Yeah, it's just not- you're off subject. Okay, no worries. I'll, I'll speak- okay, Focus, please. Now. Focus. Are you focused? Yeah, yeah, go on, bro. But let me speak as well. You have to let me speak, bro. Come on. You can man. speak next. It'll be on you if you want to engage. I'm getting thirsty. I'm cooking. That's why I'm heating up. That's why. Okay. So we have the problem here where 600 years after Jesus, all right, this Quran, the Muslims is making a claim from the Quran that this historical figure, Jesus, believed in the same God that we find in Islam, Right, had the same beliefs and, and views that we find in the Quran about God and submitted and believed in that same God that's described in the Quran. However, the problem is, is that when, when we actually check what Jesus believed and check what he taught, we find out that he is far from a Muslim. One of the most simple things being that he's the son of God. But yeah, again, I have to say this is a prerequisite to the claim. Do you get me? It's Ibrahim's turn. Okay, fine. I'll let him speak. Yeah, I don't mind if it's a group discussion. What was the what was that again? I thought you were talking to everybody. I was talking to everybody, but it was your turn to respond though. Wait, what was it again? Just simplify the question because it's doing something. At the same Basically, time. the Quran is wrong by saying Jesus is a Muslim because our historical reliable sources on Jesus's life says otherwise, that he taught and believed in something different than what Muslims teach and believe. Okay, so the difference is for me, bro. So you have to think about it like this. Your, your primary source, which you're quoting from, is the Bible, right? Of course, that's the earliest historical rela uh, reliability Lovely. And the first that we have on Jesus' gospel, life. The earliest gospel that we have of Mark is when? It's 40 years after Christ, right? No, actually, it's... Uh, the 30, P45. It, it, it would be like, at best, 20 years. 20 years after Jesus. Okay, so 20 years after. And what happened during the time in Jerusalem after Christ's death? What was happening? What about it? Uh, in Jerusalem, when Saul of Tardis, he was coming to kill all the Christians... And he killed all the Christians. You remember Stephen? He didn't, he didn't, kill, all of them. He didn't kill all of them. But he killed a lot of Christians and he put his... He, he arrested in. some, had some uh -huh. killed, but then changed and became a Christian himself. Because the thing is for me, bro, you're going off uh, the New Testament. That's 16 books written by Paul, who, first of all, we have to validate... I'm not talking about the books written by Paul. I'm talking about the yeah, books written the New by Testament the Apostle of from, Jesus. You're quoting from the Gospels. Yeah, Paul didn't write the Gospels. The f 16 books he wrote, though, in the New Testament, right? He wrote he wrote some he wrote some books in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The gospel the gospel accounts he did not write. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Your source of information is coming from the Bibles, which we will 
we don't necessarily believe has been preserved. So within I, that 20 years... But yeah, but it, it, whether you believe it's preserved or not, it doesn't change the fact that it's reliable historically on the life of Jesus. No, no, that, that's what I'm saying. You say reliable, but how? what do you define as reliable? Let's go by what you define as reliable. For example, what language did Jesus speak? Uh, Aramaic, right? I could be... I can't remember. Ar Aramaic. Some people say Hebrew, some people say Ar Hebrew. Aramaic, Hebrew. Okay. How do you know that? Uh, mass transmission, of course. How do we know the mass Roman transmission Empire? from how where? Do we, how do we know the Roman Empire? Is, Focus. How, I'm Focus. asking. Yeah, I'm genuinely saying. Focus. Sec, I'm, answering. I'm answering. Focus. Mass okay. transmission from where? From hundreds of thousands of people that's been saying over the same time. I'll from give you an where? example. I'll give you an example. From where? I'll give you an Previous example. Scriptures. I'll give you an example. How do we know the Roman Empire? Existed? Bro, uh, you're, you're 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 about thirty seconds away from also being removed because you're not able to engage. Okay. Where do you where? get the transmission that Jesus spoke Aramaic? We, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know how to answer that. Still, to be honest, you don't know. How do do this for me. Do me a favor. Go I don't know the computer. question. I don't, know, I don't understand the question. It's a fallacious. You, what do you mean you don't understand the question? Here, right, let me let me just ask it in a different way. Simplify it. Yes. Simplify Where do you it. get it from? Where does it come from? Okay. That Jesus spoke Aramaic. Okay. Where do we get? Where we do? Where do we get that from? Just going about the geographical location of the time. Beautiful. How do you know the geographical location of Jesus? How do you know he lived in a place where Aramaic and Hebrew were the primary languages? Okay, but how do you know your story? Answer right? the question. How do we know your story is right? Answer the question. I'm answering. I'm answering. That's my question. That's my answer. So it's a question. Okay. Take care, man. You wasted my time. Bro, I'm answering your question. All right. Huh. But, but God, yeah. you keep. Can you answer the question as to why you think it's reliable? That's the thing. Because like we've asked the question the whole because time, it hasn't been reliable. answered. I'll tell you huh? why. Everything that we know about Jesus comes from the New Testament. Everything, where he lived, where he preached, what he preached, the language he spoke, the name of his disciples, how he prayed, how he practiced his religion, all of it. Everything we know about Jesus comes from the New Testament. That's good. But did the disciples write it? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Uh, the, it doesn't matter. Have you read Bart Ehrman's? Let, let, let me show you something. Like, for example, the okay. Angel, the gospel, right? That was given to mm -hmm. Jesus. Who wrote yep. it? What do you mean? I don't know if it was written. It could have been oral, oral, it was oral written. tradition. Chapter 7, verse 157. It says they will find Muhammad written in the Torah and the gospel with them. Okay? The maktub doesn't mean, and hang on, it's Arabic language. Kitab means scripture. Scripture. Maktub scripture. means written. Yeah, yeah, maktub, but it comes from Kitana, which means it scripture. Says, it says that the Torah and the gospel were maktubin. No, 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 no. maktub, but there's two meanings. Kitab means scripture or literal writing. Bro, get out of here, Adam. Take care, man. You can't even be honest thank you. in this discussion. No, 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 I'm being honest, but thank you very much. Absolutely dishonest. Dude, like, what is up with you guys as Muslims, man? Why can't you be honest? Like, it's just, this is sad. Can somebody have an honest conversation? All right, so Sarah's here. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing fine, thank you. How about yourself? I'm stressed out. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, I from? joined like you know, n not from the like beginning, so mm. I, I missed a lot. Yeah, you missed a lot, man. We we three hours and thirty something minutes in. Yeah, are you like gonna wrap it up soon or? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Uh, you guys came, kind of came at a tail end. Even you and Nora, both of you guys came in three hours. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to show and improve these points. For I mean, I do understand, like, where you're coming from, your point. Um, I do agree, yes. Like, you know, Jesus' teachings and um, actions were more in line with, like, Jewish traditions and beliefs, which, mm -hmm. like, were obviously, you know, the dominant religious and, um, like, cultural framework in Israel during his lifetime, right? Yeah. Like, he even... Um, frequently quoted like from the hebrew scriptures and um like yeah. even engaged in debates with jewish leaders but you know we all know he never referred to himself as a muslim or even su suggested that he was following a religion right right yeah that's 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 my thing um is when we actually look at you know <laughs> what we know about jesus he was he was not a muslim you can't say that now like you just can't you can't say that. That would be ridiculous to say, you know. Um, 
which is the the thing that I'm bringing up. Like you know, you see this. Uh, it's 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 usually a dawah tactic. I see it a lot with you know with, when there's Muslims out giving dawah, they set up tents and stuff. Or on TikTok, there's a lot of lives Muslims who go live, and mm -hmm. they'll be saying that they're, they're, one of their tactics is Jesus was a Muslim. That's what they're saying. So this is why I'm really heavily attacking this this ideology here because it's just silly to me when you actually look at it. You know. But yeah, we don't. We don't. I mean, I don't even have to talk to you about it. You. I don't understand why everybody can't be like you guys. You and Nori, you guys get it. <laughs> but um, okay, so what, what was there something that maybe you guys wanted to talk about or ask? Um, um, I know Nori, you had a question, or Sarah, I knew you. you probably I had, had like a few questions. Um, so as I explained, I'm actually more of an agnostic than I am a Muslim because the more I actually learned about Islam, I kind of. It just does not make sense like at all it doesn't have any kind of historical anything like the to, to study it historically it's really kind of a nightmare mm -hmm. um i do come from a muslim background so i have to use a fake name because i'm a bit um scared to say like you know my name and everything like that okay. um so yeah but i have a few questions um regarding like the claims that the quran does make about um the bible like for example i mean i know that uh, i know the argument that christians make when quran says that um the bible was changed but it actually says that they changed it with their tongues so it doesn't actually say that it was really changed scripture early right um but I kind of like, I just want to ask about like, there's, I know that there's the a Catholic and Orthodox and Protestant denominations. And I know that some of those denominations took out some books and there are some like verses that were added in or taken out or something like that. I know a couple of them. Um, I know that there are some books that Protestants removed, so I just wanted to ask about that, and I have a few other questions. But after we are done with that part, okay. So let's okay, let's try to do one at a time. Um, just to let you guys know, because like I will be wrapping up soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but I do I go live all the time. Like I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday like this. So if you guys ever want to come where it's fresh, where I'm fresh. And, you know, not worn out by the others. We got full conversation. I would love to have you guys back for sure. Both of you and Sarah, you didn't get to speak. So I want to talk to both of you guys. OK. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. <clears throat> so but yeah. So to answer your, your questions, is it about the canon of scripture? Is that what your question is? Um, yeah. So like who because I know in the Bible, at, I think at the end, it says if someone removes or adds scripture, God will remove and add stuff. I guess from their lives. Then, yeah. So I know that um, Martin Luther, I guess his name is Martin Luther. He removed um, scripture, um, like books from the Old Testament. So I've been actually studying a lot of history because I was, um, I mean, I just started getting into the faith stuff like Muslim and Christianity and things like that. And um, Christianity, it, makes um more sense to me because it just has much more like evidence if like evidence as in like it's not it's historically accurate i know that um archaeologists use it for discoveries and these things but i just have a few questions about it okay yeah for sure <clears throat> um hold on Okay. Yeah. So specifically when it talks about it, so in Revelation, right? Do not add or take away from this book, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with these, we have to be pretty um, specific. So it's specifically talking about that book itself of Revelation, the book of Revelation, do not take or add anything from, from this book itself, right? And so that's with that. However, it's a principle that goes with all the scripture. Don't change or take away or add anything to 
God's scripture. It's, it's pretty consistent on that. And so um, <clears throat> when it talks about, when you're talking about canon versus what is like the scripture, this is the differences. The Apocrypha is more like, um, like it's, 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 it's what is like more historical, like it has a historical relevance to um, like what was going on in between the time of the like Malachi, the last test, the last book of the Old Testament, and then the New Testament. So in between that gap, you have the Apocrypha, these books that are talking about, right? And so it's not really considered scripture, but it's like good information. So in some canons, when you talk about canon, you're talking about what is the collection of books that were all in one collection. Doesn't necessarily mean that like these Apocrypha are scripture, even though they're used good for good information, it doesn't mean that they're inspired. You know, so that's mm -hmm. why, like, it doesn't matter if they're in or out of the canon, it doesn't, it's, it's not affecting God's scripture per se. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not affecting the scripture. Um, I, actually, one of my brothers here, Black Doctor, he's really good with this subject here. Black Doctor, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Good, good. So, so we're talking about, uh, she's asking about the canon, you know, mm -hmm. um, and she's aware that, you know, some books have been taken out. And she's like, you know, talking about how, you know, Revelation says, do not add or take away from, from God's book. So how can you explain and make that clear and let her know even how the, you know, whether Apocrypha is part of the canon or not, if that's, if that, does that change God's scripture? Can you break that right, down? Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. So I, I think the passage you're referring to is some of the last verses in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Where it says, thou shalt not add or take away. And if you actually read it, it says, to this book of prophecy. To this book of prophecy so it's specifically writing uh to the people of the time to say do not add or take away from the prophecy written in the book of revelation because this specifically is written to encourage the people of god in what they're going through because the book of revelation is i believe written before 70 a.d and it's telling the believers to hold on during persecution and that same message is throughout the rest of our time to, to hold on during persecution. So even if the world goes crazy, God's church still wins. So that's the specific meaning of the text. So, so what do we do with this apocrypha issue? Um, I was hearing a little bit earlier, earlier that you had heard the, the statement that Martin L Luther took out um, the apocrypha uh, from his canon. Um, unfortunately, that's not true. It's a, it's a myth that a lot of people keep throwing around, but historically that's not the case. Uh, when Martin Luther translated the Old and New Testaments into German, he kept the Apocrypha because he and the Lutherans after him believed the view of the ancient church, that the Apocrypha is good for uh, spiritual edification. It's good for learning. Uh, it's even read in the church. Uh, but it is not on the exact same level as what the early church would call the proto-canon, those that are, that are really inspired by God. And so mm. what Martin Luther did is he didn't take them out of the codex. He didn't take them out of his Bible. He just put them in the back. Oh. Right. And, and that's what the Protestants have done since the, since the Protestant Reformation. The only time that the Apocrypha has been taken out of Protestant Bibles has been in around the 1850s or so. And do you know the reason why that is? No. Easier printing. It's cheaper printing. Oh. So really the main reason why is just because well, it's sort of cheaper to print smaller Bibles. And so a lot of people, the Protestant churches still read from them. We have them as, uh, for example, I'm an Anglican. Uh, we read them in churches. Uh, we have them listed in our 39 articles, which is our confessional standards uh, for what the for the sufficiency of the word of God. And so the Apocrypha is not anything in relation to someone tampering with the canon. Both the uh, both the Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox and the Protestants all agree that when it comes to the Old and New Testaments, nothing can be changed nothing has been changed so yeah that's 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 what we all agree on and that's the truth so nothing's been added nothing's been taken away okay um so like so they still do read from the 
because I guess um, it says like I know that Orthodox have mm -hmm. how many books do they have? Like um, eighty nine. Well, the 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 what you would call books of the books of their canon is just what they include in one codex. And okay. so each of them have particular things that they would like to have read in churches that they put in one book just to make it easier for other people. Oh. Um, so for, Protestants so still read from those books that are oh, not yes. included? Okay. Yes, most definitely. So okay. like we read them, uh, the Orthodox, uh, you asked about them having... Um, uh, uh, sort of more books in their canon. And that's because they have the New Testament uh, Apocrypha, which is like additional books post the writing of the New Testament that are good for edification, like the writings of the church fathers, like Clement of Rome, uh, his first letter, the Shepherd of Hermas, the Epistle of Barnabas. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are things that are good for edification that are read in churches to help edify people of God. Um, but they're not inspired. Even okay. they would say that they're not inspired in the exact same way that the 66 books of the Old and New Testament are. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually, I mean, I'm not saying that I am going to become Christian, definitely, sure. but I'm like, I'm not saying that I will not. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually living in an Eastern country, so I'm like close to Eastern Orthodox. Eastern Orthodoxy. So I'm really interested in orthodoxy, and I guess I went and spoke to a um, a bishop, or they're called uh -huh. bishops, I guess. Yeah. Um, and he said, like, I asked him al also about um, the books, like, um, there's something like Gospel of Mary, Gospel of something, Gospel of something, and yeah, he the, said, uh... like, some of those, like, they're not, I guess he said that they're not included in the Bible because we're not really sure about them. Oh, like, we're, we're, I'll, 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 I'll point out there. We're, we're sure about them. And uh, <laughs> they aren't, they, they're not from the apostles. Uh, we know for a fact that they're not from the apostles. Um, they're written past the New Testament. The, uh, the New Testament was written in the first century. These Gnostic Gospels, uh, that's what they're called, they're Gnostic Gospels, uh, they were written in the second century after mm -hmm. their supposed writer was already, you know, dead and gone, oh. <laughs> dead, buried, got the t-shirt. <laughs> and um, they, they speak about really crazy doctrines that came out yeah. in the second century. Like, like for example, um, yeah. the Gospel like of Thomas and the Gospel of Mary don't believe that Jesus had mm -hmm. a physical body. Oh, yeah. And it, it's crazy because you know what the Gospel of Thomas says basically at the end? Mm. Jesus is talking to his disciples and one of the disciples turns to Mary and they ask, well, Mary Magdalene. And it says, you know, Jesus, if, if we're going to heaven, what are you going to do about Mary? Because women can't enter heaven. You know this already. <laughs> and, and and you know well, what Jesus true, says? Right. Right. It's not true. But you okay. know what this Gnostic Jesus says? Mm. He says, don't worry, I'll turn her into a man so she can enter heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that sounds something. like Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're exactly right. <laughs> so so this is this is the this is the stuff that we're talking about. This is the the craziness that people try to try to throw off uh, as a as a gospel. And they try to say, oh, this was written by the apostles. But everyone who actually read it, everyone in the church who read them said, Yo, this isn't what the apostles taught. This isn't what Jesus taught. Get this out of here. And so they were they were never a part of the New Testament canon. They were never a part of the Bible at all. These are pretenders trying to make their way into the faith of the believing people. Um, I would add, like Muhammad and like the Quran, when it tries to place itself in line with the Torah and the Injil that we have. Oh, like... Uh, what he said, I guess you got it wrong. He said that we're not sure about them, as in, like, we're not sure who wrote them or if they're even <coughs> historical. Right. So that's right. Why, we we yeah. don't we don't know who wrote them because, like, the people who they're attributed to, they they were already dead and gone. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, I I hope that I really do hope that helps. Yeah, and then I also have like another question about certain verses that um I might I mean, like they were in earlier like English Bibles. I'm not sure about the 
um, other languages, but English kind of has like, you know, Protestant and stuff. And everyone says like Protestants removed and added stuff. Like now you explain that to me. But um, there's, for example, there's this one called Johannes something. The comma Johannium. Yeah, yeah. First John five seven, yeah. yeah. Um, that is a uh, that's a gloss. Basically, what it means is that it was it's in some of our manuscripts and it's not in others, and that's just because it's spread out. the The text of the New Testament was spread out everywhere, and because of that, we just don't have all of the manuscripts that survive to our day. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not necessarily in some of the earliest manuscripts because those are not as intact as we would have. Um, and so they actually still come from, you know, stronger traditions, uh, stronger textual traditions that we can go into a lot of a lot of things like that. If you actually uh, follow my channel, um, I did a live stream uh, with Brother Chris Claus on can we trust the New Testament? And I go through this issue. Um, but just for a just for a small summary, um, the New Testament is one of the most tenacious books that we have. And even though we don't have uh, that particular manu that particular verse in uh, some of our older manuscripts that have holes in them, we see it all throughout the writings of the church fathers. The earliest church fathers, um, like St. Cyprian and Tertullian, mm -hmm. they quote it. Uh, and so it, it's, it was present in oh. the early church, those who had received the text and were reading First John quote and reference this text. So even if we don't have, you know, hand on paper evidence, we have the testimony early church of the early church fathers because so, they quoted it. So I guess there's evidence that it was there, but we don't really yes. have it. Okay. Yes. So and, and it's, it's pretty much the same with like a, a lot of the other, like the really big textual variants that we have in our, tra uh, in our textual tradition, like the longer ending of Mark and the story of the woman caught in adultery. It's found in the early church fathers and they attest and write and comment on it. Um, one of the things that I love is that when it comes to the early church fathers, we can take their quotes and basically recreate almost the entire New Testament. Because they, the Bible was their thing. They, they loved the Bible. They protected the Bible with their lives. They knew this thing. And they loved it. And mm -hmm. it's because of their love that we who are the descendants of them uh, can, can literally show to others, we know what our Bible says and we can prove it. Um, and I, I really do want to commend you on your, on your research on this because you're doing very, very great work. Continue that. Yeah. Continue that because I pr I promise you it's gonna lead you to Christ. It already seems to be leading you away from Muhammad. Let it lead you into the loving yeah, arms of she, our Savior. She left Islam. She she left Islam, and so now she's like, yeah. so thanks like, be to God. The thing is I didn't really like officially leave Islam because it's like, uh, you know, it's kind of like this being unsure, and sure. it's like a bit scary leaving a uh, religion because it seems to be so like serious to leave a religion because it's, you know, like a life and death kind of thing, you know. Yeah, so so the and thing is, the more I learned about Islam, like the more hadiths that I read and the Quran and everything, like. It just doesn't seem like something a loving God would say. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like, I'm not really jumping into conclusions, but I don't really like Muhammad, the way he lived. And, you know, when I so kind of like study the, the Gospels and um, the, the Bible and things like that. I haven't read the whole thing, but I've read enough to know that Jesus, you know, like he was a much better person than Muhammad. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of things in Islam that really like don't make sense to me. Like, you know, Muslims make Muhammad as if he was sinless. And we all know that he was a sinner. In the Quran, Allah forgives his sin because he thought that he was hearing the voice of Satan instead of Allah. Right. And it's... Like, I don't understand how a real prophet can, um, you know, not distinguish the difference between his God and Satan. Mm -hmm. it, none of it makes sense to me. And I'm now, like, learning a lot of history. Um, and, you know, 
I'm not really sure about the Bible because all of the, you know, um, I guess myths or things that people say about it, like it was changed or something like that. Um, but the more I learn about it, the other day I know that I read um, a passage, it's Psalm 22, and I yeah. compared it to Matthew, Matthew, like when he says, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Um, I read it and it's like, you know, Muslims say that, um, Muslims say that, you know, Bible was corrupted and everything. But if we're being honest, it's like we know the Psalms were written before Jesus was born. We have proof that it was written before Jesus was born, you know? Yep. Um, so when you read that, I don't understand, like, even if you believe, like, sure, we can say that, okay, the Bible was changed, but it, we still have proof that there's manuscripts of before Jesus was born. Yeah. So when I read it, and it's like, it's not even just the part where he says, Lord, Lord, but it's also when um, he says, um, they have casted lots um on my clothing and yeah, gamble thing. over my clothes yeah yeah and when i read it it's like this is too specific it's you can't fulfill it even if someone tried to fulfill right. all of this like it's not even only jesus fulfilling it it's people like who are not who, they don't know that they're fulfilling this prophecy yeah um so when i read this it's like you know there's no way you know and I guess Muslims, like, they are scared. I'm, I've been in that position. Like, Muslims are really scared and they are afraid of going against the word of Muhammad. Um, that's why they are so, like, I guess you call them dishonest, but that's why they're so, like, dishonest and they are trying their best to, like, twist things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hold on to it, huh? Yeah. So yeah. I'm always trying to be like, you know, soft with my Muslim friends who are like asking me, like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you living? But it's like, I can't really tell them, you know, like, we all know that Muhammad is a scam. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this, this is, you're in a, you're in a, a very special place, honestly. You're in a, you're in a special place. Um, because truly, I, you say that you haven't officially left Islam, I would, but you've left Islam in your heart and in your mind. Like yeah, you, basically, you've left Islam, but just you just do have that tie. I want to reassure you of something, Nori. Um, and as you see it, like like you see the revelation. You know, it's it's crazy. You come to this, and you've been coming to this on your own by just looking up stuff and stumbling on things all by yourself. Yeah, it's like I'm always searching for truth. Like I can't kind of like I have a problem with believing things like mm -hmm. just because, you know, right. like if it doesn't have evidence, like it's difficult for me to believe. Right. Right. And I'm more of an agnostic now. Um, but, you know, like when I read some of the things, like even with the Bible, like when I read like the virgin birth and things like that, like it's a bit difficult for me to believe these things. Mm -hmm. But it's more difficult for me to believe Islam because yeah. at least with the Bible, the history matches up mm -hmm. and there's historical evidence. Yeah. that So that's interesting. So you're... You say you're somewhat agnostic. At you so basically in a point where you're not exactly sure if God exists, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes I get this like thoughts that maybe He just doesn't exist at all. But sometimes it's like, you know, I think about this like religions, and it's like well, He has to exist because mm -hmm. you know, like the design of the universe, like it has to have a creator and things like that. But then I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, I have to figure out which who God it is. is exactly who He is, and so. I would say that that's probably where you're agnostic at. Like, you know that God exists. Um, it's just you don't know who God is specifically. And this is what you're on your journey on. You know, you see God's nature and his glory throughout creation. All of creation points to him. You know this. And like you're like, yeah, so there, there has to be a creator. But who is he? And you're on the right path. I, I would say 
that um and this is what i heard is it's called before it's called like the fingerprint of god like how you know that god is like actually spoke in history is through prophecy because yeah. no no one else can do that no other religion has that where you have god exp explaining or describing something a thousand years before it actually happens in detail though you know yeah that's what was really like surprising to me when my my friend actually she's an orthodox and she showed me this prophecy from psalm 22 and like she you know at first i read it and i was like what what is he talking about mm -hmm. and then she let me read um matthew and she pointed out all of the details like yeah. Um, like my heart is pouring, I'm pouring out water and yeah. my heart is like wax and these yeah. things and she explained them to me and I was like, there's no way. Yes. You know? it's, it's like, and the, when I look at the Quran, like it's nothing like that. Like there's, right. there's, it's, it's impossible in the Quran to say right. that something with that much detail. Right. Um, even the places where the Quran has prophecies like Euphrates River and everything, that was in the Bible mm -hmm. at first. Exactly. So yeah. It's like <laughs> when I read this, both things, it's like it just doesn't add up. And it's like I understand that Muslims are really scared and they just they're just really scared of, you know, leaving Islam or going against what Muhammad said. But yeah. it's, you know, for their own sake, because I feel like it's mental torture being a Muslim. Yeah, it's 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 mental torture being a Muslim. You have to suppress this truth. You have to uh, go against what is like common sense, right? And then right in front of you, you have to basically duck your head under and ignore, 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 suppress, suppress, suppress. And uh, I don't, you know, if I, if that was me, I, I couldn't imagine being in a position like that. I'd probably I'd burst. I would if I was presented with this type of stuff. And I, that's how I have to react to it in order to hold on to my position. I just couldn't do it. That, that, that's the freedom in not, not just leaving Islam or any other cult, but it's the freedom in Christ because Christ, mm -hmm. he gives you this confidence that you're in the truth. He gives you historical accuracy. He mm -hmm. gives you um, theological accuracy, like just stuff that makes sense when it comes to God and his salvation and things of this nature. And then he makes, he tops it off with prophecy. And he, he even, he even challenges the idols that, you know, even some of the Israelites may have gone to and worshiped and stuff. He said, he said, have your idols tell the end from the beginning. Like I do. That's one of his challenges, mm -hmm. you know, proving that he's the true God. So I'm like, man, with me, when I see this, have you ever read, for example, have you ever read Isaiah 53 yet? Uh, no. Can you read it or should I read it? Oh, yeah, we could. Yeah, it's only 12 verses. But yeah, I mean, if you like, if you like Psalm 22, wa watch, watch, watch Isaiah 53. Oh, man, you, you ain't seen this yet. I'm going to search it up now, and I'm I will read it. Do I read the which translation? KJV. Uh, yeah, you can read as whatever. Because my English isn't really that good, so yes, yeah, so I, I think the King James version would be a little bit difficult. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to do. It. You can read like uh, you do ESV or something. Uh, I will do the N NKJV. That that might help. That, that if whatever whatever helps your you know you can understand. Use that one, okay? Uh, okay. But yeah, so Isaiah fifty three, sister, it's it's incredible. Matter of fact, let me um, you mind if I put it on right now? Um, I have it on my phone, but you can oh, you do it. it. Yeah. Okay, for sure. So I'll put it on the screen so everybody can see it. Oh, that's not Isaiah. That's the Quran. All right, this is Isaiah 53. Hold on, let me remove this. Thank you, Flipping Fruit, for the super chat. Jesus is king. Thank you for bringing these wonderful lives, uh, the truth. Uh, blessings. Thank you so much, Flipping Flippin Fruit. I appreciate you. All right, guys, we're about to go through one of my favorite chapters of all the Bible. Okay? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, verse starting in verse 1, it says, Who has believed what he has heard from us? Mm -hmm. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. 
He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should des uh, desire him. He was despised and rejected by men and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. We didn't think highly of him. Mm -hmm. Verse four, here it goes. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But who, he was, is, who is talking like this is, I guess, a messianic prophecy, but who absolutely. is like talking? So this is prophet Isaiah who's speaking. Okay. Yeah, prophet Isaiah who's speaking and he's speaking about the Messiah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So he says, verse five, uh, what, in verse five, what is your say? Are you looking at it on your phone or? Uh, I'm, I'm looking from the screen. From the screen. Okay, cool. So it says, verse five, but he was pierced for our transgressions. <sighs> He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. Chastisement means punishment. So upon him was the punishment that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Mm -hmm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the sins of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living? He, he was killed, All right? But why? <clears throat> Was it for him? No. It continues, stricken for the transgression of my people. Not because of his own transgression, but for the transgression of the people. Wow. Right? <clears throat> Let's keep going. We're almost done. Only about four more verses left. Mm -hmm. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in him. Now, this part is 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 crazy. You want to know why? Because, why? okay, when Jesus is on the, the crucifixion, mm -hmm. do you remember who he's, who, like, because he's in the middle and there's two others on the other side of him. Do you know? Yeah. They were thieves, right? Yeah. So they tried to make his grave with the wicked, with wicked men who were thieves. They killed him oh. with the wicked. But it says here, and with a rich man in his death, do you know who it was that actually brought the body of Jesus down and had him buried? No. His name is Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man who owned his own garden and had Jesus brought down from the cross and buried in his garden. So they tried to make his grave with the wicked, but he was actually buried with, in, with the rich man. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just, uh, if I could get that really quick. Hold on. What's that verse, guys? Hold on. Let me see. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Let's pull this up real quick. Joseph... Of Arimathea. Here he goes. Here he is. Let's see here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. So Joseph was a, okay. Here it is. Matthew 27. Oh, yeah. Back to Matthew 27. Let's just get that real quick. Let's put that up real quick. Matthew 27, 57. Something like that. Let's go. To do this. I can I can keep Isaiah 53 on my screen if you want. Oh, perfect. I can do that too. 27. Um, let's do it like that. All right. So that's perfect. So Isaiah is still there. Now watch this as we go to Matthew 27. Oh, okay. And then let's go down to the crucifixion. Jesus is mocked, the crucifixion, so on and so forth. The, death. the part where Jesus was mocked as well in Psalm 22. When oh, Almost verbatim, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really, it's actually insane. Yeah. There's even in like from an atheistic view, like there's really no way. Yeah, Ab absolutely. It, it's, it, you, you have no explanation of this. Now, yeah. now, now watch this when it comes to Jesus's burial. Yeah. Okay. So verse 57, it says, 
when it was evening, there came a rich man from Ar Ar Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then, the, then Pilate <clears throat> ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new womb, uh, tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and, and, and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the, of the tomb. So Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy man, a rich man, is the one who had Jesus buried in his, in his uh, garden. In his own mm -hmm. tomb. Going back to Isaiah 53, it says that Jesus, they tried to make his grave with the wicked, but it was with the rich man in his death. Wow. Yeah. It's that it's that specific, <laughs> though, is what's killing me. Now, Isaiah was written, it's, this is 700 years before Jesus. Psalm 22, that's 1,000 years. Wow. Isaiah is 700 years before Jesus, which is, uh, it's astounding. Okay. So let's keep going. <clears throat> so it even talks about even how he'll be buried. He dies, right? And how he's buried, he's with the rich man in his death, although he done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Now watch this. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. It was the plan the whole time. This was the plan. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt. Wow. <laughs> yeah. His soul makes an offering for guilt. So this was God's plan the entire time. And he says, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The, the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now, what does this mean here? Because offspring, Jesus didn't have kids. So what does it mean that he will see offspring or seed? It's figurative here. Because the word seed or offspring can also mean so those who follow you. Followers, that's yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly, and, and if you go to John chapter 13, he literally calls his disciples his children. You know, he calls them his children. Yeah, I guess it's the same when, um, if I'm not mistaken, when God said it to Abraham, he's, he will give him as many children exactly. as there's in the sky. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so by virtue of faith, the Bible says that we are also children of Abraham. Right. Yeah. Because we follow his faith. We follow that way. So, yeah, absolutely. You got it. You. <laughs> this is crazy, Nori. Yeah. I think you're ready to take over the channel now and start teaching almost. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but now, see, watch this. So uh, he shall see his offspring and he shall he shall prolong his days. Wait a second. I thought he was dead. Tell me this, Nori. How in the world will he see those who followed him? And his days be prolonged if he died. Resurrection. Be resur if he's back alive again. Yeah. So we have the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. Wow. That's really <laughs> crazy. It's wild. Okay. Verse 11. Out of, out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we're righteous by our own self because we couldn't do it, but it's by his righteousness that we are also made righteous. That's the plan wow. of God, right? And it says, and he shall bear their iniquities. Wow. Right? <laughs> Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the, with, the, with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. So now he's the one. It's through him that we are made righteous and it's through him that we are made right with God. Because mm -hmm. we are not righteous ourselves, we're impure. But because he's holy and he's just and he's righteous, his pure his purity is now given to us, and we can wow. be made right with God. Yeah, I can't I can't say anything to that to debunk it. <laughs> like that's that's way too specific. And... <laughs> right. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something about me. I struggle 
sometimes to say which one I, like I put over either Psalm 22 or this one because Psalm 22 it got man they pierced my hands and my feet that's crazy I, like they it literally has them saying the other prayers. ones as well where they're like making fun of them saying let God save him if right it him got him the much. mockery in Psalm yeah. 22 it got and the, the garment of his clothes right yeah. <laughs> it's Psalm 22 is a beast and so is Isaiah 53 so I I kind of fluctuate which one is like is tougher you know but. Man, you put these together, Nori, it's without a doubt. It's without a doubt. One, God exists because he told us and foretold that this will happen, not in some vague, you know, yeah, uh, he, he, he way. you know what I'm saying? He was yeah. clear about what was going to happen. Clear. Dare, and, and dared us to prove him wrong. <laughs> But I just have like one question. This is really like actually mind blowing. But I just want to know like how do because this is from Jew, Jewish scriptures, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What do they say about this? Like how do they explain it? Oh yeah. So so number one, you have a mixture of of Judaism. They're not all a monolith. Yeah, yeah. Right. So 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 let's say let's talk about the ones who are obviously against the rabbinic Jews. Yeah, say, I know that today's Jews are like rabbinic Jews, and they weren't the same as ancient. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah. uh, so, but even them, even the rabbinic Jews are kind of split on this because most of them, obviously, they they acknowledge that this is messianic, but it's just not about Jesus. They rejected that is that it's Jesus, but they do <laughs> accept that this is messianic, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and and a lot of times, a lot of places, they forbid this from being read in the synagogue, which is actually crazy. They do not read Isaiah 53 in the synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do it. Um, so that's that's one. Two, they try to say, uh, there's an argument that this isn't about the Messiah, but it's about Israel. Because Israel is also called, or you know, through some of these Isaiah passages as this as the servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So since this is talking about the servant of the Lord here, they'll try to say that, oh, this is just talking about the nation of Israel. However, this is silly because Isaiah is the one speaking. He's part of the nation of Israel. And he says that this person is being punished for his people. His people is Israel. So there can't be Israel that's taking the sins of Israel and cleansing them and mm. being sacrificed for Israel. Because Israel is the one who needs the saving. Oh. You know, so not even that works. So interesting yeah. does does anywhere in the old testament does it say that the messiah would be god himself yes yes so you have yeah i'm a, you're gonna learn this a lot isaiah is, a, is an amazing messianic prophetic book it's amazing but there's a few so I, <laughs> isaiah talking about this messiah chapter nine chapter nine hold on let's get there what's wrong with me I guess I'm too excited. So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. That's what it talks about. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And what do they say about this one? <laughs> because it's pretty weird. <laughs> okay, yeah. So again, so you'll have the view that, yes, this is messianic. However, uh, the understanding is that it not, he's, not, he's not necessarily the mighty God, but it's the mighty God who is basically like establishing him, you know? So they, they completely, you know, twist the verse and try to give some explanation. That is, he's not the mighty God, but it's the mighty God is the one establishing him in, in his government and stuff. But that doesn't make any sense. That's, it doesn't at all. But that's, that's what they do. Um, so so that's that's one view. Another view is that... I know the Emmanuel one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got the Emmanuel one. God with us, right? That's Isaiah 7. So another view of this is that, that this isn't talking about the Messiah, but it's talking about King Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. King Hezekiah was a, a good ruler and, um, and stuff like that. God really loved him. And so it's talking about King Hezekiah, but also because 
of the word given here. Um, and uh, it's like in the past tense. So to us, a son is given. So this would mean it's a, it's the past tense. The, the son was given already. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll try to say that. However, this is this is the problem here. This is what is called the prophetic perfect. It's when prophecy is being like told as if it already happened. Just like as we saw in Isaiah 53, yeah. you know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So we saw the same thing in Isaiah 53. Like he was bruised. He was already beaten. He was pierced. All of this stuff in like past tense, but it's talking about the future clearly. Um, mm -hmm. So it's called the prophetic perfect. Now, also with the context here, it talks about what his name shall be called and what he will do. Like, for example, if we go to verse seven, clear as day, they, they, they can't say this is about anybody else. Verse seven, it continues talking about this son of the increase of his government and of peace. There will be no end. This is future. This is end times. Right. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah, he died. He's long gone. <laughs> so this isn't about Hezekiah on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hmm. So this son to be born, who's identified as the mighty God and father of eternity, he is the one who's going to rule on the throne of David forever. His kingdom will have no end. Won't end. Hmm. You want to know where this is repeated? It's actually repeated a lot. If we go where? to the book of Luke, let's go to Luke really quick. Chapter one. Luke chapter one brings this up. You know, I'll, I'll keep this here. Isaiah, Isaiah six and seven. We really over over here having a Bible study. I isn't it nine six? Yeah. Yeah nine yeah sorry yeah. And we'll do seven right, and then we'll do Luke one. Let's do uh. Let's do 31 to like 33 or something. Let's we'll do 34. All right. So keep this in mind. His, <laughs> he, he's going to rule on the throne of David, and there will be no end to his kingdom. So he's going to rule forever on the throne of David. Is this the part where it says that he has to be from the lineage of David? Oh, yes, absolutely. The Messiah has to be from the lineage of David. Yep. <clears throat> now... Now, here we go. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 and 34. Here it is. And behold, so this is the angel talking to, Gabe, uh, to Mary. Mm -hmm. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. <laughs> Literally quote in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Right? <laughs> so, to, so if anyone tries to argue this, man, this, this is the, the prophecy I'm telling you, Nori, is God's fingerprint that he truly spoke in history. So oh. this is the real angel Gabriel, right? Is, oh, yeah, yeah. This ain't this ain't Jabril over there that's, that's choking folk. Uh, you know, or pressing on people in caves. No, this is the real Gabriel who brings pre peace and, uh, and serenity to people who he visits. Not yeah, I, I have like one question. Uh, with the Emmanuel one, I actually forgot, but I wanted to ask, why did they name him um, Jesus, but not Emmanuel? So Emmanuel is the description that God is with us, right? So yeah. like even with these, like these names in Isaiah 9, 6, like these, you know, it, these are translated. So really in the Hebrew, like this right here is El Gibor. You know, his name shall be called El Gibor or Father Eternity is Abiyad, you know. Or, uh, okay. you know. So these are these are descriptions applied to the person. So Emmanuel, meaning God with us, that's a that's who he is. That's the description of the person, you know. So okay, it, it, yeah, it's telling us the identity of him. So what does uh, uh, Yeshua mean? Yeshua means Yahweh is salvation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. It, 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 it just keeps getting better and better, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so you have the name of Jesus pointing to his purpose. You have all, all these prophets 
and scriptures <clears throat> that talk about the same thing, hundreds of years apart, a thousand years apart. Now, I'm going to show you one more. Let me show you one more. It talks about not only the Messiah being God, but also him being pierced. Here's one more. Let's go to, um, let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Watch what this says here now. Here it is. Now, this is God speaking, so pay attention, okay? <clears throat> okay. So God says this. He says, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, way, who who is speaking here? This, this is so. This is God speaking. Yeah, yeah, but like the uh, oh, the prophet uh, Zechariah. Yeah. This is prophet okay. Zechariah. So God is speaking through prophet Zechariah, and God is saying they're going to look at me on who on the him whom they pierced. It was me they pierced, right? And, and they, we have proof of this being written before Jesus, right? Oh, yes. Look, yeah. The Dead Sea Scrolls has all of this. The Dead Sea Scrolls has the, the scrolls of Isaiah, has the scrolls of Psalm, has the scrolls of Prophet Zechariah. They got all of this stuff. These are like, two, uh, two, you know, 200 years before Jesus is even born. The Dead Sea Scrolls date. This is further than that, but, you know, just being generous to the, to the dating of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These are 200 years, at least. So at bare minimum, we have 200 years before Jesus is born. This is spoken. That, that's okay. That's certainly crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, so it says here that they look, when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. This is serious. When they see Jesus that day, when they see God, see, he's saying, God is going to come. He's coming back. He's going to show up. And they're going to be like, yo, hold on. That's who we crucified. That's who we crucified. On the that day, day that they crucify him or the uh, or when Jesus comes back the second when, time. When Jesus comes back. So when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise the dead. Everybody's going to see him. He's going to raise everybody, even those in the past. Those oh. in the past, both the, the evil of the past and the good get raised, get raised back to life. Now, the good people who believe, the believers, will get raised to eternal life, while the disbelievers will get raised to eternal damnation, okay, to, to, to eternal judgment. So and this is this is the account of this, where they will see they will see him, they'll recognize him, and they're gonna mourn and cry, uh, it, it, especially the ones who um, let's say the ones who like live even after the ones who reject Jesus now, they're gonna see him, they're gonna know that he's God, they're gonna know he's Lord, and they're gonna be sorry. Yeah. They're gonna be sorry. They're gonna cry and weep, but. Yeah, so this is like really, really different from what I have learned, like with the with the Quran and everything, because the Quran, you know, th there's like I can see a really big difference between the like how Allah speaks in the Quran and the God of the Bible, how he speaks. Yeah, um, it's like, you know, in the Quran, it's only, you know, what I never really understood. It's like. Allah says about himself, praise be to Allah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I never really understood why Allah <laughs> said that about himself. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, it's like he's really praising himself all the time. And he's always talking about how the disbelievers will burn in hell and these kind of things. But it feels like the God of the Bible gives actual concrete evidence and proof. Absolutely. <clears throat> and it's much more believable. Um, obviously, it's a little bit difficult for me. I mean, now it's kind of like, you know, it's wow. But it's still a little bit difficult for me to actually believe. You know, I have this kind of like problem where I want to believe, but I can't because it seems like kind of like a fairy tale to me, you know. Hmm. Um, yeah. Not only the Bible and everything, but... 
like just everything like the miracles and everything it just seems like impossible like i can't see it you know mm -hmm. so it's like i want to believe but it feels like i can't yeah and and i i hear what you're saying this is what i i would say to that um is <clears throat> this is a different type of concept of faith that we're talking about when a lot of people when they talk about oh well, this is where faith comes in you know and, da, 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 mm -hmm. and it comes with this connotation that you know, faith is blind, that you just... Yeah, you have, I you don't have, really believe yeah. that. I've heard a lot of people say that, but, you know, um, Muslims say it way more. Mm -hmm. What I've heard it, it's like they don't really have actual concrete proof. Exactly. And yeah. when I ask them, it's like they get angry and they start twisting things. And this is why I was, like, pushed away from Islam because yeah. it's... You know, like they don't give me evidence, yeah. but Christianity, I mean, it has way more evidence and than the Quran. Yeah, absolutely. And now, and so now this is what, this is what I wanted to show you how the Bible describes what faith is, sister. Just really quick to show you this. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the book of Hebrews, it's chapter 11. It says, now faith is the reality or substance of what is hoped for the proof of what is not seen. So the Bible talks describes faith as having a substance of evidence and proof behind it. So it's it's choosing to believe the proof and evidences that's given to you. That's it's putting your trust in the evidence. That's what mm -hmm. the Bible describes faith is. Mm -hmm. And so what I would encourage you to do is to have the strength to put your faith in, in the evidence that you have. You mm -hmm. have the evidence, right? It's, it's, I mean, I can hear it in your voice. Stuff is clear to yeah. you, right? And so all you have to do is just choose to believe it, is choose, make that decision and take that leap to trust the evidence, not blind. It's not blind. It's not empty. You're not, you know, you have a, you have substance to stand on in Christ. Yeah, definitely more than you know? And so it's just about choosing to believe it. It's just cho make, choosing to trust him. That's what faith is in the Bible. It's choosing to trust the evidence yeah. you know, of what is not seen. Even though you haven't seen the miracles, you haven't seen particularly, you know, Jesus die yourself. You haven't seen him, you know, um, but trusting in what uh, in the proof of what that's there, even though you haven't seen it. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is also another uh <laughs> Another place here. Watch this. You don't want to be, don't be like Thomas here. Look, it says here. Um, so, so let's see here. Okay, here it is. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. Maybe you heard this story, but it says, mm -hmm. you know, so Jesus appeared to them, right? And then they told everybody, they told, but Thomas was missing. He, he appeared to the disciples, but Thomas was missing. He wasn't there. So he didn't get to experience Jesus yet. He didn't see him. So, it says, but one of the 12, <clears throat> starting here, one of the 12, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his nails, I will never believe. I won't do it. Not only do I got to see him, I got to put my fingers into his hand, into the holes, into the wounds. I got to feel it and see the wounds, you know, see it and touch it, taste it, basically. Right. Verse 26. After eight days, his disciples were indoors again and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and observe my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Do, don't be an unbeliever, but a believer. Mm -hmm. Thomas responded to him and said, my Lord and my God. And in, in Greek, it is the Lord of me and the God of me. He said that Jesus is his Lord and his God. That's his response. But Jesus says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those yeah. who believe without seeing are blessed. So don't be like Thomas, Nori. <laughs> don't be like Thomas. See, <laughs> be, be a believer even without seeing it, but trust the evidence that you have seen. 
I yeah. mean, the, the thing is, like, Thomas literally lived with him and he knew Jesus, so he didn't really have a reason to say that. <laughs> but I don't, like, you know, it's a bit more difficult for me because I haven't really lived with Jesus Christ. Well, I, that, that's, but it's, notice how the same principle is the same. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he's he. They're telling him. I understand yo, the point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, he didn't believe Jesus rose. He didn't believe. Yeah. It. He didn't believe it. He had to see it to believe it. I just have um, three more questions. I don't want to ask too many because I know that you're wrapping up soon. So That's if it's okay, they're they're just like really simple questions, and then sure. I'll I'll go. So the first one is how how does the Bible like talk about women? Because one of the reasons that I kind of really started doubting Islam is the way that Muhammad started uh, treating women. He raped a Jewish slave girl. He um, just terrible things. So I just, yeah, that's my first question. Yeah. So here's um, one thing. Um, <clears throat> well, let's talk about one, how the Bible says how you're supposed to treat your wives. The Bible is really clear on how you are supposed to treat your wives. In fact, it even says that if a man is mistreating his wife, his prayers won't even be answered. God won't. Even, God will ignore him if he's mistreating his wife. Let's go here. Let's go to uh, Galatians. Let's go to chapter three, verse twenty-five to twenty-eight. And there's also verses in Ephesians. So yeah, let's get these verses out. Let's get these verses out. And guys, if you guys remember these other verses, go ahead and pitch them to me, especially in the chat. My my friends, Scott and everybody, go ahead and pitch these verses to me. So we go to chapter three of Galatians. And let's go ahead and put this up here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Verse 23. Okay. Hold on. Part of five is 27, I think. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong verse, uh, Scott. Hold on. Here it is. Colossians. My be Colossians chapter three. Colossians 3, let's see here, let's get, let's try to get all these verses up here, 19, let's get uh, Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 25, let's get something else too. Oh yeah, in Galatians three twenty five, uh, Galatians three twenty eight. Okay, that's what it was. Got it. Okay. And First Peter, one three. Three seven. All right. So let's look at these verses here. So we got. First, Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Let's see if it says even a little bit more than that. Love your, love your wives. Oh, these are just uh, simple, simple rules. Okay, I see what it's saying. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be bitter towards them. So if they, even if you fear disobedience, don't beat them, as we see in some scriptures say, like Quran, for example. We got, <laughs> uh, we got Ephesians chapter five, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So the way that Christ loves believers and gave I his life, you. yeah. Husbands are supposed to treat your wives the same way, how Christ our Lord treats us. Yeah, like a sacrificial kind of love. Yeah. Yep, exactly. 
This is uh, this is like even just this verse. I know that you have like a couple other verses, but even just this, it's like so refreshing to me. Yeah, it's you know. <laughs> yep. This is uh yeah. So this out. This is how it is, man. The Bible tells us that we are to as husbands as men treat our wives as Christ treats the believers. Man, that's that is deep. He gave his life. He died. He bled for us. Now watch this. Galatians chapter three verse twenty eight. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. There is no difference. There is no hierarchy of male and female in Christ when it comes to salvation, right? As opposed to the certain hadith that Muhammad talks about, where he says that the majority of hell is occupied by women. The one that I really didn't like is when he um, kind of insinuated that women are like donkeys and dogs. They're like donkeys, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So according to Christ, and this is the Apostle Paul writing this, the one who they hate, he's teaching that male and female are one in Christ Jesus. He sees them no different. Sees them the same. <laughs> this is this is really like not overwhelming but really refre refreshing like it's like it's kind of uh, like it's making me realize really how kind of like messed up the hadith and muhammad is like yeah. i don't understand how after like reading this things like i really don't understand like i can't just process in my head how muslims can say that we have to follow muhammad instead of mm -hmm. jesus and what he taught like it's i don't know mm -hmm. so let's yeah it's it's uh it's night and day there's nothing that it compares to the teachings of the holy spirit it's refreshing as you're saying it's relieving you know it's there's nothing like it man nothing compares to to god man First uh, Peter chapter three verse seven. So this is the apostle Peter writing this. He says, "Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives with an understanding of their weaker nature, yet showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered." So what does this mean by weaker weaker nature? Like obviously, they're you know men are physically stronger than women. So you're supposed to live with them with this understanding that you have, you're physically stronger than them. So you're supposed to take mm -hmm. care of them in that way. You're supposed to understand this and walk in that understanding. And then so even though they're weaker physically, you show them the same honor as co-heirs. You're both heirs in the grace of life. You're both equal. Yeah. When it comes to salvation and the grace that God gives us, you're both the same. No one's higher than the other. No one's weaker or stronger than the other. You are co-heirs. You receive the same honor. And if you treat them otherwise, your prayers will be hindered. Hmm. That's deep. Wow, that's, that's how serious yeah. God takes this. That's really crazy. Yeah. It's but, like, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. not crazy because that's how women should be treated, but you know. No, yeah, I mean it's, it's common sense. <laughs> this, this, this is how you would expect God to, you know, to 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 treat and show women, show show the treatment of women. You know, a lot of people bring up something from Corinthians when Paul says, "I don't allow women to speak in church." No, so uh, uh, to to teach in church, not not just speak, but to teach to, oh. to teach. So. He's, he's talking. He's going in the uh, the role of you know the role of leadership in 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 church setting, in a service setting. There's a there's an order of how things are to be, you know, to be had. But, but I also know that women can be a de de deaconess. Uh, I, I hold on. Let me see if that's. Let me see that. I don't know exactly what a deaconess is, but I know. Yes. A servant basically servant in the in the church and the services um i'm not sure about deaconess i don't think i've seen deaconess before in the bible i think only men can be deacons hold on uh deaconess
No social. Nope. Hold on. Yeah, only only men could be deacons. I commend you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only only men could be deacons in the church. So, in the church service, it's it's men who who teach, right? In the church services, it's the men who teach. It doesn't mean that outside women can't teach because you even have in the Bible, it talks about how women, there were women actually who accompanied even Paul, for example, yeah. in, in spreading the gospel and stuff like that. And they were teaching and stuff. So many, many saints spread the gospel historically were women. Yep, exactly. So uh, this is just talking about the order of a church or the mm -hmm. order of the church. That's all. Okay. And just like a simple question, if there's so many like messianic prophecies in the Hebrew Bible, why don't the Jews accept Jesus as the Messiah? Uh, yeah, uh, because God told us that they wouldn't. Oh. God, God told us, right? We, we read Isaiah 53, it says that they just des they despised him and rejected him. So what I like, there is this one explanation that they were waiting for a political messiah, like he would free Israel from something yeah, political. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you have this this view, right? Um, like if we went back to, for example, if we went back to Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, how it talks about how he will rule right on the throne of David and and stuff like that. And how, you know, even Zechariah 12, 10, he's going to come and, and judgment and defeat all the enemies and bring everybody into sub subjection, right, uh, mm -hmm. of disbelievers. So they take those verses right there and say, oh, so Jesus didn't come like this. So therefore, he's he's not the Messiah. However, they're neglect ne neglecting the servant role of the Messiah in his coming, how he comes, uh, you know, as a servant and a humble servant and a suffering servant and then comes as the ruling king and judge. Hmm. You know? So that's they they try they neglect the verses about him coming humbly um, instead of and and focus on the parts where he comes, you know, ruling and mighty yeah. mightily. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, another thing, like this, is kind of directed towards <clears throat> Muslims. They say that Jesus never claimed to be God, but. I mean, I don't know like where exactly he said that, but I know that there's this one verse where it's really clear where what who he is mm -hmm. when he says, many will come to me in that day and tell me, Lord, Lord. Mm. So it's like he's calling himself Lord. I don't think a prophet can be really called Lord in that. No, manner. not in that. Not in the manner that uh, not in the manner that you are. Thank you, Greens. On that day, in the day of judgment. Yeah, the day of judgment. Yeah. You only have one Lord of the day of judgment, and that's God alone, right? Yeah. But so Jesus that, says that he's that Lord in the day of judgment. Yeah. So when he says they will call me Lord, Lord, and then I will decide that they will go to hell, yep. then, yeah, that's very clearly he's saying he's God. Yeah. So I don't really understand why Muslims bring up that argument. It's because, sis, <laughs> they yeah. have to. They, they got to... You know, it, it's it, they to to uplift, and this is what I see a lot with when it comes to Muslims. To uplift Muhammad, they have to demean Jesus. Mm. You know, they have to limit Jesus. Like, oh, Jesus was not for all mankind; he was only for Israel. While wow, Muhammad is for all mankind. You know, they gotta they gotta demean Jesus in order to uplift Muhammad. Yeah, this will never make sense to me, even if, like, no matter how many Muslims tell me, like, you know, Muhammad is the best ever in creation, like, it, it will never, ever make sense to me in, oh, in my yeah. life. Oh, yeah. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. That's impossible. Um, And then just last two, they're not really questions. I'm just asking for, like, a little bit of help with something. I really want to study the the bible so i just like wanted to ask if there's any like channels that really go into depth yeah sorry absolutely so you have you have a shimonian sam shimon have you heard of him no nope well, he's the one who taught me most of what i know and so he he's always going live like this he goes live just like me but you know where I'm more engaging with Muslims like this, he does a lot of sessions where he's going through the Bible and teaching concepts and teaching the Bible. 
you know? And so he has a lot of sessions where he's going in the Bible. So Shimonian, uh, let me put it in the chat for you so you can see it. This is mm -hmm. how it's um, does he does he like go from like gospel by gospel and like just read like the whole gospel and explain exactly like what well, he, he, he does more so topical so, oh yeah, he'll, yeah he'll be... that's kind of like a bit more difficult for me i was looking for someone who's like reading the gospel and like explaining break, breaking it down yeah. like that yeah mm. I don't, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know any channels that that are doing that specifically. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know any channels that's doing that specifically. That's going. That's going. You know, uh, book by book, chapter by chapter, and doing breakdowns. Yeah. You, but but you would be able to find. I mean, I it wouldn't be probably live, but you'll be able to find like online like Bible studies that have done that. If you, oh. if, you, if you go online and just try to look up, um, you know, basically, uh, uh, what would I? What a lot would I of people in the comments are saying the Bible project. Bible project. I mean, yeah, I mean, Bible project is good at that, but I, I don't. Are they doing? They probably have old sessions of them doing that. They probably have a good old session of them doing that. They they break down a lot of concepts and stuff like that, even though they do topics too. Gosh, he's asking for someone that that goes book by book and goes breaking it down, chapter by chapter. Does Bible Project do that? I haven't I don't think I've seen them do that exactly. But but yeah, so look, so these are some good channels. Um Bible Project, that's a really good channel, especially for beginners. Okay. okay. They 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 break down Christian concepts and biblical concepts and you know New Testament. They do really good with that. Okay, so Bible Project. Um, they're suggesting Mike Winger, who's also he's really good as well. He loves to do, he loves to do studies like that too. Okay, so I'm Mike, writing them down. Okay, good. So Bible Project, Mike Winger. Mm -hmm. Um. Those are good channels like that. But if you if you just want like good channels in general that I would suggest to you that will help with like biblical knowledge. Yeah. Put on their radar apologetics. Uh radar apologetics. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like you know how you described like from like uh, Matthew and Luke, like when you read the verses when you tied it back to the old testament? Yes. Like something like that. Yeah. So radar apologetics. He's okay. he does that all, all the time. Okay. And Shimonian Sam Shimon. Shimon. Shamo How? Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like Sham. So S H A M. Okay. O U N. E. Okay. I A N. Okay. Oh, I think I know him. He's the bald guy, right? Yeah, he's he's the bald the bald dude, the baldest. I'm dude. I'm a bit scared of him. <laughs> no, just he would he, love you. <laughs> no, he swears a lot. And he he cusses out people so much for just asking <laughs> questions. I'm scared of him. <laughs> you hear that, Sam? You hear that? <laughs> so listen to this. We got a sister who would come to you. But you, you're brash, man. You're brash. <laughs> but no, nah, seriously, especially you should, you should see him how he deals with like females. He's he's super soft with females. I I saw a video of him talking to a female a girl who was in a relationship with a Muslim. He called her a special kind of stupid. I'm too, I'm scared of him. I don't want to go to. Him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I, you know, I'll just, I'll still put a word in. I'll still tell them like, yeah, you know, this is what she said. Okay. Um, But when you, I mean, but, but if you're talking about. I, I will listen to him. I Maybe I will listen to him. Yeah, listen, I, I, mean, yeah, I definitely listen. won't go up on the stage. Yeah, just, just start, start off listening to him. Start off listening to him. And he does that. Okay. okay? All right. So those channels are really good for that. Um, um. There's also this other channel. It's called God Logic Apologetics. That's you. Oh yeah, that is me. Okay. 
You know I me, mean? I you know we 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 you know break down stuff, you know, and tie in, you know, we do, you know. Um another channel is Jai and DOC. Jai and mm -hmm. DOC. It's it's like J A I. Mm -hmm. J A I. D O C and D O C. So that's Jai, that's a guy. D O C that's daughter mm -hmm. of Christ. And uh well they're they're really good at going into like um like you know how the Bible is true and reliable and you know, Quran, Quranic manuscripts and how there's many Qurans and the Quran's corrupted and they they break that yeah. stuff. These are just good channels to to have okay. in your pocket, okay? Okay. Um and yeah, that off the top of my head, that's what I got. Okay. Now, I will try to look for more, but I will just start off with these. Mm -hmm. Now, Radar Apologetics, the one I told you, Radar, yeah. he, he's a Messianic Jew. Oh. Yeah. He's a Jew who believes in the Messiah and everything like that. And he, yeah. he does, I mean, when I tell you he's really good to listen to, really easy to follow, he shows like Old Testament and and and, and New Testament and, and what it really means, like stuff that I would miss. Like he shows what the things that I would think are insignificant, how it's actually significant because of the Old Testament and how it even shows even clearer that Jesus is the Messiah and how he's God and all that kind of stuff. It's amazing. And he, and he breaks mm -hmm. down rabbinic. He destroys rabbinic Judaism. He knows all the sources and everything. He's really good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely watch those. And before I go, I just have one like request. You, I know that you do a lot of lives on TikTok and I wanted to join, but I don't have enough followers on TikTok and it wouldn't let me. So mm -hmm. um, it would be really good if you just kept doing them on both TikTok and on um, YouTube. It's just a request. Okay. I, okay. I, I'll listen to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for answering all my questions and everything. Absolutely. We we have we have a lot of people that's like um that's willing to, you know, like do this. You know, we'll talk. We'll if you have questions, the stuff that I can't answer, like my friend Black Doctor who came up, he's really good in that area, you know, about oh, biblical okay. history and stuff. And so like we got we got different people who are willing to answer questions. So if you ever want to uh, you know, talk even all, it doesn't have to be live. If you want to talk, you know, just in the in the you know back offline, you know. How you do I, yeah, how do I reach? you? Like, do you have like a Discord or something? I have a I have a I have an Insta. I don't have Discord. I have Instagram though. Oh okay. I, I have Instagram. You know, obviously TikTok. Mm -hmm. You can let me know. Hey, this is this was Nori from you know that you're live. Let me know. Oh. I'm like, okay, so I'll make you priority, and then like I can get you hooked up with my my sisters in the faith who are like. They're good too, and you know, we study, we share sources, and everything. Okay, that's great. I'll probably use those, but I will start off definitely with the YouTube channels that you gave me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, it's five hours now, I guess. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got to have my lunch. <laughs> I would really lose my mind if I had to try to explain to Muslims for five hours a day um, <laughs> on why that their religion is not really that. You, usually I don't go this long. Usually you you, you was a special case. So, <laughs> you know, you, you made it, you smoothed it out. You know, you, you smoothed it out and made it a good, a nice, it's a nice send off. I'm good now. I'm good. Okay. okay. That's good. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you so much. All right. And now again, if you have any questions, hit, hit me up again. Or if you want to join live and ask yeah. more questions, hit me up. I'm live yeah, Monday, yeah. Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, guys. That was Nori, who um, mm -hmm. Lord willing will be a new sister in the faith pretty soon, man. Pretty soon she'll be a new sister in the faith i see a bunch of these super chats that i missed and i'm so sorry guys that i'm missing some of these it looks like this was a a um a suggestion good fight ministries thank you for that tony um we got this we got desiring god john piper has a series of the gospel book of john okay so john piper has a series of has a series on the Gospel of John. We also have, oh man, Brother DL, the Prophetic Republic. 
Does he does he go? Does he come on YouTube? Uh Islam unimpact? Unpacked? Does he come on YouTube? I haven't seen him on YouTube. Albie too. Like these guys should be on YouTube, man. DL Albie. These guys should be on YouTube. Uh, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and put this, uh, super chat in the back, <clears throat> but yeah, guys, all right, I'm gonna wrap up, man. I'm tired. I'm tired, but yeah, man, what a day. I hope that you guys enjoyed this stream. The stream was fun. The stream was, it was absolutely fun, man. Um, you know, having, you know, I thought I just, I just, I just had a, you know an urge to bring up all those Muslims, put my little stuff right in the middle, and let's talk. By the power of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, this truth stood strong amongst all the odds. So, man, it was a fun stream for sure. Fun stream. Keep me guys in your prayers. Pray for me. Pray for Nori. Uh, pray for Sarah as well. We didn't get a chance to speak with Sarah, but hopefully she comes back and we can have a conversation because she also sounded like she uh, was honest and we can have a, a logical, mature conversation. So hopefully we get to see Sarah again and she comes back. Praise God for Nori. May the Lord lead you to him. May the Lord give you the strength and the courage to trust in the evidence that he presents to you. Um, and may you, may you be blessed beyond measure and become a new sister in Christ. I hope the next time I see you, it'll be a testimony saying, yes, I have accepted the Lord Christ as my savior. No doubt about it. I am relieved and happy and fulfilled because that's what God does. All right. With all that being said, may the Lord bless each and every one of you as he blesses me and the others, brothers and sisters who are in the front lines doing this as well. Um, shout out and prayers to the brothers and sisters who are persecuted in Egypt and Nigeria and other places. May the Lord give them peace and strength. You guys take care. I'll see you next time.